Hello and welcome back to uh, the semifinals and finals here at Norwalk Havoc. This is the end of the bracket. These are the biggest fights that we have today. The heaviest hitters, the very best builders in the field. Uh, we have been fighting now for eight, nine hours straight here in Norwalk, Connecticut. And uh, this will be our, um, our semifinals and finals, Chris. Really quick, pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, you know, yeah. some of these matches that we've seen already today. We've seen fire. We've seen an arena breach. Uh, you know, we've uh, we've seen <laughs> like uh, a penguin just uh, yeah, a burning die penguin. gloriously. We still and, have a, uh, we still have about 20, yeah. uh, 23 pound bots uh, that are undefeated rolling here into prime time. Uh, we got some great thirty pound matches lined up for tonight. We got some great twelve pound matches lined up for tonight. Uh, the two brackets will merge later this evening. It's really some exciting stuff coming up. This is this is prime time. Now uh, we want to show you the 30 pound finals, some of the highlights from last year. This was Emulsifier versus Megatron. Megatron coming from behind, working its way through the elimination bracket to defeat Emulsifier twice in a huge upset. Uh, just one of the, the greatest come from behind stories that we've seen here in Norwalk. Yeah, Emulsifier defeating uh, Megatron first, Megatron defeating uh, Emulsifier next, and then really coming down to this final, final match, and uh, Emulsifier really just uh, running out of gas in its tank. Jameson go there with uh, the Golden Brett, winning $15,000 cash in December. Okay. All right, we are back to uh, robot fighting action. We are going to go here into cage two. This is winner's bracket round four. Shredded Bro versus Adrift. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robot fight. Oh, huge box rush from Shredded Bro on Adrift. Evan Arias crossing the box and bringing it straight to, uh, to his opponent. I do see a belt there on the floor. Is that a belt? Oh, a drift? And, it, and it's drift is wedged under the side of the box. He's gonna get his one free unstick from the house spot. Wow, that unstick came really, really fast here. Seems like Shredded just might be down one belt, still has one still going. The weapon on a drift looks slow, though. It's still got power. Yeah, the weapon on a drift is still up. And the weapon on Shred Bro is down. Evan Ooh. Arias now is inverted. He finds himself on, on his head. He's now behind. He's going to need to, uh, to rack up some points here. With his incredibly aggressive driving style, this is undefeated bracket round four, no matter what happens. One of these drivers will uh, get a second chance at redemption. Oh! Yeah, you can never really sleep on Shredder, bro. Even with its weapon down, it still is able to kind of dominate the driving and aggression, uh, and it gets the pins in. So Adrift uh, is still going to have to try to capitalize on this to the best of their ability. It looks like Evan Arias has uh, landed Shredder Bro on top of a piece of debris inside of the box. Maybe it's a piece of uh, one of these wheels. Looks like there was a little bit of foam underneath the robot. And he is crab walking around, still fully mobile, showing off why he's one of the best drivers here at Norwalk Havoc. And look at that. One of the wheels on Shredded Bro is oh, gone, Chris. Oh, wow. Oh. It is remarkable that uh, he is as mobile as he is with one wheel. The weapon on a drift is dead. The weapon on Shredded Bro is dead. With 60 seconds left here in this fight. I'm not sure now what Shredit can really do in this match. Ooh, good pin from a drift on Shredit, bro. Back to back pins. Incredible. Now, a drift can hold that pin for 10 seconds. Evan Arias hates being pinned. He's the one who wants to be pinning. <laughs> 30 seconds left here in this match. I have to say, down a wheel, down a weapon, Evan Ari is still incredibly mobile. 
Oh, and here it go again. Adrift, landing yet another pin on Evan. Oh, no! He's turned it around. It was a reverse Uno. <laughs> How do you pin another bot with one wheel? Incredible. Evan Arias has done it. This one will go to the judges. And Adrift is just there up against Stationary. the rail. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Uh, don't call it a comeback? I would call that a comeback, Chris. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go and check in here with the judges as they deliberate. Maybe we could take a moment to reintroduce our judges once they pop up for those that have just joined us here during primetime. We'll give them one moment to tally their scores. Okay. Now, judges, it looks like on our side it's a drift, a drift, and a drift. Is that correct? Thumbs up for a drift. There we go. A drift advances in the winner's bracket, narrowly escaping death from the hands of Evan Arias and Shred it, bro. Let's uh, check in here with Katie. Yeah, just a bit of an overview of how the day has gone so far. I don't know if everyone's been joining us uh, throughout the entire afternoon. We've had a penguin on fire. We've had uh, some glass knocked down. And we've had a whole lot of battles that have been a whole lot of fun. Now, as I'm walking past this awesome crowd, a sold out crowd, in fact, have you all had a good time? First and foremost. Amazing. There has been a ton of carnage. We are still seeing the brooms in these cages, but the fun's not over yet. In fact, up in the pits, the guys and the women are out hustling to make sure that their uh, bots are back in good shape. I like to call it a little bit of a thrash and a dash, and we'll see a lot of that here coming up in the next couple of hours. So you two in the booth are doing a great job. Everyone behind the scenes are doing a great job. Gentlemen, is there anything right now that is standing out to you as it relates to some of the storylines? Oh, I mean, like, I feel like we saw more destruction here at, in the first eight hours of this competition than we've seen in any other competition, any other qualifier from last year. Eight, uh, just seven, seeing Dustin Eswine just shatter five, our box, four, amazing. Three, that is uh, that is something two, uh, one, wild that we'll have five, to design around in the future. Oh, here we go. Uh, we've got... Okay. Uh, we have, uh, ignore this the fight card there, it's, uh, we have uh, Milk Tank. This is uh, Milk Tank against one of the Florida uh, Polytechnic robots here. Oh, it's the Flamethrower. This is uh, Flambacone Queso. And if these kids from Florida can get the uh, flames going on their robots, they might be able to pop that balloon on Milk Tank. What you are seeing is a slow, uh, slow blade turning of uh, milk tank. Oh no! <laughs> oh, they're going to the fire! They did it! Oh, the kids from Florida here with a very tiny flamethrower. One of their, uh, one of their forks is uh, severed from their robot. Here's milk tank. Can milk tank move? Is it able to get out here uh, from this pin? Ooh, there you go! Wow. A little bit more fire! There we go! Milk Tank is on fire. Its weapon is dead. The kids from Florida Poly are very happy about their performance. You can hear it's still fully mobile inside of the box. Moving around with that one weird fork. <laughs> Getting under Milk Tank. Little bit more fire. Oh, and Milk Tank has been shoved into the corner. It is on fire. That, uh, that duct tape is certainly flammable, Chris. 90 seconds left here in this match. Oh, there we go again. That's oh, and they've popped the, uh, the glitter balloon on Milk Tank. One of the, uh, the deadliest weapons here in uh, Norwalk Havoc. Ooh, wow, another good pin from Flambeco Queso on Milk Tank. It looks like that whole side of a Milk Tank there is being caved in by that fire. Incredible. Incredible display of control by Flambeco Queso. Another good trip around the box, courtesy of Lambe on Queso. A little bit of that uh, fire, that tiny little flamethrower. 
that super controlled, uh, you know, blast of, uh, of fire. Very different from uh, the fire that we saw in Firebug and, and the Casey's. 15 seconds left in the match. Hey. This is the final countdown here. This one will go to the judges. The second time today that Milk Tank has taken it all three minutes. Round of applause for Milk Tank and Flambe Con Queso. Now, Chris, I think that this one should be relatively easy for the judges. We saw Flambe Con Queso showing incredible control and damage with that flame. Um, and Milk Tank really struggling to kind of show its aggression in that match. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to see uh, Milk Tank take an utter loss. <laughs> Okay, well done, Chris. Look at this, Flambe Con Queso showing incredible ah, control there. There goes the glitter bomb. There goes that glitter bomb. They love those uh, udders filled with glitter. It's kind of their signature trademark. Yeah. Okay. All right, and there we go. It's the cooked body of Milk Tank. We've got Ashley there. She's checking the uh, the heat of the uh, the robot, <laughs> dressed in a full cow's outfit. You gotta love that. Now the kids from Florida Polytechnic are going in and trying to turn off their robot and make it safe. Oh, the uh, the on-off button is right there in the uh, the back. Okay, let's go to Lindsay with a judge's decision. It was a close one. But the judges have decided unanimously, flambe con queso. All right, good job. Kids from Florida, they advance. Flambe con queso remaining alive. Milk Tank has been eliminated. Was that the elimination round? I believe so. Okay. All right, we're going to bid an early uh, adieu to uh, to Milk Tank, Tamra Doherty, and Ashley, Eight, our favorite seven, builders, and great six, work today. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robot fight. Diamondback versus Weta X. An incredibly destructive uh, 30 seconds here. Santana Starks running Weta X and Diamondback being run by Corey Nason. Weta X is this black and white robot with a silver drum. Diamondback running these orange colored wheels. Diamondback is, uh, is an homage to uh, Copperhead on BattleBots. Corey Nason is, absolutely loves this robot. And they're both undefeated. I mean, like, we, we've seen some incredible reliability from both of these bots. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, first, wow, you guys have a great view up here in the in the booth. You guys get prime real estate. Uh, joining you here, Luke. Um, yeah, what a X surprised people earlier today, I think, a little bit, too, in the battles that they were in. Um, came out swinging, and I remember having a conversation where it was a bit of a, yeah, I mean, Look how, look how fierce he is right now. He's so focused, yeah. and that is, that is the way he's been actually all day. Yeah. Santana Starks uh, really is, is the picture of focus here with Weta X, but really getting pushed around by Diamondback here. Diamondback just hanging back, waiting to pick his moment. Yeah. Incredible. Both of these weapons fully operational. You know, and being someone who's new to... Oh, no! Katie, I can see a battery off the back of Diamondback! <laughs> What'd y'all call that earlier? Battery, battery swinging or something? Yo, no, the battery's gone! Whoa! Uh, and look at this! And Weta X is smoking. Wow, if this match had gone another 10 seconds, Weta X might have gone up in flames. <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> Oh, I love the destruction. And it was a quick destruction there at the very end, right? Like it just was like zero to 60 yeah. immediately. Wow. 
Incredible. Knockout. Wow. Did that surprise you? Knockout. You know what? Uh, these are two incredibly tough robots. So, uh, yeah, it didn't surprise me that uh, that they just just went full send at 100% um, in this match. Uh, let's go into a quick replay here. Wow. These are two egg beater drum spinners. And, um, and really what, what you're looking for with an egg beater is reliability on the weapon. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, this, this may have gone a different way if, uh, if Diamondback didn't lose that one battery right there at the end. Yeah, I would say it would have gone a different way if we didn't lose a battery, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> You know, that's um, a sure thing right there. It's it's really quite incredible when when you can see uh, you know your opponent peeling away the uh, the bottom plate of your robot and getting to that uh, that battery. Oh my goodness, Katie Osborne, you're here at the big <laughs> desk. I love I know. it. It feels good up here. I mean, I like I like Chris's voice up in here and his jokes are really great too. Uh, uh, but you know, this is comfortable for her now. Yeah, absolutely. Now I gotta ask. This you, is the best seat in the house, Katie. No, seriously, you guys have it yeah. good. Yeah. You guys have it good. You got some good audio. You got all this good stuff. You can't see it at home, but we have the world's biggest TV screen here. <laughs> like we can see every single detail. Like this is really great. You know, I gotta ask you though, when it, yeah. when it comes down to those. The brackets as it keeps and starts shimming out the way it does tonight. Yeah. Being new to this, right? I ha I'm Eight, full of questions. Seven, yeah. Six, we'll get to that in a moment. Five, yeah, all my great. questions. Good. Four, three, Cage two, two, we've got Warhard and Jonathan five, Juarez five, versus five, Lars five, Elliott and Jetlag. Two of the most aggressive drivers here in the brackets today. Lars Elliott is a 13-year-old kid. He's an eighth grader from Maryland. Jonathan Juarez is the captain of War EZ on BattleBots. Flew in here today from Texas. Huge hit there on jet lag. I love seeing these young guns in this, and it is amazing some of the creativity they come up with. It may not be, you know, in comparison to what everybody else is putting out, those who have been here for quite some time, but the young guns come in with a different level of creativity, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've been playing video games for their entire life. <laughs> they, this, this is, you know, they're, they're ready for this. I was joking about that earlier. Nintendo 64, I couldn't even control that, let alone one of these guys. And, and I do think gaming probably pays a big part. But as you look at this battle... Jonathan Juarez really is racking up a lot of control points here, popping jet lag on its head. Jonathan Juarez is this big black robot here with a custom egg beater. Jetlag is the white robot run by Lars Elliott and uh, running a Weta drum. That is a, uh, that's a hub motor drum. So the hub is sitting inside of the weapon, which sounds like a crazy idea, but Lars loves this weapon type. <laughs> he's, been, he's been fighting, you know, this, this beetle weight like all over the East Coast and fought most recently at Motorama. Yeah. I can't believe it. Only 90 seconds have elapsed. I mean, this match has really been going back and forth. It looks like both of the weapons, though, could be down on these two robots. And at that point, it's just, you know, the person who can hold on the longest, really, right? Yeah, it really comes down to pushing power. You know, can you control your opponent? Uh-huh. And you can see here, they're really just kind of dancing for control here. And this is when, in my viewpoint, it would be tough for judges, right? At this point, both weapons are down. Yeah. And now we're just kind of pushing power, as you're saying. Yeah. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty dance. Ooh, and that, that is a good pin from Lars on uh, War Hard. Lars can hold that for 10 seconds. It looks like the weapon on War Hard is the skew. 30 seconds left here in this match. At this point in the elimination bracket, are they, is it more anxiety than those who are not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of uh, one of these builders is going home in 30 seconds, and it looks like Warhard is dead. That is a knockout. <laughs> Lars Elliott is celebrating. This 13-year-old is very happy with his performance. You see those hands Remained in the air? alive in the elimination bracket. Oh, what a joy for him. Yeah.
Lars is one of the best young drivers in this sport. He uh, came storming on to the scene late last year, and we've just been watching his progress. Um, he, he is an incredibly aggressive driver. He yeah. loves this bot design, and he's been doing great with it. The no real doubt. question is, is what were you doing at 13? Because... <laughs> I wasn't doing anything <laughs> half as cool as this. Yeah. I mean, I think that all of the kids who are competing here today are incredibly cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're building, they're fixing, they're they're practicing, and um, this is such a great sport for them because yeah. it's so mental. Yeah. But you know, they also have that that combat without the risk of getting hurt, which is really great. Yeah. This is like the ultimate kind of STEM combat sport. And, and it's using all of that, like we said, yeah. creativity. It's teaching mental endurance. I mean, we were saying earlier, man, even for us as, as commentators, you have a long show. But these these are athlete-minded people at this point, seven, right? Yeah, absolutely. Six, all right, I can five, hear another uh, four, match starting. Three, oh, my gosh, it's two, Minimizer. One. Oh, this five, is the weirdest five, robot five, from uh, the, the second uh, session. I can't wait to see this. Demi Gorgon, run by Brandon Bennett Young from University of Maryland. Minimizer, very strange kind of yeah. snake-shaped robot. If I were out there right now, I would have asked inspiration behind that thing. Yeah. Now, one of the cool things about Minimizer is that uh, it's designed to swing around and hit the back of Demi Gorgon. Has it? Oh, there we go. That's what it wants yeah, to do. Yeah, it didn't look like it was making those moves dramatically like it should be initially. It's got that big piece of billet metal on the yeah. front. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Ooh, the crowd loved that. Yeah. Chopped off a piece of Demi Gorgon's wheel. Demi Gorgon unhappy after that exchange. And Minimizer looks unscathed. Incredible. It really is a, a qu quick back swing. It's like if you think about it from a whip standpoint, right? It's just yeah. a little extra oomph there at the back end. Yeah, when, when you have the weapon uh, kind of swinging around to the back and hitting those wheels, I mean, you've got a lot of physics in that, that arc. And uh, it, it ends up really kind of multiplying the damage from, from that hit. Oh, no, and the wheel from <laughs> Demi Gorgon is gone. Wow, Demi Gorgon is now bumping its uh, undercutter along the floor. I can't believe it. Minimizer's done it with 90 seconds left to go in this fight. It may not be an undefeated anymore for Demi Gorgon. That's, that's how this works, right? And yeah. they know what they're up against. And now we got, where'd that come from? A little piece of plastic. It looks like somebody brought a plastic shopping bag yeah. into, the, uh, into the box. Wow, another good hit from Minimizer. Intent on taking out that other wheel from Demi Gorgon. But that siding is gone. As, uh, as we see in racing, is that just cosmetic damage or is there a little bit more to it? But you can see that there's some flame in the middle there. Yeah. Heating up and some light. Oh, that's interesting. I do see that purple like light inside of Minimizer. It looks like that full side armor package was torn open. This has been a hugely damaging fight. Good eye, Katie. Oh, no! <laughs> the other wheel is gone! I can't believe it! Brandon Bunnett Young just running on that, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that rim of the tire here. Yeah, that's a that's a tough day at the office in this one. This for is sure. a this is an incredibly destructive match. I love this one. Wow. Minimizer is still getting after it. This is going to go to the judges. I can't believe it. <laughs> Incredible. Round of applause. The yeah. audience loves it. Look at those smiles. There's the driver of Minimizer. That's some satisfaction, right? Where you know you've done a good job. You can't really say if it's a, a sure win, but you know you've done, I think of like figure skating when they are done and they just are at peace and they know before the judges are coming out. Yeah, this is incredible. All right, let's go into a replay. This is a match that's going to absolutely make the highlight reel. Just look at the damage here. Incredible, Minimizer landing that first shot. The wheel on Demi Gorgon coming off. Ooh, there goes that first wheel. <laughs> yeah, when you go wheel down, that makes it a little bit more challenging, but he yeah. stayed in there, he stayed in the fight, and that's what this is all about, right? Yeah. Until the end. It is absolutely wild. 
That's what I also like, is there's there's some victories, little victories in these battles, right? If you make it to the full three. Yeah. That's that in and of itself is a little bit of a, a victory, right? And if you don't do the tap out, you don't do enough, you know. Yeah, exactly. Being able to survive the full three minutes and not quitting is huge. And look at this. We've got a unanimous judge's decision <laughs> for minimizer. We all said minimizer. Is this a uh, thumbs up? Is that right? Crowd, do we like that one too? We wow. are, we're on, yeah, wow. I think. Yes. I, I think love it. They, they say so as well. Wow. Minimizer, such a cool robot. Yeah. And so destructive, just ripping off the, uh, the wheels of Demi Gorgon. That was a convincing win. Incredible. Yeah, for sure. And Eight, like we said. Seven. Six, that always surprises five, me, I tell you. They go fast, four, Katie. Three, <laughs> wow, keep up. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, on over to Cage 3. This is Topic versus Clyde. And Clyde is our flame-throwing robot here in orange and green. Look at that! Oh, I love it! Wow, huge, huge flame there. And uh, really driving here against Christian Cooper and Topic. Christian Cooper, in my experience here, has just always, not today, but in December, he's focused, he's committed. Uh, if, you, if I try to get an interview with him and his robot is saying something to him, he goes with the robot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, knows, he knows what his job he needs to do. And I think Topic today, though undefeated, it wasn't how he wanted to start. And so he's had to kind of build up a little bit since. Another big flame there from Clyde. One of the really interesting things to watch for here are the long forks on both of these robots. Uh, you know, forks are usually uh, designed to get under your opponent, but when you have long forks on long forks, they can kind of get tangled sometimes yeah. and just kind of uh, actually keep the two robots from making contact with one another. Is there a disadvantage to having fire? The big disadvantage to having fire is that you have something extremely flammable inside of your robot. So if you had perhaps a top attack, uh, you know, uh, weapon like Topic, you're able to cut through. Whoa! You know, you run the risk of that butane tank exploding. Sure. And uh, yeah, and then you you go up in flames, which is terrible. <laughs> but look at this barbecued topic. You gotta love that pin. This is a they great pin down. from Clyde. All right, now the referee is telling Clyde to back off and his topic going to come back here from the dead. Now this is Christian's second second bot that he has here as well. That's right. Today. Christian also runs Silk. Now uh, in undefeated bracket round four, I mean, like this is pretty deep in the, uh, in the competition. These are two incredibly good drivers. Oh wow, more barbecuing from Clyde. I think that if I were going up against something with a little bit of extra, a little TLC in the fire department, I would be a little bit more intimidated than I would be. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a great distraction, too, you know, because uh, when, when you're taking a look at your robot and you see this huge fireball, you can't see the kind of damage that you're taking. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you, you lose visibility for a couple seconds at a time. And it also just looks incredibly cinematic for the judges. Yeah. It, Th it has is a wow damage. factor. Yeah, absolutely. When I saw a tiny little bit of smoke from the top of Topic, Topic is running a rubber belt up there. Rubber is flammable. We haven't seen the weapon of Topic really do anything in this match so far. Yep. There was only that one time it kind of came down on. This but one is going to go to the judges. They have run down the clock. Three minutes here. Incredible fight. It's a, it is fun when they go all the way. It really yeah. it really makes it feel like it's a true battle from yeah. start to finish. And they are holding on, which we talked about at the very beginning. We've got a quick replay here. Oh, man. I feel like the editors back in the production room, they love a fine thrower robot. <laughs> but, I mean, like, well, don't you? Oh, I love it. <laughs> They're like my favorite. We've seen so many great flamethrower robots here today. And it's really quite unusual to see such a powerful flamethrower in the three pound bracket, because there's just not a lot of weight yeah. for all of your fuel on side of that, inside of that robot. And I can appreciate that Clyde has put so much that fuel inside of its spot. And this is where, I wonder if that's where, right. That oh. was the only time that I feel like we there really we saw Topic's weapon in its truest form. Yeah. But besides that, that was, that was what he had to offer. So that's damage. We're going to see if aggression and control is going to be split. You know, 
Clyde showed some incredible control here in this match, yep. pinning Tothic up against the rails. We are uh, going to go to the judges here. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> it's a unanimous judge's decision for the flamethrower of Clyde, which advances. And you agree? Yeah, I mean, the, the control and aggression were incredible for Clyde. Every single time that they landed one of those pins and they were able to turn on that flamethrower, they showed absolute control. Yeah. And uh, there just wasn't any damage because Clyde was able to roll out of that box totally unscathed. Incredible. All right, uh, we're going to go over to cage two. I see Sea Dragon's Roar and, and Star Child. Oh, winner's bracket round five. Sea Dragon's Roar, William Marchese has stayed alive. Really just <laughs> going head to head with the big dogs here. And though you guys gotta gotta see us during that time. There we go. Can we see that jump again? Can we see a little ooh yeah, there he goes. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Shake it out. William little. loves it. Oh, that's right. And meanwhile, Star Child has had to do some damage control with his own uh, over the course of today. Um, not a perfect day, but Eight, a good day for, for seven, Brandon. Yeah. Six, Brandon narrowly five, escaped that four, last match with three, his wheels being cut two, apart. One. Brandon Zelensky, of course, the fight. captain of P1 on BattleBots. William Marchese uh, is just an enthusiast here from the city who's redesigned his entire robot and is seeing great performance from this redesign. Going to round five of the winner's bracket, I can't believe it. Also, fun fact, William's parents are in the audience here today, so they're seeing their son just absolutely dominating here. Hi, great. William's parents. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, and, you know, one thing with Brandon, you know, he told me from the very beginning, the first guy I talked to uh, when I got here today as it relates to robots, and he had said attrition was going to be so key today. Longevity and mental endurance, like we've been saying. He's one of those guys that was ready at the very beginning. It was a hurry and wait, and then he's kind of had to find his mojo since. Yeah. And that, that's not easy as a competitor, I can imagine. These have been back-to-back -back fights all day long. I mean, these builders, they get 20 minutes of repair time between fights, and keeping that mental focus is so incredibly important. Here in this match, what you want to see is William Marchese getting around to the side and pushing into the side of Brandon's wheels. Brandon would love to come over top and land a huge hit on the top of Sea Dragon's Roar. And, uh, ooh, good hit from Sea Dragon's Roar on the side of Star Child. Have you ever watched Brandon's face while he's while he's doing this? Every time his weapon goes, his face kind of makes the same face that his weapon's doing. It's the face of pure delight. Every time. It's <laughs> like in a night. And, and that's, again, it goes back to focus. What's the difference between a good and a great competitor? It's a, it's a level of focus that can't necessarily be taught. Yeah, if you lose your focus for a second, uh, someone like William will come in and capitalize. Now what you're looking for now, uh, as we're entering the last 60 seconds of this match, is damage. The weapon on Sea Dragon's Roar is up. They've been able to show incredible control. Looks like the spinner, uh, the spinner on Star Child could be down. And those wheels are starting to get caved in. Help me what better understand this. Help me better understand the idea of the, the, the height here. Is there a much of an advantage or a disadvantage one way or the other? It's a huge, it's a huge advantage because Star Child can drive over its opponents and kind of uh, tangle it up and then land that huge hit on the top. Uh, one of the big things that Brandon needs, though, is a fully functional spinner to do that really well. Yeah. And William Marchese has just found all of the right angles here and just this kind of suffocating uh, drive style, not allowing Brandon any any chance to uh, to reset himself. Yeah. Um, really kind of, uh, you're seeing William pushing Starchild anywhere in the box that he wants uh, that robot to go. I think that this is uh, going to be Judges. Potentially a uh, judge's decision for Sea Dragon's Roar. Incredible. Well done, gentlemen. Good well, battle. We're Another good battle. Yeah, that was a really good battle. Uh, you know, we're seeing the glow up of Sea Dragon's Roar. When we saw William here in November, you know, like, that robot had some challenges. You know, it had some drive challenges. He came back, totally redesigned the robot with this 
this weapon that people were questioning in yeah. the off season. It's very small. It's spun very fast. And, uh, you know, I was one of the people who questioned it. You know, yeah. I, I said, yeah, William, yeah, the, 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 the weapon is too small. And he's like, <laughs> I, I, need, I need weights to put into my drive system so I can really show control. It's mostly a control bot that's kind of like, you know, masquerading as sure. a as a as a, uh, as a big destructive, uh, uh, you know, bot. We saw Brandon Zelinsky there give a little punch to the glass, a little bit. Uh, One would say that's not necessarily. That wasn't a I'm stoked punch. That was a no. man. He's not going to be woulda. stoked about the judge's decision here. This is a unanimous judge's decision for William Marchese and Sea Dragons Roar. That is a huge upset. Starchild is one of the top-ranked bots here, and Sea Dragons Roar is just leaping up in the uh, in the all-time uh, you know win record. Well, you here. talk about control. Incredible. You talk a lot yeah. about control, and if we see, we got four, we got five, we got four. That was a that was a very pure showing of control, and yeah. that was a goal of his as yeah. he was coming in swinging here in 2022. Yeah, it's tough because Starchild is not designed for control. Starchild is designed for damage. You know, uh, Brandon Zelensky wants to sink that uh, that overhead uh, attack right into the top of his opponent's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bot. But because he's got these weird large wheels, like he can't really shove around his opponent too much. And if he's got a really, if he's up against Eight, a really good driver, seven, you know, he's going to lose. Yeah, yeah, no, five, that makes sense. Four, three, two. One. Fight. Robots fight. All right. Undefeated bracket round two. 30-pound action here. Waddles versus Tryhard. This is our first time seeing uh, Tryhard. It's this big black triangle yeah. here being what pushed around by Waddles. Waddles is this black and orange penguin-themed Halloween-colored oh. uh, <laughs> robot here. What just caused that to do that? These are these are both horizontal spinners, and you can see that the uh, the left wheel on Tryhard is starting to cave in. Waddles has done it. Wow. Okay. Tryhard is now hobbling around. Look at that wheel on the left hand side. That doesn't look right. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, Katie. He has sunk <laughs> his blade into the side of the box. Oh. This is not something that Bubbles can help out with at all. This is where we see Tryhard die. And then he waddled away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. <laughs> to the very next day. Anyone ever seen that YouTube? Okay. It's about a duck that waddles. Doesn't matter. The point is, is that's what Waddles is doing. Just kind of waddle away and let Tryhard just stick it in the wall. Brian Boxel with Waddles here. Very happy with this performance. Too convincing. Whoa! Oh! I can't believe it! Dominic Yankaskis escaped! Did that not look like something that just came out of a horror movie? It just kind of shifted in space and looked Wild. at it? Wild! Yeah. <laughs> Did he do it again? I can't believe it! Wow! I'm going to blow up my voice, Katie, screaming <laughs> during this match. This is amazing. Dominic Yankaskis has again sunk his weapon into wow. the rail. He's Those. being counted out. We like Brian to call that a flat Oxel. tire where I come from. Wow. That is a knockout. You can hear Brian shouting, let's go. Amazing. And then they waddle knockout. away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. To the very next day. Do, 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 do. I have no, to I'll Google send you that. that YouTube. Yeah. yeah, that's good. <laughs> Nobody wants me singing, but I'll have to send you that link. And we'll I mean, it. listen, if, if Brian continues to perform like this, I'm going to have to learn that song, Katie. You know, here's the thing. I like what Brian did earlier. When I was having a conversation with him, he sent his bot up with the team. The team started digging into what that penguin needed. And realistically, he is leading that ship of the team, but he also, he's obviously he's driving it, but he's not micromanaging it either, yeah. which I, I kind of respect how, his, how he's kind of putting it together. Yeah, I mean, like, that's another really cool thing about combat robotics. You know, you can flex your leadership skills. Can I can I get a bunch of people to work on a very complex thing in a short amount of time? Can I manage them well? And can we win? Like, that's really, really big. Well, and he's showing that he can. 
Amazing. <laughs> Brian Boxel, fantastic performance so yeah. far today. Yeah. Dominic Yankaskis and Tryhard. Uh, this was a robot that advanced to the December finals. Uh, this is kind of yep. a tombstone inspired robot, you know, this kind of triangular shape with this nasty bar on it. It's all offense, no defense whatsoever. Yeah. And one of the challenges with Waddles is was he was able to get under the robot and start to chip away for, at that, uh, the wheel on, mm -hmm. uh, on Tryhard. Yeah, you know, try hard among some of the others that the family puts out. It, it does seem like a very offensive approach to combat. Yes, um, yes. We've seen across over the last few years, some of the family has really been brought to life with Dark Princess and all these ones that has created this fire and yeah. what Hunter has put out. And a lot of times it seems like offense is the strategy yeah. with what they put out. Yeah, exactly. I think their most defensive bot was Murple last year, uh, driven by uh, Dominic's oldest son, mm -hmm. um, you know. And... Um, and a Merple was fantastic. It's a lifter. It's a sh shaped like a circle. Um, but I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that, that Dominic's, his number one goal is damage. He wants knockout, knockout, knockout. Yeah. That's how he wants to move through the bracket. When, when you have a knockout artist like that, they want one-hit knockouts. They don't want to see the robot go for Slowly, three minutes. Slowly, but sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they want to spin that Dunzo. bar as fast as they can, and they want to uh, achieve a big knockout. Speaking of knockout artists, look at this. It's Ripperoni, our favorite pizza-themed robot. Here's the thing. I hope earlier it was okay that I asked a question that you guys hadn't asked. Oh. <laughs> Which was, uh, what was her favorite kind of pizza and or does she like clam pizza? I feel like, you know, that, that really speaks to the psychology of, uh, of Anna Zolnikov here. <laughs> Someone who says a mushroom pizza, that is a, uh, that's a, that's a thinking person's pizza. Yeah, for sure. You know? For sure. Me, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, you know, barely literate uh, meathead, so I'm going with like the meat lovers, you know? I really do love this robot, though. I love it's robot that has, that has personality. I mean, I even asked if they named the, the penguin earlier that deflated because I think, or that caught on fire really is really what happened. Um, and to me, I think personifying some of these really bring it to life, and that's what they've done with I, I love the theming on Ripperoni. Like, I love a pizza themed robot. You know, Does like, it happen often? Uh, I mean, like, there are some really funny themes that, uh -huh. uh, that people adopt with their robots. You know, it's rare that you see something that is so well executed on a theme. Like, you know, the top of the <laughs> robot looks like a box and everything. Yeah. It's great. All <laughs> right, let's, uh, let's go and check in with Lindsay. We have a pizza-themed super chat, if you can what? believe it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this is from Blue Puma 14, Eddie Friend, who lives right around the corner, so he knows good Connecticut pizza. And he says, let me throw a wrench into the great pizza debate. A hot oil thin crust pie from Colony Pizza right here in Norwalk. Norwalk. Wow, uh, Eddie, there yeah, we sounds go. Sounds good to me. Guys, so I just moved to the region from California, originally from Indiana. Neither of those two places have outstanding pizza per say. But you guys, since I've met you, have continued to talk about this pizza here, yeah. and I have yet to figure out pizza in New England. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's 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 give it up for Eddie. You know, going with the hometown pizzeria, Colony Pizza. I feel like maybe I should try that if we're able to get out uh, on time tonight. <laughs> you know, like a hot oil thin crust sounds great, Eddie. I don't even know what that means as it relates to pizza, but I'm willing to try it. All right, it's thin like crust pizza, so it's. You know, thin. I'm telling you, I come from Indiana and California. Hot don't oil. <laughs> they, they put chilies Eight, in oil. Okay. Seven, it's fantastic. Six, Cage four. Let's five, do it. Let's four, that. Let's four, three, Speaking of two, pizza. One, Speaking of pizza, five, Ripperoni five, and Shane. Oh, oh, wow. That's a big hit for Ripperoni on Jade. Jade's weapon looks like it could be down. Are the little the little bots, the mini bots that come around for something in a 30 pound? The the, the health that the mini bot gives you is a little bit of extra weight. Okay. So like if I can run a half a pound robot, I can probably get two or three additional pounds for my robot. Oh wow. no! Dang! Damn. Wow! That is a that, quick tap out. That from was a Jane. real quick. Wow! Hugs all around. Anna and her team. Tap out. The winner here is Ripperoni. Now, this was the performance that I was expecting from Ripperoni. When I started the day, people were saying, this is the robot that we are worried about in the 30 Interesting. Pounds. Yeah. Knockout. Uh, they had a really dominant performance at Motorama. Motorama is uh, like a super long running uh, two day event in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And uh, if you can really kind of make your name at, at Motorama, you have a good chance of also going deep into the competition at Norwalk Havoc. 
Um, Ripperoni has this just, it's a one hit knockout kind of master. That's, that's really what it's designed for. Anna is, uh, is on Team Uppercut on mm -hmm. BattleBots, and the robots look very similar. So, I mean, she knows what this, uh, this design is capable of. Absolutely. And uh, we've seen so many examples on BattleBots this season of one hit knockout. Yeah. You know, like this is a tried and true design. Exactly what we were kind of talking about earlier. Yeah. When, you're, when you're, your intent is to just one, one and done. Yeah. Jade is built by uh, the kids from Northwestern University, yeah. their combat robotics team. And, uh, they have four uh, of them here, right? Yeah, they're, All they're bringing four, four robots. Yeah, Jade, Jensen, Jayla, and Jade. Wow, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> that was pretty That's good. Wild. Good job. Yeah. All right, let's uh, check in here with Lindsay. Hi. All right, Katie, we have a super chat question from, for you from none other than our own judge, Andrew Rossell. What's uh, up, Andrew? All right, he wants to know, uh, can we ask Katie if she has any grapes? And then Do he waddled away, waddle, 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 <laughs> to the very next day, bum, 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 bum. Yes, I have grapes. In fact, I actually have a food bag. It has a banana and grapes and almonds. You want some? Is this, is this like a, an inside <laughs> joke question? <laughs> Okay, it's a YouTube, whatever. It's a, it, it's a long story. It's a duck. It waddles away, asks for grapes, and gets some glue. It doesn't really matter. If you look it up, it's a pretty good YouTube. I've got to listen to this. All right, Lindsay. All right, adding that to my playlist. Uh, second super chat. This one, you know, uh, is from Oscar Khan. He says, uh, could you tell Reed Canyon Kaufman I said poggers? So, Reed, if you're out there, Osfar says poggers. And I now love you it. know. One of the really cool things about the YouTube live chat is that your friends can tune in and watch you live compete oh. <laughs> on, uh, on Norwalk Havoc, right? Um, and so, yeah, if you have a really good friend and you've got an uh, inside joke that you want to send them, oh my god, look at this. They've brought you your grapes. These, these were the grapes I was I do have them. If you would like some. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that that was, uh, that was Paul there. So thanks, He's Paul. stepping in strong today. My husband, new husband, by the way, helping out in the cage over here, giving me my grapes. Fantastic. Trying to get his coffee, so yeah, anyways. Yeah, it's very good. Okay. <laughs> it looks like we've loaded here into the big box. I see Casey Jermiason and Casey Jermiason. Looks like they've brought a new team member here, Sean. And uh, Doing some like hand signals, some is, you know. I might be switching out here with Chris, <laughs> is that right? Oh, Chris, thanks, man. Hey, let's just give it up, though. Can we give it up for Luke and Chris, who, uh, by the way, and Lindsay and everybody else who's holding these cameras and running the show right now? Yeah. Uh, these guys have been at it since 10 a.m. this morning, and that is a hard day on camera, holding cameras, Katie, directing to cameras. you, too. I mean, well, you've been yeah, running around. Like, you probably have 20,000 steps. I sat down. Anyways. Wild. Okay. We are uh, gonna go to the big box. As soon as we cut away, I'm going to give my microphone to Chris. But for the time being, let's just keep a nice long shot right here on us. This is great TV. Are Katie. you gonna, uh, what, what, yeah. what, what are you open for dinner? <laughs> while we're, while we're I, I'm gonna get one of these thin crust hot oil pizzas from Colony. <laughs> Eddie, I'm salivating here. Can I offer you here. some grapes? <laughs> This is this is a much more sensible choice, I would say. All right, it looks like we're getting some uh, we're getting set up here. Uh, here's Silent Spring. We have ER Stingray. Um, what's interesting about Silent Spring is we were talking to Jameson Go earlier, and it, and he had a lot of fixes for this thing, um, a lot of pressure to perform as well, especially after how well it did in December. Um, but. You know, this is part of the elimination bracket, and, and Jamison Go has been in these before, of course, and he knows what it takes to get the job done. And I think that is a, sh a shining trait that uh, Jamison brings to the table here. All right. Oh, wow, there are grapes. <laughs> in, in robot combat, there are grapes of wrath. Yeah, those are, not, those are grapes you want or don't want in robot combat. What? Those are grapes you want or don't want. Grapes of Wrath? Yeah, I guess you're not. I, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so we're about to get started here. What's your, what is your take on ER Stingray? Uh, well, we got two great bots uh, queued up in here. You know, Eight, the, the losers bracket seven, starting to get to this six, point now where like you have five, some really four, great talent in three, there. Um, two, I, I expect one, a lot from right, both of these bots. We have fight. Undercutter, Undercutter, of course. Silent Spring has that uh, that weight advantage. Uh, we'll just see if ER Stingray is kind of able to use that mini bot, um, you know, to uh, to high center 
uh, Jameson, um, but uh, anything could happen here when you have high energy horizontals. Now, as it relates to the mini bot, it's not so mini. Does that make a difference on these three counters? Uh, well, <laughs> the bigger the mini bot, I guess the higher you can get off center or high centered. But you know, um, it's also a much bigger target for a, a really dangerous weapon on Silent Spring. Now, Silent Spring, of course, was working with Aaron, his buddy, earlier, uh, who was unfortunately out in that elimination round that they both went through together. Uh, but that's part of the game here, right? And these, these guys are friends uh, outside of the brackets and outside of the cages, and then when they get in here, it's all game mode. And you can see the focus that's going on right now between the both of them, the focus that they have. I mean, this is, uh, you see Jam Jameson right now poised in his classic Jameson uh, stance. When he is, uh, you know, doing his driving, he's he's like uh, like a puma, just ready to pounce. <laughs> um, I can see that. I can see that. I respect that. I mean, you you'll see him. He was out here in the parking lot at 4 a.m. this morning, just like ready with controller in hand. I really wish that was a true fact. Is that how rumors get started? <laughs> I do start rumors from time to time. <laughs> At this point, what, what is what is the tactic? You have a you have a, almost a, nearly a minute left. Is it to hold on? Yeah, we got two weapons that are still going. It looks like can't really see what's happening too much in the front of ER Stingray. It looks like maybe that weapon actually has stopped. Uh, I haven't seen a loose belt or anything yet, though. Yeah, so it's a, a very short blade that he has on the front of ER Stingray. His uh, his mini bot uh, has kind of lost that dust pan that he was. Uh, hopefully going to use to kind of help corral Silent Spring. Silent Spring now able to uh, effectively muscle that much lighter ER Stingray. Uh, and it looks like these two are locked up. Is this a surprise to see Silent Spring and, and Jameson go in an elimination bracket and not his first elimination bracket here? Doesn't that a surprise? I, uh... Well, first, I, I couldn't hear a word that you were just saying. I was actually getting some uh, some feedback from the booth. Uh, that I was uh, asymmetrical with the, uh, <laughs> with, the <laughs> with the alignment on our camera. No, I, I, is it a surprise to see Silent Spring and Jameson go in an elimination bracket? Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, you you would expect, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a a three pound match or if it's a you know a thirty pound match. You generally expect to see Jameson in the um, you know at least the top eight of uh, of any bracket that he's in. Um, but, you know, we, we, we've seen him kind of punch his way back uh, through a loser's bracket before, so I really hope that, um, you, know, you know, he's able to kind of, you know, still uh, capitalize on, on the amount of time that we still have left tonight. Which we still have some time left tonight. A few hours. Just a few. As they're kind of trying to get unhooked, and you can see we're paused here, what surprised you today as you've kind of been able to be reflective? You've now eaten food, so you have, like, brain power again. Like, where, what is... The big takeaways so far. Right, yeah, I, with my now full stomach of bananas and grapes and almonds, uh, all of which were made out of hot dogs. Um, I, uh, I, I do really, uh, I'm looking forward to a couple of bots that we haven't even really seen yet. We have one that's actually getting loaded into uh, the cage one right now uh, with the Casey's, uh, and that is uh, Redacted, which is a rocket-powered weapon, which is like m maybe the first time we've ever seen something like this before. Um, you know, I, I really like to see that there's a lot of bots that are still using uh, some some new uh, imaginative, uh, imaginative builds that are uh, hopefully able to kind of continue to shift the meta and and keep the sport evolving and keep the sport interesting. Um, you know, I, I think that we're seeing uh, a lot of growth in the 30-pound uh, division. I expect by year end, it's going to be uh, radically transformed. Sure. This is going to be the, um, you know, the, that that mecca for 30-pound uh, uh, robot combat. Oh, well, they're uh, really tangled up there, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, these two uh, these two weapons, like they're you know both these bo like horizontal. Uh, they both look like maybe hardened s steel. Um, I don't know if they're titanium, but like anytime you get some mangled metal kind of, you know, ensnared on one another, even the smallest little burr can really kind of, you know, clasp those two together like Velcro. And um, next thing you know, you have uh, people busting out the big tools to try to separate the two. Yeah, insert Jim again. Jim with the referee shirt, who Jim is wiping, brooming, cleaning. 
And uh, that's part of the job of the ref as well. And as we continue to work through uh, this incident over here in cage number two, let's go ahead and welcome in Lindsay as well. Come on over here, sister. Um, as uh, Lindsay's gonna be jumping in here, we're playing a little magical chairs, musical chairs, magical yeah, chairs. Lindsay, I'll They're give magical. You my headset. Something seems to have happened as I was leaving my little corner to come here. Now there's a bot stuck. Yeah, a lot has transpired. I see a couple of people still trying to pry these bots apart. Uh, you see Jim there kind of with his homemade uh, jaws of life. Oh, and there oh. we go. Awesome. I mean, this is not a fight you want to see end by getting stuck. So I'm so happy that they are able to separate them. Hopefully yeah. they both start up. I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, in, in combat robotics where bots get stuck so bad that that's really it. We have to go back and weld something, right? And you got people are busting out torches and whatnot. Oh, you've seen it before. We've seen it before. Hello, Lindsay. Oh, hello. This is my first time in front of people at the desk. Well, welcome. Let's Thank give you. a round of applause for Lindsay. It's nice right. to see some actual faces. <laughs> these, uh, these bots look like they're ready to go. I see Jim. Uh, he's, he's counting down right now. We're going to get this fight going again. Forty seconds left. Silent Spring, ER Stingray. All right, it looks like they're both up and running. Maybe uh, Silent wow. Spring has some more mobility. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, your Stingray, after uh, the separation, uh, has some kind of uh, technical difficulties going on inside there. Out. He was, uh, he was very quick out. to tap out once he realized that he, um, he wasn't going to be able to get back into the fight. Yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, we try our best to make sure that each bot comes out unscathed when it gets stuck like that. But, you know, it, who knows what might have happened. And uh, it, it's uh, sometimes hard to, hard to make sure that uh, everyone is able to function after yeah. something like that. Well, you know, we got a lot of, uh, uh, we got a lot of tournaments left here in 2022. It's best to take a bot home that's 90% um, functional. That's a good point. We have a lot of year left, and why com make a completely new frame and do all that work if you don't have to? If you so. don't have to. Yeah, I mean, some people, like, they'll hang out in the uh, in the fight to the to the very end uh, because there's always a chance that the other bot's going to break down, but, you know, we're, we're, ta we're talking about um, Jameson Go. <laughs> right, yes. It's probably not going to happen. <laughs> it's You have to hedge your bets a little bit yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he made it a long way. He made it through several rounds of the of the um, elimination bracket. So hats off to ER Stingray. Eight, seven. All right, six, I see some motion here five, in cage three. Four, three, two, one. Five. So we've got jet lag, uh, driven by Lars Elliott. He did very well in our November session. And her caboose. Maybe we can switch the video feed over to cage three. All right, this is an all out brawl. Just head to head combat, not afraid of going weapon to weapon by any means. And it looks like they're both still spinning. I see a belt loose. Oh, I see something. Yep, that's a loose belt. And I mean, he, you know, jet lag driven by Lars Elliott, he is such a relentless driver. Despite his age, he is so confident and he's so unafraid of just going out there and bashing the heck out of the other bots. So, wow, it's it's always so impressive. Yeah, and he's really dedicated too. Every time, uh, you know, there's a, uh, a competition here, you see him here the night before, he's working on the bot, he's 
He's like 100% invested in it, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, he's always here the night before. He's the first one in the door and then the last one to leave. Even though his bot is ready, he just wants to be here for the community and for the, the spirit of it all, which uh, I, I really love. But uh, yeah, we've got some, you know, maybe some drive issues on each side of uh, both bots. Yeah, minute 15 left on the clock. I don't know if uh, uh, Hurt Caboose is going to be able to salvage uh, this match when any and all uh, damage would likely still uh, be awarded to jet lag. Uh, but you never know. We'll see what the, uh, what the judges have to say or if uh, the arena ref starts to ask for, uh, you know, a, a little bit more controlled mobility. Yeah, and there is still 45 seconds left. We've seen crazier things happen. Um, so there's still a lot of time left to, to determine who's going to win this match. All right, we got some head-to-head -head pushing. Looks like Kurt Booth maybe is the one in control of this particular head-to-head. -head. But jet lag not backing off. 15 seconds left. All right. Wow. Wow. That was intense from start to finish. Yeah. Sometimes you have uh, you have fights where bots that aren't even uh, totally working. Still uh, still pretty fun to watch. Let's see. Um, we can uh, take a look at this replay and see some of the best hits. Yeah, I'd love to see some of those hits in slow-mo. That's where maybe the belt. Yeah, that loose. looks like that, right. Yep. All right, they're thinking about it, and then jet lag went in for the hit. Yeah, that was quite a bit of time that uh, Hurt Caboose had to um, try to endure without uh, an operational weapon. <laughs> resting his forehead against the box. I guess that's how you zone in. Yeah, I mean, if you look at him, he is cool as a cucumber. He's like in the zone, and I love seeing that. <laughs> that was me uh, 10 minutes ago with my head pressed against a vending machine. <laughs> I don't blame you. All right, we have the judges here, and that is a unanimous decision for jet lag. Is that all correct, what you see on the screen, judges? Yep, yep. Awesome. All right, uh, jet, jet lag takes it. Is uh, going to hang out in the uh, in the bracket a little while longer tonight. Uh, we have um, some more bot action coming up. I know that cage one is loaded, and there's some uh, some very exciting things in there. Um, lots happening. Let's see. Cage one. Are we going to expect some 30 pounds, 12 pounds? It's hard to see. Not threes. <laughs> That'd be quite the, the large arena for a three-pound robot. It might be fun to see what they could do. Yeah, especially those zippy ones. Can you imagine links in a large box? Oh, my gosh. I'm sure they would still hit the ceiling. Yeah, totally. All right, and they even got cage two loaded up as well. We're rolling. All right, looks like we have Dominic Yankaskis with Narcissist Eight, and Shredded Bro. Six, Two big five, bots going at it in four, the three-pound cage. All right, oh, but no, first sorry. we're going to go to cage one. one fight. Robots My bad. Fight. Uh, and there's Redacted, the bot that I've been talking about all day. You have been so excited since you learned about this oh, bot Oh, interesting. Yesterday. It's just going to pin this other bot, I guess. <laughs> All right, so can you divulge a little bit about how this bot works? Because I see three, what could they, what might you call those? Yeah, I don't know. It seems like there's like three exhaust ports. All right, and uh, of course, against Redacted here, we have Axie Dent, this is the 12 pound sportsman division. There is, uh, there are no high energy weapons here. Uh, However, that does not mean that there, is, there cannot be any high energy damage. Uh, <laughs> so this match actually determines the winner of the winner's bracket, of the uh, undefeated bracket. Someone is going to win an imaginary trophy right now. 
And we saw Accident actually earlier in the day beat a different bot made by Casey and Casey Jeremiahson, Ice Cream Sandwich. And I've been thinking about ice cream sandwiches oh, no. ever since. <laughs> oh. yeah, the the loser, loser here goes on to face Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, also a, uh, a Casey and Casey bot. So we're really seeing the Casey's kind of dominate the 12 pound sportsman. I, I really hope that we're able to see this uh, this thing work. Um, really, the bot is designed to uh, to pin uh, its opponent, uh, and then it's uh, it has three surprises up in its sleeve. It is three rocket engines from ro uh, model rockets. Have that we ever seen a, a rocket launcher in a bat in a in a bot before? I think we've, we've seen like a a, a, a beetle weight before that had little tiny rockets on it, but King of Battle, I think the name of that bot was. Um, but we've never really seen anyone use the rocket cylinders as a weapon, uh, and this isn't really meant to hit something with a. Uh, you know, a projectile, but instead the uh, focus, that incredible heat that comes out of the end of one of these rockets to melt through uh, its opponent. Um, but I'm sure that if they were uh, going to try to use them, they use them all at once, and they need to really make sure that they have the pin uh, perfectly in place before executing on that. Now, have we seen much movement from Accident's hammer in this match? I don't know, I don't believe so. It's really been a but battle it looks like of the driving. We're running out of time. Oh, come on. Come on. Three, two, one. Ah, and that's the match. Wow, so that match really came down to simply drive. Yeah, this is going to go to the judges. We're going to have to see um, how they evaluate this. Uh, rockets that didn't fire. Uh, and a, uh, a, th a, what would you call it, a, an aggressive tapper that uh, failed to tap. No tapping, no rockets. This is going to so come down to the ground game. Judges are deliberating as we speak. Uh, it will be very interesting to see how they... All right, so we have the decision from the judges, and it is unanimously in favor of accident. Wow. All right. Well, congratulations, Accident. This is, uh, you know, um, this is the the sportsman division here. Uh, exciting times. I, I really hope that we get to see Redacted again in the future, and I really want to see those rockets fire off, even if it is uh, maybe in a um, some kind of rumble later tonight. Oh, I would very much like that. And uh, you know, hats off to the Jeremiah since we're always bringing something out of the box. That is. <laughs> Sometimes they bring the box. <laughs> All right, it looks like uh, we have another fight queued up here in Eight, cage two. Seven, we have six, Shredded Bro five, in the red corner four, and Narcissist in the three, blue corner. Two, one, fight. Elimination Robot. bracket round five of the three pound division. Oh, and a, just an explosive first 10 seconds. Narcissist is uh, kind of bouncing all around here. Shredded Bro is just trying to catch him. R.I.P. to the floor. Whoa! Oh! Oh, wow! Holy cow! Oh. Narcissist has speared the, the three-quarter inch plywood floor. Oh, my Wild. God. I don't think that Brett can solve that. Oh, there we go. Shredded Bro oh. was, uh, was much obliged to just step in and help out, but in doing so, Shredded has lost a wheel again. Wow. And now they are tumbling. Oh, wow. That, uh, that egg beater's kind of just dragging at this point. This is explosive. Doesn't seem like either bot is in full control, but that's just making it all the more reckless. It is reckless, that's what I would call it. Oh man. All right, it's it looks got like- a good beat going to yeah. it. Oh, I see some smoke out of, oh. uh, out of Shred It. Narcissist seems to have uh, kind of got its composition back. All right, oh, okay. Both of them seem to. 
Yeah, it looks like what's 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 going on with Shredded's bar? Is it is it even on there anymore? Is it just sitting? It looks like it's just kind of sitting in the pocket down at the bottom of their uh, the front of the weapon housing. Oh, the bar and, is broken. And yet I can't see any of it in the box. So where did it go? It vaporized. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. We're all inhaling <laughs> Beater Bar right now. Good thing we have a great exhaust system in this building. 50 seconds left in this match. Narcissus still uh, kind of oh. able to, uh, to keep things going. Shredded is kind of running out of options here. One wheel, they're not able to, uh, to focus on that aggressive, uh, uh, you know, controlling... Um, uh, dominance that we normally see out of the bot. Now, this is the elimination bracket, so ever, whoever loses here goes home for the night. So both of these teams are fighting with everything that they have to keep it going. Yeah, these are two teams that are just not going to uh, tap out uh, with, only, uh, with only 10 seconds left here on the clock. Oh my goodness. And this has gone back and forth, I'd say throughout the whole match. I don't yeah. know how this one's gonna go. Nice job to both wow. teams. All right, the judges have a lot to think about. And we'll give them a moment to deliberate. Um, well, it's the uh, second time uh, today that we see, uh, you know, Shred It um, lose a wheel. Ah, we're going to go over to Katie right now, who's got Shred It. <laughs> As he's about to collect his robot here. Uh, Evan, what was your takeaway from that? I know the judges haven't made their decision yet. I think that was absolutely awesome. This is the stuff I come here for, so I really loved it. Is that the head-to-head -head battle that, that you're describing? Oh, all day, head-to-head, -head, no matter what. Weapon, no weapon, wheels, no wheels. You just keep going. How would you rate your day so far? 10 out of 10, or even 12 out of 10. I really love this place. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> all right, let's check out a replay yeah, of that match. Yeah, let's take a closer look. Just a hit after hit after hit. There was that box rush that uh, Shredder Pro is known for. Boom. And, uh, oh, wow, it's, it seemed like Right there was uh, was maybe when they um, started losing uh, part of that bar. You know, a lesser bot would not have been able to sustain all of those hits from Shredder Bro, but Narcissus just kept going, kept, kept going. And its, it's weapon was still functional at yeah. the end of the match. All right. And it sounds like the judges have made their decision. It is a... U it is a unanimous, it is a unanimous vote for Narcissist. Yeah, I, I agree with them, yeah. you know? It's, that was back and forth, and I think if that had been a minute shorter, a minute longer, who knows what would have happened, but wow, Narcissist really held its own and was just punishing in that match. Yeah, So Absolutely. we say an early goodbye to Shredder Bro. But I, I have a feeling we'll see them again. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too worried. I'm pretty sure they live here. <laughs> They've got a cot out back. <laughs> Just one. Just one, and they all share it. All right, looks like Cage 3 is ready to go. Uh, I see a couple of uh, drivers all set. We have uh, in the red corner uh, a drift. Eight, and in the blue seven, corner, we have Weta X. Six, undefeated bracket five, round five, four, three pound division. Three, two, one. Fight, robot fight. Here we go. Oh! Oh! Oh, wow. oh wow, two big exchanges to open up the match. We've got Sparks, who's got the death hum. Yeah. Both bots not afraid to go weapon to weapon. Tap I want to give him a hug. 
Wow. Tap out. Wow, that, I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know what happened there, but I'm, that is not, you know, according to the, his plan going into this, I'm sure. All right, let's take a look and see, you know, what exactly caused his internals to go flying. All right, all right. That, oh, it, it just dumped out. Looked just, like maybe uh, some of the uh, the screws that secured down that top plate gave way. Uh, let's go right, over to Katie in the crowd. Yeah, no, I decided to get one of the other best seats in the house. I'm next to Eli and Nathan, and this is their first time coming to an NHRL event. Now, what caught my eye about the two of you is when that battle was going on, you guys were you guys were flinching back every time it came to hit. How exciting is it really to be in an event, and how different is it maybe when you're watching it otherwise? It's really a completely different experience. I mean, I've seen some things online. I've seen some of the live streams, but it's really completely different just being right up close to the action. Yeah, it's really great being here. I love, you know, the whole setup. Is there a little bit of excitement and fear all at the same time every time we see one of those big uh, big combats? Well, it's been a little more terrifying ever since, since we saw it, since, the, since it <laughs> broke the window. What we saw was very safe. We were all here to, to tell of it, of course. But I think that is what that is what defines the difference here. You smell it, you feel it, it there's a different energy. A completely different energy being here. Do you build anything? Uh, hoping to in the future. We might have a future competitor. The big name is, or the big question is, what would you name it? I don't know. <laughs> I think a father-son duo. Father-son duo here. This could be something exciting to watch for. Thank you guys for your time. Eight, seven, six, five. All right. It looks four. like. Cage Three, two is ready to go. We two, have uh, elimination one, bracket round five. five Wreckfest and fight. Caldera. Wow. Wreckfest has uh, survived into elimination bracket round five. Robert runs here. Um, my, uh, Lindsay, your voice has gotten so deep. Well, you know, what can I tell you, fiance? <laughs> I, uh, I've been screaming a lot, you know, uh, <laughs> today in these matches. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Luke. It's great to have you back. <laughs> this, is, this is good. Yeah. Uh, Robert Run here with Breakfast up against Glenn Boxel and Caldera. I, uh, I think that, uh, that Robert Run is oh! very excited that he's oh, last there goes a wheel. so long. There's one wheel that is now gone from Breakfast. And really, uh, Robert Run here has run the correct configuration for this fight with that big heavy plow on the front designed to break Glenn's uh, horizontal bar. But we are seeing pieces of Wreckfest being sprayed around inside of this box. It's literally a Wreckfest. It is, Chris. Robert Caldera Rudd. might be having Wreckfest for breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, Robert Run here, living his best life, has uh, managed to survive five rounds inside of the elimination bracket. But it does look like he may be going out here in round five to Glenn Boxel, one of the very best drivers in the field. The weapon on Caldera is down. I don't think that Robert's weapon is operational. Really, Glenn is trying to uh, score control points here with 60 seconds left in this fight. I don't know if he's going to really be able to get any control points with half a wheel. Fifty seconds left here in this fight. We've got a fully mobile Caldera with no weapon. We've got a quarter, I would say one, one quarter uh, mobile wreck vest with also no weapon. But I'll tell you, Robert Rund is trying here. Just going full send. The 30 seconds left on the clock. This one will go the full three minutes, very likely, and will go to the judges. Robert Brund, elimination bracket round five. Well done. All right. 
last round of applause for Robert and Glenn here in this fight. This one will go to the judges. Good handshake there between those two competitors. And they are all smiles after that match. Chris, I got to have a little bit of sushi in the break. That was great. Was it room temperature? Uh, it was warm. Yeah. I'm on, a, I'm on a ticking time bomb here, you know? Just a gastronomical uh, disaster waiting to happen. All right, uh, we're gonna go to the judges. Now this looks like it's a unanimous judges decision for Caldera, which advances in the uh, elimination bracket. Robert Run and Wreckfest will be going home early. Now, uh, Robert, I hope that you had an amazing day. And I, I hope that you, uh, that you come back Fantastic. Great work today, Robert. Okay. And it's really, uh, it's Robert's like first foray back into combat robotics in like 20 years. Uh, we were yeah. talking to him last night. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. good Eight, for him. Glad he's back. Seven, and I'm um, glad he's six, having fun with it. Five, yeah, absolutely. Four, okay, look at this. Three, Undefeated bracket round two. two 12 pound action one, kaleidoscope versus. <laughs> Goodness. Across the box, I'm seeing bits oh of, my goodness. of plastic. The weapon on Kaleidoscope oh, is down. Is Kaleidoscope, yeah, they're out. That weapon is no longer functional. Belt hanging loose. Kaleidoscope here is this absolutely gorgeous white and purple robot. Carmen, maroon and silver, and winning these exchanges. Oh, wow. Plastic forks are gone, and you can see a bit of its uh, bottom plate being peeled away. This is a tap out from Kaleidoscope, and Carmen advances in the undefeated bracket. Fun fact: uh, Carmen is being it was built by the builder of Voxel, uh, Michael Shore here. You can see that Vos Voxel esque uh, reliability here on display. Really taking apart this absolutely gorgeous robot in Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope lost its forks, it lost its weapon, and it found itself on its head, unable to self-right. Now when Carmen went around and hit the back of, uh, of that robot, we got the tap out. All right. Now, uh, Kaleidoscope will remain alive. They are going to go down into the elimination bracket for 12 pounds. And uh, we are going to be seeing them at least Eight, one more time here today. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, here, undefeated bracket round five, three pound action Stoneforge versus Jack Move. Jack Move is the red and white robot, Stoneforge is black and white. The little mini bot Bug is with Jack Move. And Bug has successfully high-centered Stoneforge. This is a good pin from one of the Davis boys. Now they're able to hold that pin for 10 seconds. You can see the builder of Stoneforge, James Wynn, telling the referee, tell them to back off here. This is a pin that's gone on for much more than 10 seconds. of heated words there from James and the ref. James has now escaped. Oh, and he's done it again! Oh, wow. wow! That's even better! That is incredible. Jack move is on his head. This is true, Davis. And, uh, oh no! Jack move has done the thing. It stuck itself right there. And Stone get Forge one is... Free, uh, uh, right from the house spot. Chris, it's not Drew Davis. This is Drew Davis' son driving Jack Move. Incredible. Stoneforge popping bug in the air. Good shower of sparks. Stoneforge on Jack Move. Oh, and that is a good pin. Incredible. 
incredible driving from the Davis kids here. Sixty seconds left in this fight. Just a just a flurry of moving bots in this box. Five seconds left here in this match. I'm just transfixed by this. I mean, this is incredible. Jack Move has spent most of the match here on his head. Stoneforge's drum has been absolutely bulletproof. I can see why this is undefeated bracket round five action. All right, they are uh, going to uh, be taking this match to the judges. That's the match. This one will go to the judges. Jack Move and Stoneforge. Wow. We saw a college student in Stoneforge, you know, going up against two kids who are probably still in elementary school. And uh, that was a pretty even exchange. One of the cool things about the Davis boys is that, is that they are always practicing with their dad. Uh, so that's why they're such good drivers. Let's take a look here at this replay. Stoneforge taking a straight to Jack move, and Bug getting under Stoneforge multiple times. Incredible. However, at the end of this match, Stoneforge looked pretty mobile, fully operational. I don't know if the judges are going to award that many damage points to Jack move. You gotta really ask yourself, who was more aggressive? Who had more control? All right, we've got a unanimous judge's decision for Stoneforge, which advances in the undefeated uh, brackets, going on to round six. Amazing. Chris, your thoughts on that fight? Uh, yeah, it was it was it was tough seeing Eight, um, you know Jack seven, Rabbit inverted for six, most of that most of that five, match, and I think four, that's ultimately three, what influenced the judges' two, decisions. One. Fight, robots, fight. All right, elimination bracket round four. This is a do or die moment for these two builders. Kalma and Jem So. Kalma is an undercutter. Oh no! There goes one of the wheels from Kalma. Oh no, sorry, one of the wheels from Jem So. Jem So builder Aaron Taggart would love to have one of those wheels back on his robot. Kalma is just circling through like a shark. Without that wheel, Gemso is surprisingly mobile, able to gyro itself around inside of the box. The weapon on Gemso has gone down, and oh. there goes the wheel! Oh, no! Oh, no! Wow, we have all evened up here in this match. We have two robots that have one wheel each and no weapon. With a minute and 55 to go. Chris, at this point in the match, this is what I like to call quiet time, you know? Like, this is an opportunity for us to, uh, to just kind of meditate, you know, on the, the nature of combat robotics. Right, and meditate on the lobster roll that I ate in about 15 seconds. Now, uh, we got a good question from the production uh, room. They asked, can we win a match on style points? Oh, look at that! Chris, I can't believe it. Gemso's weapon is back. I could have sworn that Gemso's weapon was down. I'm and, starting to go loopy here. There's only two working wheels in this whole match. <laughs> All right, if Gemso can land another big hit. Wow. This is looking sad here. Wow, okay. The reason why uh, Calm, uh, why Gemso's not uh, spinning up his weapon all the way is because it is dragging that weapon on the floor. I'm sure that Gemso uh, driver, Aaron Taggart, would love to show the judges that he uh, has a bit more control over his robot with that weapon. 40 seconds left here in this fight. 
Ooh, good crab walking there, Aaron. 30 seconds left here in this fight. Let's see if Gemso can fire up that weapon one more time, maybe score another big hit before this goes to the judges. Elimination bracket round four. One of these drivers will be going home in 15 seconds from now. Leaving here in uh, the third session at Norwalk Havoc. Countdown's happening. Four, two, oh, sorry, one. That's the end of the match. This one will go to the judges. All right, we've got a question here from the judges. They want to know if Kalma's weapon is down or if Kalma's weapon is off. If the, uh, if the, the captain of Kalma can hear me, is that weapon dead? Mine still works. Uh, sorry, yes. I'm talking to the captain of Kalma. Can you hear me, sir? Somebody tap the captain of Kalma. I'm looking right at him. Your weapon's dead. All right, as far as I know, the weapon is dead. That's what he says. Okay. The weapon on Kalma is dead. It looks like Gemso's weapon was still up, but dragging along the floor. Oh, whoa. Is this a split decision? Don, what? Okay, all right, we're, we're, getting, we're getting head shakes here. Okay, uh, let's, let's hear from you. Don, Jack, and Andrew, who do you think won this fight? Kalma. 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 Oh, really? Kalma was the undercutter, Don. I guess I'm out. I voted for... <laughs> Jack. I voted for Demso. Well, I, it was a 9-8 split for me. I mean, it was close. Okay, good. But, like, in the last two minutes, they didn't touch, so, like, you That's know. That's fair. That's fair. You can only judge, like, the first minute, basically. But, like, you know, it's pretty close. Jack Tweedy is the uh, tiebreaker here. Is it going to be Kalma or Gemso? I also gave it to Gemso. Okay. We've got a split judge's decision for Gemso, which uh, stays alive in the elimination bracket. Kalma will be going home early. But listen, lasting to round four of the elimination bracket is pretty good. That's Chris. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You've been, I mean, we're coming up on uh, what? Hour 10 of this tournament. Yeah, exactly. Going strong. Okay. Now I see that we are loading into the big box. That looks like biggish over there. Are we loading into the other box? We are. I see the Casey's over there. Oh my goodness, it's Casey Jermiason. Which robot are you running, Casey? Oh, and I can see Zach Knight over there in the blue hoodie. Looks like uh, they're closing this box. I would love to see inside of the box. Zach Eight, is pacing. Seven, six, All right, it looks five, like it's Firebug four, versus whatever three, Zach Knight is running. Two, one, fight, robot. Oh, it's from Hina. Wow, what a surprise. I love it. From Hina just coming out of the box. It was off the frame and oh! Incredible! Casey Jermiason is preventing Bubbles from coming in to save uh, Promhita. A massive upset. Wow. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh he's saying Bubbles. I don't think so. Firebug torching Bubbles. Zack Knight has, can do nothing here. This is an interesting strategy, Chris. Yeah, it's like he's defending a carcass of, a, of an animal from, a, from another predator. We, uh, we've called this the Anthony the Ambrosio move, the, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, named after Tony. 
who, uh, who really championed, uh, championed this at Norwalk Havoc. And Casey Jermiason, here we go. Oh, the minibots coming in. Pramhita is, uh, is very close to escaping. Wow! Oh, oh. here we go! Awesome! The minibot is intent <laughs> on saving the main bot of Pramheta. Oh, that is incredible! Oh. What's happening? Oh. What is happening? This is the first time we've ever seen that happen, I think. It looks like Firebug could be uh, high-centered yet again on a piece of debris. Huge amount of smoke inside of this box. This has been a very lenient referee in, uh, in cage one. We have not called for motion, at least not yet. Wow, I love that flamethrower, Chris. Five seconds remaining. And that is the match. Uh, this one will go to the judges. Wow, I, I feel like I saw a couple of uh, different moments where a referee could have done a count out. Wow, look at that. I want to see a, that slow-mo shot of the uh, of the f of the flame getting redirected uh, back at the uh, at the bot who's dishing it out. Yeah, that was very cool. That's so cool. Oh, Casey's done such a great job with that flame thrower. Now you've got to ask yourself: Is uh, preventing the saving throw of bubbles is that showing aggression and control? I think you could argue that it is. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, Promheta just blowing that fire straight back to the face of Firebug. Amazing. That's so cool. All right, this match went the full three minutes. We're going to go to the judges. Oh. Ah. Judges are still deliberating. Okay. It's hard to quantify damage with fire. Yeah, that's true. This... All right, we're going to go and check in with Lindsay. She's got a poll up in the YouTube live chat. All right, so this poll is live, so people are still voting. But right now, Premheda stands at 83% of the vote. So I would say that that is a pretty decisive victory, at least according to the fans, about who won this particular match. Yeah, I guess, um, I don't know, can, can we make a value judgment about whether it's ethical to uh, prevent your opponent from being saved by the house robot? Well, I mean, in battle, sometimes ethics has to just fall to the wayside, right? Yeah. We've just heard over the radio that we have a split judges decision. Really? Yeah. Okay. And the winner of that match, split judges decision, is Zack Knight and Promheda. Promheda survives here and uh, will advance. Incredible. However, Casey Jermiason picked up one vote. That's pretty good. We do have a, uh, a judge back there who's sympathetic Eight, to, uh, to seven, Casey's strategy. Six, five, All right, we're going to go over to four, cage four. This is Biggish versus two, Insubordination. One, elimination fight, round robot. bracket. Uh, elimination bracket round two. These are the kids from Florida Polytechnic with the smaller robot. Oh! And the Biggish robot is being run by Brendan Steele from Ohio. Insubordination already has its belt offline. Ooh, losing that belt in 15 seconds, not great. Insubordination now on its head. Let's see if Brendan can come in and land yet another big hit. Oh, here comes Fluffy. There we go, that's the one saving throw of Fluffy. Brendan's box though, oh, here we go. Tipping his opponent yet back again onto its, its back. Is Brendan going to allow insubordination to sit here and die? Brendan is celebrating. Elimination bracket round two. It looks like Brendan and Biggish will be advancing to Knock elimination out. bracket round three. The kids from Florida going home with insubordination. 
Brendan Steele, aka Business Cat, is a very popular character here. Business Cat has a lot of fans in the YouTube live chat. Let's take a quick replay. Uh, look, look here at this replay. Such a substantial bar on Biggish. Yeah, yeah. You've got to love that. Here we <laughs> go, Business Cat. My love goodness. it. goodness. Yeah. He's got a lot of fans in the YouTube live chat, uh, a lot of uh, online fans Eight, who uh, seven, are tuning in to watch him six, compete. Five, oh my gosh. Four, three, two, Elimination bracket one, round five, five Silent Spring versus T Flag. Wow. This is Jameson Go in his attempt to crawl out of the elimination bracket. Jameson Go is the uh, number two ranked all time robot here at Norwalk Havoc. And with the elimination of Shredded Bro, Silent Spring is officially the top-ranked robot in the Beetle Wave that is still alive in the brackets. Now, Silent Spring is a four and a half pound walking robot, undercutter, facing Steve Campbell and Tiefschlag. Now, fun fact about these two builders, Steve Campbell was inspired to begin building combat robots because of Jameson Go. Jameson Go visited his work uh, and talked to Steve and his colleagues about combat robotics and inspired him to get get, uh, get involved. So uh, really, you know, this is Steve fighting one of his favorite combat robot builders of all time in Jameson Go. T-Schlag there, uh, a little bit of self-inflicted damage, kicking itself across the box. And really, Jameson Go is in the fight for his life here. Looks like the weapons on both of these bots are still running. Jameson Go would love to get under Tiefschlag and start eating away at those wheels. Looks like Tiefschlag's starting to lose a little bit of steam here. Yeah, I think that uh, all of that black foam that we're seeing are from the wheels of Tiefschlag. The focus of Jameson Go is incredible. He is just zeroing in on those wheels. Yep. He wants to turn them from circles into squares, Chris. Circle gets the square. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's so much black black foam right there. Jameson Go now coming around, trying to reset himself. This has been an absolutely damn uh, uh, absolutely dominant performance from Jameson Go. It's just it's that it's that calculated uh, wheel eating that we're seeing that's uh, that's slowly uh, but surely uh, been giving Silent Spring uh, the further and further and further advantage in this fight. The weapon belt on Tiefschlag is gone. With 30 seconds left in this match, Steve Campbell here is uh, really trying to stay mobile and hoping and praying to the combat robotics gods that something will happen to Silent Spring. Some kind of like a spontaneous brownout here. Unfortunately, Jameson might actually be the combat robotics god, so he might be praying in vain. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, this is the end of the match. This one will go to the judges. Round of applause from the audience. They loved this match. Now, this one went all three minutes, which I'm gonna say, if I could survive three minutes with Jameson Go, I'm gonna go home a happy person, you know? Jamo is a very incredibly uh, tough opponent. And we saw that he just stayed absolutely focused on his strategy, eating away at those wheels of Tiefschlag. All right, we're gonna go over to the judges and no uh, surprise here. This is a unanimous judge's decision for Silent Spring, winning all of the points across the box. I think that this is the most unanimous of the unanimous decisions that we've seen so far today. This was a very much one-sided match. Great job, judges. Okay. All right, I see that Cage 2 is locked and ready to go. Sepiol versus Jetlag. This is the last chance for these two builders. Eight, the loser seven, here will be six, going home. Five, Elimination four, bracket round five three, action. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight.
Jet lag here is this uh, little white robot run by Lars Elliott, a 13-year-old kid from Maryland. And Sepiol is this wide, triangle-shaped robot from Lucas Uermeyer. He competes on BattleBots with Ribot. 15 seconds into this fight, and Jetlag has now gone weapon to weapon multiple times with Lucas. Incredible. Oh, big hit right there. Wow. Huge hit from Jetlag on Sepiol. So a little bit of metal go off. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. I think that that is one of the, uh, the forks on jet lag. It's been stripped away from the body. Can we get a wheel count? Oh, it looks like jet lag still has both of its wheels. Daniel's weapon is going. The weapon on jet lag is down. Tap out. That is a tap, tap out. out. Tap out, Sepiol. Really? Let's look at this replay here. Incredible. Wow. This was an incredibly punishing match. Lars Elliott, this 13 year old eighth grader, is one of the best young drivers here on the East Coast with his incredibly aggressive driving style. Now, I think that I missed the uh, last second of that match uh, because I am, uh, you know, pretty surprised that Sepiol uh, uh, tapped out. Now, my goodness, we were two and now we're three. Ricky Willems, oh my God, Mammoth Captain Ricky Willems is in the building. Thank you. Ricky, I am so glad that you're joining us here for uh, the semifinals and finals. Me too. And uh, you've been hiding here inside the building watching robot fights. Uh, where, where where did we put you to work earlier in the day, Ricky? So the first uh, two-thirds of this day, I've been over in cage number five. Basically, that is the elimination cage. If you uh, were unfortunate enough to be knocked out early in, the, early in your fights, early in the day, you head over there and you get a chance at redemption. And uh, I've, I've just been watching redemption story after redemption story. It has been, uh, it's been an exciting morning. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we're going to check in with Katie. Katie is cage side, it looks like with Lars. Yeah, L Lars and I are trying to have a conversation here and he just keeps saying this is something and this is something and this is some non-existence. There's like, so I, I was trying to break his weapon. I ran full speed, I did something. I got him up on his end and I wasn't able to capitalize because I just wasn't able to get a good bite on him because he's very durable. But he is wrecked my weapon. Like, and then the drive, Took a couple of hits and then something, it just completely bonked out. It probably the switch might have came on John, but the drive still spins and that's good. All right, Lars, but would it make you feel any better if you send, cut, send, actually did a send, cut, save and gave you a, a little what? bit of help to get your bot back together? Oh. Be very thankful. Yeah, I would like that because I need to redo all of these forks. They're like wow. royally messed up. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you out there, Lars. Lars, again, is a 13-year-old who, again, I ask, oh, are we all doing at age 13? This guy's doing robots, fixing robots, and competing in against robots, so it's pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And wow, and one of the winners of the Send Cut Save gift card from Send Cut Send. Yeah, I want one uh, of those. Awarded to uh, the builder with a, a huge amount of damage to help them get their robot back together. Fantastic. He's going to need it. Yeah. Okay, good. Now... I look, it looks now, as we get a little bit closer here to the finals, we're going to start to see, you know, some of those bots that have emerged as stories of those, you know, the redemption Eight, of coming out of that seven, bracket. Ricky, six, you're going to be, uh, five, you're going to be key to giving four, us some of the insights of the three, things that we've missed on the other side two, of the building. That's the hope. Fight, okay. robots. We're going to go over to Cage One. This is Tryhard versus, I think, Accelerando. Big hits right off the bat. Ricky, this is 30 pound action. I love it. It's what I've been craving all morning, frankly, and it's, I'm sure it won't disappoint. Oh! Wow. Tryhard is this black uh, tombstone-esque robot, and Accelerando is this long, weird, uh, you know, vertical spinner. Mechadom wheels on the back end, and that, that spinning drum in the front reminds me a lot of tantrums. Mm-hmm, yeah. Those mechanum wheels, though, struggling in the moment. Yeah, this is like a uh, tantrum at home, you know? 
Whoa! Oh, big hit. Well, now they're working now. Dominic Yankaskis and Triard absolutely taking it to Accelerando. We're not seeing any acceleration from Accelerando. That Lots of on deck. Ooh. Yeah, a bit of a spin, a bit of a, you know, he can go. Oh, man, big hit after big hit. Yeah, Tryhard kind of ramped itself here on Accelerando. Wow. Wow. Huge concussive hit mm -hmm. there. Accelerando wants to use those mechanum wheels to keep its front towards the enemy, but it just didn't happen. Oh, oh it's trying, though. It's being counted out, Ricky. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And Dominic Yankaskis has already driven his bot to the door. He's ready to go. <laughs> the this, truck has started. Is this a match that, uh, wow, we're going to pause this match. What can this mean? For what reason, Control? An unstick? That's not, not a thing. An unstick? Did the two robots uh, stick, <laughs> stick themselves? Jim Haney, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, it appears that that robot is stuck in the corner oh, on the side of the I arena. See. There's a little bit of a gap there. In fact, it's stuck pretty well. Look at that. The crowbar uh, not immediately doing the job. And that, that's not a weak man. I mean, he's he's going in there with some, some gumption, and it's still taking a little work. I see. I just heard from Control that uh, Fluffy was not able to unstick Accelerando, which is why they are pausing this match. Jim Haney is uh, acting as... Uh, as the house bot here. Oh. <laughs> a little shimmy there, for good measure. <laughs> like this is hey, the modification to the box with the uh, crowbar. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this door working. There we go. Good job, Jim. Okay. All right, that was the free unstick that uh, Accelerando gets. And uh, in a moment here, we're going to see the conclusion of this match. Oh my God, Ricky! Look at Accelerando. Oh, it's it's looking there's... sad, Ricky. No, it's lighter. It's more efficient. He's removing parts <laughs> that were unnecessary. Those are speed holes. Right. All oh. right, this match is back on. Hey, you know what? Caskis is intent on uh, scoring a knockout here. Oh no! Hit after hit, but it's holding up. Oh Whoa. my word! Wow. But I think Accelerando might be in trouble here. It's... Yep, Accelerando is being counted out. That last hit was too big. All right, good job, Jim. Knockout. Fantastic. Knockout. The winner of this match is Tryhard and Dominic Yankaskis. Accelerando is accelerating home. And look at that hit. Oh. Ricky, this is a suffer bot here. Look at this. All right. This was two minutes. Wow. Of... You know what? I will tell you this. Accelerando, very tough robot. There are not a lot of bots that can go two minutes with Tryhard and take multiple hits to the face. Frankly, it's in the same shape, you know, physical <laughs> shape. It's, it's much worse shape, but it is roughly Accelerando shaped at the end of this fight. And... Now, a lot of people couldn't say that. This was the impact here that I was worried a tiny bit for Dominic and Tryhard when he found himself kind of tipped up up against the rail. But mm -hmm. uh, that last exchange was enough to secure the win. All right. No, oh, here we go. Eight, We're going to go over to seven, cage three. Six, five. Clyde four, versus Silk. Three, two very wide two, robots. One. Mm -hmm. Fight, robots. Undefeated bracket round five. Silk driven by Team Ribot, uh, team member Christian Cooper. Clyde here is this green and orange flamethrower. Ooh, a bit of self inflicted damage from Silk. Mm -hmm. Clyde run by Gabriel Brown from Austin, Texas. They like to barbecue things in Texas, Chris. That's, I've heard. That's where we're getting this flame royal char from. That smoky flavor. That is delicious, Ricky. I love it. Yeah. I want to know their secret herbs and spices in these robots. They, they're quick. <laughs> the, uh, the whiteness of these uh, two bots is just absolutely Damn. delicious. I oh, love wow. it. Out right there. What? That's it. Was that a... Clyde that was a tapping tap out. out? Yes. Clyde stopped moving. Wow. What happened? 
Undefeated bracket round five action. Clyde is going to be uh, getting kicked down into the elimination bracket here in round five. Still, that is very deep. Yeah. There are not a lot more uh, fights in the elimination bracket for you popping back up and into the, uh, the winner's bracket. Right. All right, let's go and check out this replay. Oh, I love fire. Clyde, it's gorgeous. Look at this. Gabriel, you've built a, just an absolutely gorgeous spot here. And then we had this kind of random like ending, I, very unexpected. But I guess uh, Clyde just lost power here and wasn't able to move. All right. All right, let's uh, kick it over to Katie. Well, Drift is the one who's paying attention to what happened in that last battle as he is the one going up against it. Right now, uh, they're noticing that the weapon pulley uh, Un yeah, as you can see, came apart. And so that's what they're working on to fix quickly before going out to battle. Meanwhile, on the other side of this pool, as we kind of make our way through the pits, we have James here with Voltage. And all day long, he's had some pretty good, solid battles, in fact. And you are uh, you got the tools out. And, uh, you know, one of those things that you're working on is uh, pulling it together here. Um, you had mentioned there's a few different issues. What are they right now? So... I've been doing really well. I think I, all the bots I've ever got knockouts. It's just last fight, my antenna actually broke and my bot was having spasms. So now I'm trying to free hook everything and I think I'm gonna do a lot of grudge matches and have fun. Yeah, and you and your buddies seem to be having fun. That's one of the things that when you guys come away from your battles, it's a good time. How important is it to have friends like that here supporting you? It's really good. My friend, my team captain, he has his own bot and it's really cool. We like work together, we fly in here. And it's really fun to just be with your buddies and like you learn from your mistakes and it's just really fun to meet other people. And yeah, it's really epic. Yeah, totally epic and you learn from your mistakes. Those are two key takeaways. I'm learning here being around this crew, but really these guys have a lot of work to, ahead of them as well here to compete. Thank you, Katie. If you get a chance, uh, see what's going on with Clyde and what happened in that fight. We'd really like to know, uh, you know, how the bot uh, just kind of abruptly came to a, a, a short stop there before the match had ended. Yeah. All right. Looks like we have uh, a couple of uh, bots in motion right now. Uh, cage four is currently being loaded in. Mm -hmm. I see glowing lights. I oh, think we're close. Oh, no. Oh, my. Well, if you're ready for excitement, it's a... You're in the right space. You know, Voltage earlier, that was one of the robots. That All right, let's, uh, let's take it over to Lindsay real quick. All right, so uh, it looks like we have Depth Charge coming up very shortly. But speaking of extremely destructive glass cannons, we have a super chat here from Curtis Honeycutt who says, I speak for all of us when I say, we want Dark Side. How about that, Chris? I've heard of that bot. It's a... Uh, the, the, the rumor is that there was a radio shack somewhere off of I-95 that was struck by lightning, and uh, when it burned to the ground, all that was left was Darkseid. Maybe <laughs> we'll see Darkseid again in 2022, although the competition is getting stiff. It, it's getting fierce, honestly. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of horrifying what they're bringing to the table these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eight. Seven, but you never know. Six, All right, five, we're going over to cage four, four now. I think we're going to see three, this. Oh, well, two, Waddles go. is still One, waddling five, in anticipation, robots, but five. Death Charge oh. again is showing that it is a very dangerous bot, even to itself. Dangerous literally to everything. Opponent itself, the arena. We're going to see if, uh, if Fluffy's able to get over there and help get Death Charge off of the, the side of the wall. But it's not doing the business quite yet. I think they got to come at him from the other direction yeah, there. Yeah, well, there we are. And now let's see if it can wiggle itself free from that corner. Ooh. It's starting to. Now, it's a very strange uh, form of locomotion. It's using the, that gyroscopic power, and it's resting on top of all of these barbecue bristles. Mm-hmm. Some of which are already missing. The additional ones missing. Oh, oh I see. Wow, Sparks what was fire. that? I don't know if that was supposed to happen. 
Chris, that's a lot of electrical discharge. There is, we might see some electrical fire here in a moment. <laughs> I think I just had electrical discharge. I, yeah, it's electric over here. <laughs> oh, I, that's gonna be a replay and a half. You know, electrical discharge are not, not shocking. I ah. expect something funny to happen every time. <laughs> Look, it's still going, there's still sparks. <laughs> it cut away at the last moment, just fluffy nuzzling it is enough to elicit Lightning in the box. You don't have to be so negative about it. Oh, I am I am positive that that joke wasn't necessary. <laughs> Let's go to the replay here. Uh, so this is what kind of set the uh, the match. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the depth charge just kind of uh, ends up on the side of that box. But when it does make its way back out, look it, at that. Oh, I it's, see. It's it. the wiring. And the brushes are already on the ground. This, this was over quickly. But over in an entertaining fashion. Yes, it's like that that bristle uh, that bristle drive really doesn't um, give him the mobility to make his way around an utter cutter utter undercutter. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I think that that was uh, not necessarily the type of match that Depth Charge wanted to have at this stage. No, no, it's he needed something that could uh, allow him to get at least a little bit of a spin up, so that first hit could be a little more energetic. As, as soon as he lost those bristles, he's just a weapon sitting in the arena. Right, right, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to dwell on this fact, but I was hoping that your jokes could continue to remain current uh, as we go forward here. Nothing. A mild you, smile. I do saw you see what you that. did there? I don't. No, okay. No. I didn't. No. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see some mo uh, momentum happening over here in uh, in cage one. Got some uh, some bigger bots getting loaded in. Mm -hmm. They're. Uh, do we know who we have yet? Oh, front towards enemy and kaleidoscope in what? Uh, yeah, that's box four, right? Did yeah. you? Uh, so have you seen uh, front towards enemy yet today? I have not. No, I mean since I've been uh, dwelling mostly in the uh, elimination bracket, uh, these undefeated folks, uh, I, I've seen some of them before, granted, but but not in action this morning. This is a weird bot. Oh, um, go on. Uh, so I think uh, I heard Gil over the headset earlier today said that it was. Some kind of Omni Kiwi drive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really kind of just drags itself. It's got three wheels, uh, you know, actually, you know, 120 degrees uh, off, of, uh, off of one another. And um, it looks like it could spin perfectly in circles, uh, but it kind of takes uh, two wheels and drags itself mm -hmm. in the direction that it needs to move in. But you know, I think that they built the uh, the, the the overall uh, wheels in this way so that they're able to turn on that dime and get that big powerful weapon, uh, you know, consistently lined up with their opponent. And when you have a weapon that size, that's really all you need to be able to do. Front towards enemy, ironically, given you know the matchup. But if you can keep that weapon pointed and and keep your offense as your defense, that'll be enough. If your robot's reliable, that will be enough. And they're going to have a, actually a very tough opponent here. Uh, you know, one that uh, also has a, a very powerful drive, very powerful vertical spinner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is uh, this is really going to be an interesting match to see. You know, who's going to win the mobility versus the uh, the head-to-head -head weapon? And there we see Kaleidoscope uh, in the uh, in the red corner. Um, Kaleidoscope, very uh, you know, uh, very uh, you know, end game esque. Yeah, we can call it quick, um, reliable, sturdy. Eight, it's seven. It's gonna Six, have a good chance. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robot. Oh, here we go. Elimination bracket round two, the 12 pounders. Let's hear some noise. Go. You know, not slow out of the gate on front towards enemy, but uh, oh, here we go. Doing its best. Look at the fingers on that kaleidoscope. That is something else. Polycarbon on oh, wheel. It's, uh, the mobility still looks good, though. I mean, that's one of the reasons you see multiple wheel robots. Oh, another wheel gone. So we are two of seven wheels down in this fight. Something you don't get to say very often. A lot uh, of spinning. Oh! So Whoa, close. Wow. That's the hit we needed. There's the hit he needed. I don't think he's going to be Tap coming out. back from this. Tapped yeah. out. And oh, smoke. no. Oh, now we have a lipo fire. Chris, where there's smoke. Man. Uh, 
front towards enemy has its top towards floor. Mm -hmm. Kaleidoscope uh, earning itself a, a knockout. And that's the elimination round, too. So that, that will be the end of uh, Front Towards Enemy, right? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, unique bot. I hope we see it again. I hope we see some, uh, some interesting changes. Let's take a look at this replay. Look, and that, that hit really just did it all. There were some tactical errors earlier in that match. You can see the chunks. That's not from that last hit, but that fire, that's all about that last exchange. Yeah. Kaleidoscope just able to kind of, you know, cut right through that uh, that wheel housing like butter. Mm -hmm. It's um, that is a that is a devastating weapon on the front of that bot. Truly, the the blade must have a sharp sharp end on it. We, you don't always see that. A lot of times you see them fly farther. A lot of times you see a uh, you know an explosive exchange, but you can see the damage there in the metal, like the actual chunks being taken out. Um, that that must be a sharp weapon. Yeah, it's it's almost reminiscent of some of the hammer saws that you see now in uh, in the heavyweight divisions that just kind of eat True. away at metal, uh, taking bites uh, even from AR five hundred uh, plate. Yep, if you're tactical enough, uh, it it makes it look like butter. It really does. Yeah. So. All right, it looks like Cage Three has a couple of bots loaded up. Yep, we uh, see Dominic lining up. I'm. Can't quite make out who the uh, other option is. I see some WPI shirts in there, though. Yeah, we have. Uh, oh, we here have we are. Stone Forge and Sea Dragons Roar in Cage Three. Uh, additionally, oh, I see <laughs> they were in the wrong corners. <laughs> All right, so we got uh, we got Stone Forge uh, uh, over in the uh, in the blue corner. Mm -hmm. Sea Dragons Eight, uh, Roar over seven, in the red corner. Six. You know what five, a raincoat there. Four, three. Two, one, fight. Robots fight. Quick action there. Undefeated bracket, round six, the three pound division. Stoneforge, Sea Dragons roar. Shots oh, coming no! off. Oh, rapid disassembly there. Oh, I see wires. I see belts. I tap see a tap out. out. Uh, I see it. <laughs> wow. London and France. There we are. That was a quick match. Yeah, I think well, that that had been uh, 15 seconds, mm -hmm. if 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 that. Stoneforge really not a robot to mess with. It's well, neither of these robots, frankly, are robots to mess with. There's a reason they've gotten this far into the day, right. um, and this is the undefeated bracket. So we're going to see them both again. Take a look at this replay. Look at that. Look at the control he's able to do. Those are measured hits. He's yeah. really, he, he could go full send into that, but he wants hit after hit. He wants, he wants that exchange. He wants uh, to be able to cut into the bottom of that robot, and that's exactly what he did. I, that, that's some underappreciated uh, driving tactics. Yeah, right it was there. really, really great driving. All right, I see uh, over here in uh, cage two, a couple of bots loaded in. I see, uh, I see Narcissist and, uh, and Spartan X. Uh -huh. That means that this must be loser's bracket round six. It is. Both of these robots had some really entertaining fights. I'm, I'm hoping we have some footage to show after, uh, uh, afterwards, but uh, Narcissist especially had some, some really high energy exchanges. So I'm, I'm really interested to see this fight. Uh, every, every, really, uh, truly everything Dominic has brought today. Dominic, Eight, excuse me. Seven. Here we Six, are. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Off we go. Robots fight. Oh, a big hit after a big hit there. I I can predict we're gonna have a lot of bouncing in this fight. I think we've uh, we've seen narcissists bounce in virtually every fight today. There's. There's something I respect about someone who comes with a robot with that much chaotic energy. Although Spartan not moving a ton here, so it, uh, it may be less bouncing than we had in mind. Very sluggish drive on Spartan X. Oh, what, is this a loop back? Congratulations. Oh yeah, I had to step out real quick. And yep, and we are hearing the count out on Johnny Sumpas and Spartan X. Elimination bracket round six. 
this is the end of the road for Johnny. Knockout. His road to the finals cut short here in March. Mm -hmm. Johnny Supas flew in today here from the Bahamas, Ricky. What's the furthest that you've ever uh, traveled for a robot event? Let's see. Uh, well, you know, I've gone to California quite a few times now with with uh, with BattleBots, but uh, yeah, Bahamas. That's going to be well. Uh, let's see. As the crow flies, maybe not. But the Bahamas certainly seems farther away. I'm a terrible geometry student. Or, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh my. Well, I guess that counts too. Yeah. No. Well, there you go. I am As trying to triangulate. Yeah, That's exactly. a very kind, kind moment. Of, geography student is what I'm trying to say. So I don't know. If crow flies. Uh, which one would be farther? Yeah. But I have a feeling it's the Bahamas. Yeah. You know, uh, for some reason, just being on an island, it just seems more intimidating. Yeah, uh, you know. If you go out like 20 miles offshore, I'm sure there's something here in Connecticut, and yeah. it, it's gonna feel like you're just in a, another plane of existence, I'm sure. Yeah. Johnny Sumpas, one of my favorite young builders, his dream is to get onto BattleBots before he uh, graduates from high school. Ah. And I think with, with performance like this, I mean, we, we may be seeing that from Team Stamina. There's a real shot. And, and let me tell you, as someone uh, who, who BattleBots captains, there's a lot of recruiting that happens here. I yeah. mean, every BattleBots team is looking at these fights, at these events, and saying, who's, who's the right person? All right, we're going to go to Katie, and she's got Johnny Sumpas here cage side. Yeah, no talking with Johnny. We just had a conversation with James and Voltage, and now it's Johnny with Spartan X. Unfortunately, not exactly the way that you would have wanted that to go. Yeah, uh, we actually are functioning fine, but uh, they hit our wedge, and it high-centered us. So our wheels weren't touching the ground. Um, we were a bit rushing, so I didn't screw this in, and it looks like they cracked the wedge, and we just got high-centered on it. So. It's the worst, the worst way to lose is when your robot works. Um, you want to go home with your robot in a bag. I would say that's probably a fair thing, but if it helps you out at all, we're going to go ahead and give you a send cut save Whoa. and help you and your team out. Yeah. Yeah. Here we yeah. go, Johnny. <laughs> I do but declare. That, could, that could help uh, a little bit with, uh, with the going home, the robot in a bag and uh, with some parts. This is paying for the uh, new carbon fiber that Phantom 3 messed up, so appreciate it. Thanks to Sen Cut Sen, I guess. All right, yeah, I guess we're going to find out if Sen Cut Sen ships to the Bahamas, Ricky. Uh, you know, I I believe they will. That yeah. I've worked with that company so much, Every literally everything I've asked them to do, they've been able to help me out. Now, I haven't asked them for, uh, you know, as much as these people are receiving today, but uh, I'll tell you what, they deserve it. The performances Eight, they're putting on, everyone here seven, does. Awesome. And we've six, got another fight. Five. Four, All right, we're going to go three, over to Elimination Bracket, two, Round 6 action. One, Caldera five, versus two, Silent Spring. Oh, this boy. This is a big one. This Stop. is a huge one. These are two incredibly tough horizontal spinners. The four and a half pound behemoth of Silent Spring versus Caldera and Glenn Boxel. Jameson being incredibly tactical here. Look at look at him using that rear uh, center oh. blade of armor. Big hit though. Doesn't matter how good your armor is, you get enough kinetic energy in there, and you are going flying. You see that huge gash in the back of Jameson goes robot. That is a very tough armor plate back there. Completely 3D printed. Wow, it's just cut wide open. Look at this, and those pieces of plastic seem like they might be a little bit of an enemy to those walking little leglets he's got oh. in there. Oh, and there's a wheel come off. This there's is a wheel from Caldera. The left side wheel of Caldera is gone. The weapon on Caldera is gone. One of the wheels is gone. Tap we are out. tapping out. This is the end of the road for Glenn Boxel and Caldera. Round of applause. Yeah, bravo. For Jameson Go who remains alive in the elimination bracket, advancing to round seven. There aren't that many rounds left in the elimination bracket. There aren't. There's a good chance that Silent Spring could be escaping that bracket to face the winner of the undefeated bracket. Silent Spring is just one of those robots. You have to keep your eye on at all times. And even though we saw them early in the elimination bracket, well, midway through the elimination bracket, they're just going to keep fighting. And if anyone's going to earn their way out, it's Jameson Go. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely.
Sawblaze Captain Jameson Go here, earning a win over uh, the Boxels. Brian Boxel and his dad, Glenn Boxel. Brian is on Team Bloodsport. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, as we kind of narrow this field, it's all BattleBots builders from here on out, Ricky. It, These are your colleagues, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, friends, colleagues, uh, enemies. No, not enemies. <laughs> uh, rivals, we'll say, perhaps. Rivals, but, that's uh, good. Yeah, it, it's it's just so much it's so much talent, and uh, it's one of the reasons I, I really this is the place to start if you want to be building big robots, whether it's battle bots or not. All the same skills apply. And there's yeah. a reason you see the battle bots builders here. It's because they're they are good at this kind of thing, and I don't just mean combat robots in general. I mean you know all the technical background, the, the knowledge helps. The the, yeah. the the knowledge is like a cross uh, applicable kind of thing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're going to kick it over to Katie, who is a cage side with the winner of that last match. Suboptimal. That is how uh, Jameson Go is currently describing it. Uh, why do you say it? Oh, I mean, uh, it's been a really long tournament for Silent Spring, a lot of early tournament gremlins. And uh, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily expecting to have this many fights. Uh, <laughs> just looking at the condition of the blade here for a second. Yeah. This is like, all right, that's the best we can do with this one. So it was really, really quite dull. Uh, and we're really lucky that he got stuck in the wall there, allow us to get that wheel. But otherwise, he's doing a lot of damage to the backside. So we're gonna have to do a quick field repair on that and then get back into the next fight. Is, is that something you think gonna get back up to optimal shape or is it gonna be sub op at this point forward? Oh, it's never gonna be fully optimal, but that's <laughs> half the fun is uh, trying to win with the the most suboptimal configuration you can. <laughs> yeah, it's a strategy. Junkyard, the junkyard fix part of it. It's a lot of fun. You know, that seems like a big old puzzle, but I'm glad that it's uh, it's on him, not me, to try and figure out. Oh my God, I love Jameson Go. I love that can-do attitude of Jameson Go. Yeah. You know, like he's he's always looking on kind of the the bright side of a match and uh, really thinking his way through the problem, really trying to diagnose these problems in real time. I mean, we are seeing iterative design, uh, you know, happening here at yeah, every single competition. Live in front of our eyes. Yeah, that's really cool. No robot here from a decent builder will leave the same robot it came. They're, yeah. they're never going to come back exactly the same. Yeah. All right, we're going to go over to Cage 2 here. They've just locked the box. I see Tothic and Christian Cooper from Team Ribot, Team WEI, and Jackrabbit, Eight, run seven, by Drew Davis six, This is going to be Pain good. Train. Five, four, three, two, Elimination one, bracket round five. 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 Robots five. Jackrabbit has been dominant in the elimination bracket all day, so this should be an explosive fight one way or another. That minibot, most effective minibot that we have seen in the elimination bracket as well. Yeah, that little green minibot is run by the Davis kids. It's a minibot named Bug. And uh, we've seen Bug successfully high center its opponents multiple times today. Really well driven, I would say, Ricky. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, especially considering the age of the, the drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Although Jackrabbit on its own, also truly a threat with or without Bug. Yeah. Jackrabbit is one of Drew Davis's favorite robots, and um, you know what we've seen here with Topic is this very patient strategy. We're trying to wedge around uh, Jackrabbit, hopefully break that weapon before going to work with that overhead yes, saw. Each one of those exchanges is, you know, it's taking its toll. Patience is great, but if you're uh, if you're taking a punch to the face with each time you bide your time, you're not going to last. Yeah. What we've seen uh, here is Christian Cooper refusing to uh, to sink his weapon right into a live, you know, opponent, which is pretty smart. But really, if you're a judge, you got to say, is this aggression? Is he putting himself in danger, Ricky? You know? You know or is he just running away? No, but he is getting control in that exchange. Here we go. Jackrabbit popping Topic on its head. Pop after pop. I, Topic seems to be holding oh. up, even though we're seeing chunks fly. We've got oh. Jackrabbit on a good pin, but it sounds very quiet now in the box. Eerie, perhaps. Oh, Minute oh 15. and Topic. Christian Cooper has spun stuff. up his weapon. Is he able to move it? Whoa! Oh! Drew Davis escaping that hit. And honestly, this is what Topic wanted to do. They wanted to hit and hit until that weapon on Jackrabbit went down. But maybe we spoke too soon. The weapon on Jackrabbit is back. Oh, no! 
Though the uh, the belt from the weapon of Jackrabbit is gone. 40 seconds left in the match. Yeah, that the is enough time to do some serious damage, and I think we're going to see it here. He's warming up. Oh! Oh! Wow, he he got the him. belts! That was a one in a million shot. Great shot there, Christian. You know, the weapon may have been down, but as a judge, I got to say, that would be an incredible oh! Oh. Weapon to weapon hit, no less. Big hit there. 15 seconds left. Elimination bracket round five. He's got one four clean through the uh, the the weapon housing there mm -hmm. on Jackrabbit. Wow, good eye, Chris. Looks What's like that? they might have to do it. Uh, there's no time for an unstick. No, this, it's, is, this one's up to the judges. And this is done. Christian Cooper. Time to turn off your weapon and drive to the door. This one will go to the judges. Wow. Yeah, Let's give them a, a minute to, de you know, to, to deliberate here. Let's take a look at this replay. Look. Mm. Yeah, so it's, look, this is where Jackrabbit's getting in all of its little hits. Those, those tiny, you know, wear it down thousand cuts, but it's the big hits that start once Tothic, you know, really decides to go in for the kill. That hit right there, taking out a belt. Sure, the weapon was down, but it's just, it's such a display of dominance. It's got to yeah. make a difference with the judges. All right. We've got our judges. We've got a brand new judge here, Derek Tran. And, uh... Let's see, we've got one vote for Tothic, one vote for Jackrabbit. So it's all down to the... Uh-oh, oh. Andrew Russell shaking his head. <laughs> uh, I voted for Tothic on okay. that one. We've got two votes for Tothic, two votes. three votes for Tothic. Derek, welcome to the, uh, to the judging. You, uh, you are replacing Jack Tweedy, who's going to bed. He's uh, in the UK. Derek, tell us your thoughts on that fight. Well, from what I saw, while Tothic was not winning all the engagements early on, he wasn't really sustaining any functional damage, and he was still able to stay on top of Jackrabbit to farm those aggression points and to maintain control. So while Jackrabbit was doing damage, he was always on the defense. And then once the weapon went down, Tothic went in. Fantastic. And it was over then. Yeah. Great job to uh, Christian Cooper and Tothic, uh, who remain alive and will be advancing to loser's bracket round six. Sorry, elimination bracket round wow. six. Wow. Yeah. We don't like to put, uh, you know, uh, judgments here in 2022. All right, no, that's, that's That great. is the judge's job. We don't yeah. need to do that here. <laughs> and you're, you're not a loser until you give Eight, up. I mean, till the, seven, you go. Till the, there you go, six, Ricky. Five, here we go. Four. Three. All right, two, cage one action. One, elimination fight, bracket round two. The 12 fight. pounders, Smeezus and Demi Gorgon. These are two undercutters. Smeezus. Amazing the size difference, but there's a reason for that now, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. Now, the reason why Smeezus is so much bigger is because it has unconventional locomotion. This is a 45 pound robot from Smee Captain Joe Fabiani facing off against Brandon Bennett Young, one of your team members. Brandon is from Maryland and competes on BattleBots with Mammoth. Yep, and what a builder he is, him and his whole team. But uh, I gotta say, this is so far pretty impressive out of Smeezus. Yeah, Smeezus is looking incredibly oh, uh, However, vocal. look, the, the weapon seems to be down on Smeezus. Yeah, you see it's kind of shaking. Could be an issue with a... Uh, 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 the uh, hub motor. Yeah, there, there's probably a phase down on that motor, but with the size of that robot, it looks like it's going to be able to take hits and drive practically all day. With Demi Gorgon still mobile and uh, attacking, it's really going to come down to control here and damage. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw Smeezus lose one of its uh, drive motors earlier in that fight with the fiery penguin. We are not seeing any of those gremlins here. This is a really mobile uh, shuffle bot here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult for uh, Demigorgon to do the damage it needs to do with that undercutter and the fact it has to go up against another big metal undercutter blade. And then look, it's bullied. The size of Smeezus has allowed Demigorgon to just get caught, caught in the, the, the uh, margins of this arena. Yeah, we can see the, uh, the weapon on Demigorgon is still up. You can see the uh, the front plow of Sneezes take quite a few hits to the face. 
But uh, you know, these these in interesting kind of four hole saws, essentially, these 3D printed hole saws, uh, really are, are, are taking this abuse from Demi Gorgon, and they refuse to quit. Yeah, it's a fantastic amount of durability for these uh, tools of locomotion, you might say. We can't call them wheels, but... It's as if you uh, took wheels and you turned them on the side and then gave them little spikes. Mm-hmm. Nubbins. Yeah, nubbins. That's a good word, Ricky. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we saw a couple... Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Joe Fabiani is such a fan of unconventional designs. He loves the 15-pound weight bonus here. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, this is 12-pound yeah, action. 12-pound. So this must be, what, like a 19-pound robot or so? 18-pound. Okay, good, good. Less than 20 seconds left to go here in this fight. Demi Gorgon fully mobile, still dangerous. This one will hit go to the judges. Three, two, one, All right. That's the end of the match. And Joe, Joe himself. You gotta wonder, squeezes. do you think he's pleased with that performance? I think so. You know, uh, Joe's been practicing with this kind of whole saw design, and uh, I think that if it's successful, we might see this whole saw design in other robots that he's going to build. Oh. All right, we're gonna kick it over to Lindsay. Hey, all right, so I wanna go over some of the interesting developments that have been going on in the chat, namely some very special guests that have been interacting with people in the community, in the chat, and that is Jake Ewart of Hydra from BattleBots, Aaron Hill from Blip and formerly from Tantrum, and we actually just had a special visit from Paul Ventimiglia, who you might know from Bite Force. And uh, there's been a lot of excitement because we might actually see some of these people visiting, maybe just to watch, or maybe with a bot at some point this year. So that is something that I'm keeping my fingers crossed for, and I know a lot of the fans are thinking the same. But in regards to the match that we just saw, we've had a lot of questions about what mechanism Smeezus is using to move. Um, we know that they have that 15 pound bonus. So what is the unconventional movement behind their, their drive system? Uh, Katie, do, do you have uh, the word from Joe? Yeah, I got the word from Joe, actually. And uh, if you can kind of take a closer look at this, Joe can kind of take a quick dive into how does this move? What is the mechanism behind it? So uh, last time I was here with this robot, I used um, a hole saws for locomotion. The idea would be to destroy the floor so much that vertical spinners can't use their wedge anymore. But the hole saws, unfortunately, failed pretty quickly. Um, so this year, uh, or, yeah, this year, I guess, I used uh, wood, wood screws on these 3D printed hub slash gears. And so these spin basically parallel to the floor, but at like a one degree or half a degree angle, such that they, um, they basically make it move. And it does this weird sort of drifty thing where it kind of floats over the floor or it balances uncontrollably. It's really, really difficult to drive, but I think it drove pretty well in there, all things considered. <laughs> I'd say that's probably true. And uh, Lindsay, is there anything else as we have Joe here? I know Curious Minds, a lot of people on social are following along with his journey here as well. I think we're just hanging with that. Is there anything from your end? I'd, I'm just gonna go ahead and break it down. You have had a, an up and down day, a unique day, one might say. How would you describe this last battle? I think it was great. Um, the weapon on this robot is kind of unreliable. The drive worked really, really well in there, so that gives me hope that eventually, if I get the weapon working better, it'll be a good robot one day. Um, I think I, I think the it was very, very smooth compared to last fight. It was very bouncy before, the motor fell off, but this time it really, it, it kind of showed that it could, actually behave like a drivable thing. <laughs> I'd say smooth is a really great word for it. You know, like we said, remember earlier today, we had a fire, a penguin that was on fire associated with Joe. So what a fun day all, overall. Oh, Joe loves it. He loves an unconventional design. He loves a fiery penguin. Let's go to the judges here. Ooh, it looks like it is a split decision. Is this accurate here, Don? Oh, my. You've cast uh, your vote no. for Smeezus. I did <laughs> Demogorgon. Oh, wow. Okay. We're still having software problems. Is this a unanimous judge's decision for Demogorgon? We have one. We have two. Derek, Derek? do we have a thumbs up? Oh, a oh, thumbs down! It was a split judge's decision. Derek casting his vote for Smeezus. But uh, Demi Gorgon will advance. Brandon Bennett Young. 
uh, with Demi Gorgon. Fantastic match. Truly. And, you know, I got to go back just a minute. For someone who says it's a difficult to drive robot, Joe made that look easy, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. He yeah. really did. That robot really floated over the air. I know that he loved those extra pounds there that he got. Truly. Um, I think that he's on to something here with this locomotion. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Fight. All right, uh, elimination bracket round five. Jemso versus Red Hawk. Jemso driven by Aaron Taggart. It's this black and white robot with purple wheels. And uh, Red Hawk, as you can probably guess, has the red blade and uh, the black body here. Jemso has successfully kicked Red Hawk right there behind Brett. Taking it straight to, uh, to Red Hawk's face. And it's certainly very quiet here in this box, Ricky. You know, it really is. Both weapons are down. We saw a lot of good action out of Gemso earlier, but, uh, but that weapon, it just doesn't have a lot of strength unless it has time to spin up on its own without interruption. That was a good pin from Red Hawk on Gemso, getting under his opponent. Ooh. And there's that time it needed. Let's see if, oh, big hit after big hit. Wow, Gemso's weapon's still fully operational. It's going to try and trick you. It's go you're going to think it's down, and it's just going to keep coming back. That's what we've been seeing today from this robot. Red Hawk, though, still doing its best to remain aggressive, trying to exert some control. It's, it's oh. Look at that. It may have. Red Hawk's done the thing. It has done the thing. Let's see, we've got a uh, unstick, you know, always available here, and there it goes. There we go, that's the one unstick for Red Hawk. You know, though, if it does the thing once, it can do the thing again. Mathematically true, Ricky. Here we go. Gemso's weapon fully operational. That robot looks unscathed. True. Just, we want to keep seeing these smacks. We want to, I'd love one, there, that's what I'm talking Wow. About. Huge hit. Elimination bracket round five. 60 seconds left to go in this fight. Wow. Oh, and there it is. No, like I said, it tries to trick you. You think it goes down. It just takes a breather for a moment. Josh Belanger with Red Hawk here. He's managed to uh, keep his drive going for the full two and a half minutes here. You know, if there's something you can say for these elimination fights, these are durable robots. These yeah. are builders that really put the time in to think about how to make it last all day. And it, it just makes for fantastic fights. Huge pops in the air from Gemso on Red Hawk. Wow, yet another big pop in the air. Oh, What's it, this? I'm telling you, it just it takes a break and it comes back. Are these little brownouts? What is going on with Gemso? It, it's just Wild. tired. It's had a long day. <laughs> All right, that's the end of this match. The audience loves this. Got a good round of applause from the audience. This one will go to the judges. Ricky, we saw Gemso run absolutely uh, as as planned all uh, all match long, mm -hmm. all three minutes. We've got one vote for Gemso, I think. Second Two. vote for Gemso. And three, three votes for Gemso. This is a unanimous judge's decision for Aaron Taggart and Gemso, which remains alive in the elimination bracket. Congratulations to Gemso. And, you know, frankly, I can't argue with any of those scores. Yeah. Gemso really uh, showed incredible aggression and control in this fight. Popping Red Hawk in the air dozens of times. Yeah, a lot of, lot of air, a lot of aerial um, action here. And it's, it's just the design of that beater bar that does it. Uh, it, it catches, it flings, not, not at, you'll notice, it's still in the same shape. Black uh, Red Hawk here, still able to look like the robot it started as. Yeah. But going flying like that, it's never a good look for the judges. And, and that's what we saw in the scores. This is, uh, uh, this is our time to say goodbye to the Belongers who uh, went very deep in this competition here today. And uh, Eight, Red Hawk, seven, one of the mainstays here, six, looking forward to seeing them again. Five, four, three, Try two, Hard and James. One, five, this is going to be an energetic match. Fight. Elimination bracket round three. Whoa! 
Oh, this is the second time today that James has faced a super punishing horizontal spinner. Let's see if uh, they can survive this match. Now, the geometry of this match does not favor tryhard, right? I mean, like, this huge, just flat front. Oh, no! Big chunks gone. Big chunks gone, Ricky. Half of that robot uh, armor is gone. Yeah. It's wow. Face off here. I mean, it, it's halfway decapitated. You can see the internals. One good hit is all it would take. James just has to not let that happen. Look, there's practically components hanging out of the robot. It might not matter, though. Hip the mobility out. might not be left. And there's wow. the tap out. Okay. Try hard advances here in the elimination bracket. We're going to be saying goodbye to James. This is a okay. team, a team Northwestern robot. These kids brought four uh, robots here. And uh, we are seeing a decapitation by uh, by tryhard Ricky yeah yeah just a huge amount of energy in these exchanges and and here's here's what happens it hits at that perfect angle <laughs> it gets into those speed holes those those lightning holes that yeah. have been um, that have been milled into there and just rips it off I mean yeah it's great to be light but it, it gives a point of grabbing you know there's a place for that weapon to grab a hold of and it just tears it right off yeah absolutely so Great match, destructive match, and uh, we didn't see uh, an arena breach this time, so that's great. Yeah. <laughs> now, Depth Charge is still alive, I believe, in the bracket. Uh, yeah, yeah, because that was a single, uh, it, it went through its first elimination, if I'm right. Yep, yeah, it's so on that match. we'll see it again. All right, we've got Business Cat here with, uh, what is that, Biggish? Okay, I see Biggish over there. And uh, facing off the kids against Florida Polytechnic. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Business Cat with the huge eyes. I love that. All right, guys, get ready to go. Brendan's deal here. Elimination bracket round three for 12 pound action. Flambe Cone Queso, the flamethrower from seven, Florida six, versus Big Ish. Five, from Brendan's deal. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Off we go. Ricky, are these the longest sports you've ever seen in the 12 pound division? Uh, it, yes, actually they are. And perhaps the floppiest as well. These look like plastic forks. I don't know what's going on today with the competitors, but they oh. love plastic forks, Ricky. Well, they're one down. So maybe someone will go home with a souvenir. It's Not now like a lance. Yeah, it's a Norwal is what it is now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's amazing the way this fork works here. Not a lot of robots would be that hung up, but the size of the wheels on Biggish just really make it a problem. Oh, there it goes flying with the mini. Oh, and those forks are gone. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult for Flambe to really do anything. It's going to have to hope that Biggish breaks itself on its face. Oh no, the back plate on Flambe Cone Queso is gone. It's, we're, at, we're at half a robot fighting down Biggish. Biggish's weapon is still running. Yes, but Very maybe dangerous. slowing down. Yeah. Or, or, you know, it could be a ploy. Sometimes they faint. Brendan Steele's weapon is still up, but it does look like it's spinning a little slower than normal. It does. We're gonna see if that minibot has any functionality left into it. If it can get kind of get into the mix, maybe it could hang up and uh, interfere a little bit, get some kind of control points, but so far it's just hard to see what Flambe is gonna be able to do to Biggish. One of the things that you want to watch for if you're Flambe Cone Queso is that you don't accidentally high set to yourself on your own plastic uh, fork. I don't think that's a problem at all for Biggish. It's got the ground clearance to uh, roll over hundreds of plastic forks, Ricky. Yeah, I... Oh, but there's some... Whoa. Now, is this a calculated exchange or is it slowing down? Oh, that is a fast weapon there. All right, 60 seconds left here. Yeah. Oh, right. wow. Whoa! That's a tap out from Flambe Cone Queso. Brendan Steele, Business Cat, hitting the, the Lexan, happy about his performance. Uh, look, Jonathan Schultz of Huge, hiding in the wings. All right, uh, we're going to check in with Katie, who's here with James.
That's right, James and a few of the teams from Northwestern Robotics. This is actually the third James that's been in the in the mix. The last of the four that were competing here today at NHRL. That's a bummer, man. How 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 did it come to be at that last? I mean, that was a pretty solid destruction. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, at, right off the bat, our regular our drive motors were a little bit off, so it was kind of. Uh, a bit difficult to try to maneuver around, but I think we held our own pretty well considering, and uh, we were able to get a few good hits in on try hard, which uh, last time we were here, that was one of our, our biggest fears was possibly facing try hard, and, and this time, I think we, we did as best as we could. <laughs> I'd say you guys did an excellent job, and for all of those efforts, and the fact that you have four robots, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a send cut save. $50 that goes to you, Robotics, um, and the Robotics Group over there at Northwestern. Um, and I just, big thanks to you guys for coming on out here and really showing up with those four Js. Oh no, yeah, thank you. <laughs> guys. Yeah, it's, you know, it's amazing. Those Northwestern kids have been everywhere. I feel like I see those, those hats. Practically everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> I've got to wear it in solidarity, Ricky. The place is lousy with them, but you know, yeah. it's a nice sight to see. I, getting the students out Eight, here, seven, really, really six, encouraging. Five. All four, right, we're locked in the box three, here. Cage number two, two adrift one, versus Silk. Fight. Robots fight. Both. Oh, an immense hit right off the bat. This is undefeated bracket round six. Trip versus Silk. Silk uh, driven by Christian Cooper from Team WPI. Team Ribot on BattleBots. Oh, and there it goes. Now that it's right side up, that weapon is gonna spin right back up and flying across the arena. Sparks flying from the robot even as it just sits there. It's not supposed to do that, but it is intimidating. Those sparks look strange. What is going on with those sparks? Are they rubbing against their own uh, weapon housing? No, it's that front wedge has been bent in by the power of its opponent. Wow, okay. The drift weapon is dead. The sound that you hear, that high-pitched squeal is still, which remains on its head. All right, let's, uh, let's check in here with Katie. Remember, right before this, Adrift was actually working through their weapon pulley issue that they were having, knowing going into this battle with Silk what they were up against and the challenges that they were about to face. All right, Silk is back on its, uh, on its feet. And they are intent on racking up uh, another good pin here. Incredible. A lot of big exchanges, but it seems Silk just can't keep right side up. Doesn't matter though, if it can right side itself quick enough. Pop after pop. Fantastic oh, work. and then back. what? The weapon of a drift came back from the dead. And but then look at that. Belt cut like it was nothing. What a shot. That is the uh, that is the belt, and it is wedged into the Lexan. A drift weapon is dead with 60 seconds left here in this fight. The frame chassis bent. This, this is gonna make a big impact with the judges if it goes that long. Silk here trying to gyro itself back onto his feet. But with this weapon fully operational, severing that weapon belt, it does look like this could be going to the judges. Quite a bit of control there, drift. Good can't. pin there from a drift. Yeah, forcing that weapon to stop, that, that does make a difference. Oh my, this might be trouble for Silk. It doesn't seem to be responding. A little bit of twitching, and the countdown has started. This could be it. I think they've been saved by the bell. This one will go to the judges. Wow. Wow. What an 11th hour uh, just miracle in the, we don't know if it's gonna be enough, but what a change of pace in the end of that, that uh, fight. Undefeated bracket round six. Let's check in here with the judges as they're entering their scores. Silk versus Adrift. They're deep in thought, Ricky. Yeah, look at, look at their faces. I mean, they look, they, they look 
pains, Ricky. Mm -hmm. they're, there's, and they're either really can, on the Can we Andrew. get some information on that? The Andrew, fight seemed yeah. to end on our side about 10 seconds before it ended. Oh, okay. dear. Yep, yeah, same with us. Andrew, uh, we saw the exact same thing that you did. In the last 10 seconds of the fight, it seemed as if Silk was stuck up against the rail. Is that right? Yeah. I'm it looking was... over at Christian. I'm looking over at Nick. Have, have you entered your scores yet? You're still uh, waiting off, right? No. All right. No. They need a little more information drive. to make their decisions. Weapon. The, um, it appeared to me, anyway, that, that Silk, uh, after it was freed, was unable to move, unable to use its weapon. But we need some confirmation one way or another. Was the weapon still running, Christian? Ran out of batteries. Interesting. Christian says that his weapon ran out of batteries. How about the drive? Now, so judges, remember, a drift lost its weapon for most of that fight. Look at Derek. I think I might be swaying Derek here. Any other questions, we judges? Have a silk up. Looks like we have one vote for silk. It, it is a close decision. I can't fault the judges in either case this the way. The weapon was down for half of the match, Ricky. Yes, but that last bit, if you complete, we don't know that it's batteries. I mean, I, I'm, they're honest folks, but they don't know either till they get in there. They, it could have been disabled at the end, and that, that could sway the judge, judge's damage entirely. It's, it's really up to their eyes. It looks like Don Can I ask my, my judges what else voted they voted for? for? Silk. Silk across I'm the board. Adrift. Oh, oh, Andrew's a drift. Derek, are you yeah. silk or a drift? Silk. Silk. One for silk, one for a drift. Don, you're going to uh, break this tie. Who did you vote for? I did silk, but I gave wow. a drift uh, four points for damage because of, you know, the end. Incredible. Right. Split judges' decision for silk, which advances into winner's bracket round seven. Hmm. A drift is going down very late into the bracket, into the uh, into the elimination. I, I hope they've got some lifeboats on board. Eight, seven, six, five. All right, four, uh, Katie, uh, three, tell us a little bit more two, about this fight that's uh, going into cage five, four. Robots so that's right, Sean right here, driving minimizer. He said the last fight he had was incredible. Uh, he said, but this one against Carmen is going to be really tough. They have to get to Carmen first, as Carmen is a one-shot wonder and knows that it can be extremely damaging. One thing to know on Minimizer... Oh, massive! There you go. One thing to know on Minimizer, those sides are just cosmetic. It's just aluminum foil, and so that damage can be done quickly like we just saw. Wow, wild. Minimizer is one of my favorite new robots here uh, at this competition. It's so weird. It's so unconventional. It landed a big hit on Carmen, and it looks like part of Carmen's drive is locked up, Ricky. Yeah, it's definitely having some mobility problems, but at the same time, it's still able to attack. It also seems that it's having some uh, issues with its weapon there. I see it twitching. It spins a little bit here and there, but that could just be from interacting with its opponent. Yeah, it does look like the weapon on Minimizer is down. And Carmen's weapon is down. Both of these weapons seem to be non-functional. Oh, but here's, here's Minimizer struggling on the floor. All right, with both of these weapons down, this is undefeated bracket round three for 12 pound action. It, it's so nice to see a robot like Minimizer make it to the state of the game in the undefeated bracket. I mean, we know we're going to see it in a you know, somewhat deep run at this point, but Carmen's no joke either. I mean, those are big hits coming out of that robot when it's working. Yeah. I really like the design on Minimizer, just that kind of arcing motion to try and attack the back of its opponent. Oh, and Minimizer may be having some problems. Minimizer's dead in the water. Is this crocodile going to be sinking, Ricky? Look at that. Yeah. See you later, alligator. Minimizer is dying here. Will the referee begin the count out? Carmen sitting there threatening on the edge. I can hear the count out. Knockout. That is a knockout, knockout for Carmen. Carmen is your winner. Minimizer knocked out here in the third round of the undefeated bracket.
Now, very briefly, I uh, saw that Minimizer had the little star up there. Let's just make sure that uh, they're marked correctly in the challenge bracket. Yeah, we got to make sure that, uh, well, we'll be fair to them. We'll make sure that they, they get the, uh, the spot that they're due based on their performance. Carmen uh, won that pretty handily. Mm -hmm. Looks like Minimizer just died there in the water. Yeah, it's hard to say what happens when you have a failure like that early. Even when, even if it's a weapon system, th there could be uh, you know connected systems where it, yeah your weapon goes down immediately and it drags the rest of the robot down over the course of the fight. Yeah, uh, it just depends on how it's constructed, and we don't know without getting in there. So I'm going to be interested to see how they perform when they come back because again this is this, this was their first. Uh, uh, first uh, defeat, correct? Yeah, first so. defeat. Now, Ricky, I feel like as a fan of unconventional designs, you can see something to love inside of Minimizer. I really can. I and it, what I what I love to see with unconventional designs is not only is there a lot to love with what they have here today, but it's new, which yeah. means it has it has a whole runway of potential. Yeah. Where this could come back, you know, next year, next month, whatever it is, and really. Uh, surprise all of us and, and shake up what's going on. And that's, I don't know, that's a lot of the wonder of combat robotics to me. There's just always something new around the corner. Great, uh, a great insight there, uh, Ricky. All right, uh, we're going to go to Katie, who's going to tell us a little bit more about this next match and Firebug. Yeah, as you can see right here, Casey, the guy who's been behind Firebug all day, actually built both the bots that are going into this competition. That is his wife, CJ. She's going to be driving one of them. Meanwhile, his brother will be driving against her, his wife. So it's a little friendly family competition going on, but really, ultimately, Casey wins because he built both of them. Amazing. Wow. Let's Casey Jermiasen and Casey Jermiasen uh, running two robots against one another. Yeah. Ambitious. Yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that they don't have an awkward family dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Like she said, it, this is Eight, gonna be a win no matter seven, what happens, so. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, Eight. robots oh fight. Oh my gosh. You can see the beginning of this, the, the right. front of this robot. This is this actually not Firebug in here at all. This is Redacted. Now, you're gonna love this, Ricky. On the front of Redacted are a bunch of Estes rockets. And they are designed to uh, pin their opponent up against the uh, the rail. In this case, it's ice cream sandwich. Turn on those Estes rockets and burn through the plastic. Really exciting to me. I saw these folks, you know, hanging out earlier and walking me through the design of their robot. And this is one of the things I'm most excited to see if they can pull it off. So if let's they hope can they pull can. it off. Is a big if. Yeah. They were talking. Uh, they were telling me as I was on my way to the bathroom that uh, they were concerned about the ignition system on Redacted. If they can't get that igniter going, they're not going to be able to fire up those rockets. Still, though, it looks to be you know, a capable control bot. If, if, well, right now it looks to be driving into the wall backwards, so I'm not really sure what's going on. It might be trying to re, uh, reorient itself. Yeah, it looks like uh, Redacted is on its head. At the same time, uh, its opponent not really showing a, the, Ooh, here it's we capitalizing go. on the situation. Let's go. Oh, Redacted, I am, I am on the edge of my seat here. I can't wait to see these rockets, Redacted. Looks like both of these robots are on their head. Yeah, there really seems to be some interesting uh, control dynamics going on. Oh, and you can see there's <laughs> the igniters from some of Redactive have been torn off and are now dangling on the top of its opponent. So Not a may, great sign. No, it may be less fire than we'd all like to see here today. Now, when you're flipped over on your head, uh, you have to change the orientation of your brain because uh, up is down and down is up. But, and uh, that may be one of the reasons why we're seeing um, kind of uneven driving here from these two control boxes. Yeah, but the bigger problem at the moment is we seem to have a drive side down in the box here. At the very, oh, there we are. It's, it's righted. And ice perhaps cream, ice cream sandwich is back on its, uh, its feet. That's where they want to be. And driving quite a bit better. I'm interested to know what the difficulty was there. Now, we don't have a uh, countdown clock here. What is it, 60 seconds left or so? Control, do you have a time check? Tw 
20 seconds. I hear 20 seconds ringside. So in these last 10 seconds, it really comes down to who can impress, leave that lasting impression. And there's a good bit of control from Ice Cream Sandwich in these last few moments. This is the end of the match. We are going to go to the judges. 12 pound sportsman action here. Ice Cream Sandwich versus Redacted. Round of applause for Barcode Labs and uh, their Jermiasins. I love it. Okay. Yeah, bravo to them. I mean, it does take a lot, uh, a lot of guts to bring something like that to the arena. So uh, we hope that it's it's going to be functional, you know, in the dramatic, flaming way that we'd love to see. But at the same time, just just bringing it in and being able to have it go the distance, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, this is a family that drove here today from Minnesota. And, uh, yeah, they, they got in the car starting on Wednesday, so they get here by Friday night. My goodness. Yeah. And, then, and then driving all today in another sense. Yeah, it's, exactly. And let me tell you, the days here are not short. I no. Mean, we sit behind the uh, desk or we sit by the arena side, and it seems long. Can you imagine? Well, I don't have to imagine. It, and you've been there, too. Yeah. You, you've been uh, yeah. pit side. Yeah. It's, it's an exhausting day. So to do that after a travel like that and then travel back, it just shows the dedication and... Uh, you know, the, the passion behind some of these teams. The Casey's have been bit by the bug. They are obsessed with combat robotics. It's, you know, it's a terminal case. Yeah. I, I, I don't well, want to be the bearer of bad news, but. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, one of my favorite things about this couple is mm -hmm. that they continue to bring back new designs. They've competed here three times. They've probably brought six robots to the competition in the, over the course of those three, yeah. three outings. Yeah, and, and that's, for a lot of people, that is the fun. It, it's yeah. one thing to try and, and, and hunt for that, that victory in the finals, right? But it's another thing to try, you know, design after design, experiment after experiment, and, and just see what happens. It's its own kind of magic. All right. We're gonna kick it over here to Katie, who is cage side with the Jermiasins. Yes, let's see here. Yeah, the whole family, come on in, guys. My question for you, are you in trouble if you say you were cheering for one person or another? Oh, I was definitely cheering for my wife. Okay, so no awkward family dinner or anything? No. Matter of fact, okay, so from that, that point of view, you got two robots. Um, how satisfied were you with the performance? I, would, I want the rockets to light. That's, that's, I didn't need that to happen. We're going to get it to go today. OK, well, in order to do that, too, maybe in the future, perhaps a little send, cut, send, send, cut, save, gift certificate, $50 to get those things to light. I'll let this case, you take a hold of that one. Congratulations. I mean, having the chance to be able to be here representing a family and also representing a couple different bots, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's keep on, keep on rolling here, guys. All right. I know the judges are still deliberating here between the two Jermiasins. Chris is making an awkward entrance. I love it, Chris. You've got a uh, you got a mask on your hand, Chris. Yeah, I specialize in awkward entrances, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the judges here uh, have a uh, unenviable position of um, judging uh, whether uh, which robot's going to be with zero damage and not a lot of control. All right, uh, let's check in with Lindsay, who has the judges' decision. All right, so big surprise, Casey Jeremiahson wins. Wow, okay. Yeah. Good. More specifically, ice cream sandwich. Wow, oh. okay. Ice cream sandwich. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's a close match, and, yeah. and who doesn't love an ice cream sandwich? But I, I don't know. I, I believe in the Casey's. I think we are Eight, going to see those rockets seven, later today. Six, Fingers crossed. Oh, and five. here we go. Four, Queuing up three, in box three. Two, Elimination bracket one, round seven. Five, in a three pound five, division. Five. Narcissist and Star Child. Oh Man. boy. Big hit right off the bat there. Narcissist run by Dominic Yenpaskis. Star Child run by Brandon Zelinski. Narcissist has had an absolutely perfect run here today. Just bringing the pain to each one of his opponents. He would love to chop the wheels of Starchild in half. Oh, no! Big hits, but just bouncing all over the place. Good there. hit there on the side of Starchild. You can see those wheels starting to cave in. Mm-hmm. 40 seconds into this match. You can look for it. On the top of Narcissus, there is a perfect point for Starchild to hit. It's going to try its darndest to do it, but it is like trying to shoot up 
flee off a dog's back at 100 yards. Easy. <laughs> Star Child's weapon belt is gone. That spinner is not spinning. Oh no, the there's that there. belt. Star Child down a weapon and losing cleats on those wheels quickly. Anything can happen, but it is not looking good for Brandon Zielinski right now. Brandon Zielinski is definitely behind the eight ball here in this match. Still, the thwacking will continue as long as the drive works. And that still makes a difference. I mean, that is still an active weapon you're attacking with, and it still makes a difference for control and aggression. That's true. Good shower of sparks. I'm sure that Brandon Zielinski would love to try and break that undercutter of, the, of Narcissus. Whoa, big hit. And Narcissist keeps hitting the, the, the rails here, showing off the durability of that undercutter. 60 seconds left to go. Would you like to see Narcissist off the rails? <laughs> Frankly, the way it bounces around, I think it's already there. I'm worried that Narcissist is gonna let this go to his head. Oh, dear. That was a pun, folks. 45 seconds left here in this incredibly punishing fight. Narcissist remains fully operational. Kicking Starchild around. Dominic and Cascus can stay alive here for another oh, 30 there seconds. There it goes, doing the segue momentarily, but if you love to see it. Oh, the toughness on Narcissist is incredible. Really impressive durability, I mean, it truly is. Elimination bracket round seven. One of these builders will be going home here in less than 10 seconds. Three, two, one. That's the end of the match. Turn off your weapon, Dominic. Drive to the door. This one will go to the judges. Let's take a look at this replay. Exciting match. Really, and wow. you can see the size of those hits, which is amazing considering the flexibility of Star Child. If, it's, if you're sending something like that flying with that design, it means that the energy and that impact is just, it's just immense. And here we go again, another hit right to the side. Sends Narcissist flying in that exchange. And, and that's one of the things we've seen from Narcissist, right? Is that, oh, all right. Well, we're gonna have the judges come up with their, uh, their scoring here. We're almost there. I see two votes for Narcissist, is that correct? Give me a thumbs up if you voted for Narcissist. One thumb. Mm -hmm. Two, two thumbs. thumbs. Derek, but is it Narcissist? Oh, it that's is three thumbs. A unanimous judge's decision for Narcissist and Dominic Yankaskis, who stay alive in this bracket. Further inflating that ego. <laughs> Brandon Zelinsky and Starchild will be going home after uh, elimination bracket round seven. You know, though, quite a performance today from that team. Amazing, absolutely amazing. All right, I, I can see here in cage two where we've got the box locked. This mm -hmm. is elimination bracket round seven. Weta X versus Silent Spring. It looks like the, the box, though, is opening up. Yep, oh, that's what some percussive maintenance is what we like to call that. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Remy de Guzman here helping out Santana Starks on Weta X. That's this white robot here in front of us. Mm -hmm. Santana, is he turning on the bot or turning off the bot? You can see that little head shake from Santana. Never a good sign. Oh, the bot's coming out. That's never a good sign. Talking to the ref. It's been a while since Weta X has been in the box. Bad signs just continue. There's a discussion going on. We're going to see what happens, but uh, oh, looks like they're running. Uh, they're running. See, running. They're running. That's when, a good sign. When it, when a team is running, it generally means that they're going to they're going to try to get things sorted out. When you yeah. see a team put their head down and slowly walk away from the <laughs> box, that means that they're probably going to be putting up a forfeit. Yeah, yeah exactly. True. All right, we saw the entire pain train team go sprinting off into the pits. And uh, Silent Spring here, Jameson Go, turning off his robot, making it safe, putting it back inside of that tool bag. It may be a little while till we see that fight, but they've got time yet, so you know, all right. fingers crossed for the best. Ricky, this is a moment I've been waiting for all night. Is it now? All of the boxes are empty. 
And now hmm. I can ask you about your match against Witch Doctor. Oh dear, all right. Well, what would you like to know, Luke? Oh, um, all saved right. by the bell. Production is telling me that I actually, I actually need to go to Lindsay. Lindsay, let's check in with you first. All right, so something that I want to call out that is very exciting to me is that we have a whole bunch of first-time viewers oh. who are joining us for this event. And I mean, what better time than for the very first event of 2022? It's just really exciting to see people who don't necessarily have a background in, in combat robotics find us and people who have been builders in other areas find us and join us. So it's it's a lot of fun to, to see their perspective and take on things. If you are watching at home or even if you're watching in the stands and you want to chat about what's going on, feel free to join us in the chat. There's an active discussion going on with every single fight and every every single match, so come join us. It's, it's a lot of fun. Lindsay, really great point about catching the first match of 2022. You can go ahead, if you're a first time viewer, and set your calendar for the next six events. Uh, go to nhrl.io to see that calendar, and uh, you can see every single one of these qualifiers. So by the time that we hit the December finals with the best of the best, uh, you will have seen each one of these robots qualify and fight multiple times. And, and that is one of the cool things, is seeing the journey over yeah. the course of these different events. And not that you need to watch every one, we encourage you to, but you're going to see the same faces, you're going to see the evolution of the robot, and in the end, you're going to see the end of an epic journey every yeah. single time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to see a complete season really is something else here at Norwalk Havoc. You know, uh, one of the really cool things about the December finals is you have these really interesting robots that will show up. They'll just run through the entire bracket. And then you think to yourself, wow, I wonder what would happen if they had, they matched with this other Texas robot that I saw from three months ago. Mm -hmm. In December, you get to see those matches play out. Yeah. Everyone flies in from all over the country. And uh, you see these dream matchups of super, super heavy hitters. It, it's an impressive, Eight, impressive thing when it happens. Seven, Here we are six, in uh, cage three, five, it looks like. Four, All right, elimination three, bracket, round six action. Two, Tony D'Ambrosio and Blackbird Robots versus fight. Christian Cooper and Austin. This is going to be a big hit fight. Blackbird all day in the uh, elimination. Every time it ends up in the elimination bracket, it never stops with those big hits. Opening up here with a nice pin. Topic doing what it does best in biding its time, waiting for the shot, and uh, and gaining control points in the interim. Tony D'Ambrosio competes on BattleBots with P1. Christian Cooper competes on BattleBots with Ribot. I, uh, I got a chance to chat with Tony about an hour ago, and he said that uh, his experimental new frame for Blackbird got twerked so badly in one of his earlier matches that he had to take last year's Blackbird out of the bag. He is running an older design, and he is just ripping through the elimination bracket. We got to see this. six rounds. Look at that. Oh, oh, and it's gonna happen. He's going for it. Can he make it up and over that egg beater? He's gonna Whoa! try! Big hit on the top of Blackbird. There's another little mini pin from Blackbird on Topic. I gotta say, both robots doing what they're trying to do, effective in their strategy. It's just gonna be a question of which robot gets that lucky shot or endures the other's abuse longer. Now, these two last met in May, where Topic earned a knockout against Blackbird. See if they can do it here again with 90 seconds left of this match. Mm -hmm. That's a good pin from Tothic on Blackbird. Yeah, that's that's uh, where he wants him. The question is, can he use that weapon? The fact he didn't use that weapon there uh, makes me a little concerned for Tothic, but you never know. The weapon on Blackbird is back up, and that is yet another good pin. The control being exerted by Tothic is just is pretty stunning, match after match. And that's both the design and, and the driver. Forty-five seconds left in this fight. Topic once again taking Tony D'Ambrosio for a ride. Pushing oh, Blackbird. Oh, here we this go. This is the moment he's been waiting for. Can Blackbird parlay this into a big hit? No. Topic immediately back on the offensive. Oh, and pops it. Works. Oh no. 
Costa getting a free ride on top of Blackbird. And some visible damage done in the process. 15 seconds left here in this fight. The weapon on Blackbird is fully, fully operational. Oh, and here's that last hit he needs. Will he go for it? He does! Wow! The last hit before the bell. That's got to make an impression. Incredible. We saw two fully operational robots at the end of that match. Really speaks to the durability of these two bots. Uh, these builders are not joking around with these robots. Look at this. Just, just the control throughout the entire match by Tothic. Uh, honestly, Blackbird was a plaything here. Uh, for most of the match, it truly was. And then just, just to show off, pinned in the corner, that last hit, bam. Oh, excuse me, that wasn't the last hit, but it was one of the major hits of this event, or of, of this fight. And uh, each one of those control and hit combinations just, it, it uh, right. makes an impression. Let's go over to the judges. It looks like we have two votes for Tothic, one vote for Blackbird, is that correct? Was this a split judge's decision? I voted for Blackbird. All right, okay, well. One vote for Blackbird, Derek. I voted and for Tothic. Tothic. Mm -hmm. And Don. Tothic. There you are. Hey, wow. This was a split judge's decision in favor of Tothic. Interesting. Which advances. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the, the time that we say goodbye to Tony D'Ambrosio, who lasted into the elimination bracket round six with Blackbird. Fantastic work today, Tony. And uh, just cut a little bit short. Yeah, and, and that's a lot of the luck of the draw here. Uh, that was not the comp, that was not the matchup that he wanted at this stage in the game. You can, you can deal with one of those and end up in the elimination bracket and work your way back, but when you hit that in the elimination bracket, it's, it's just hard to come back from. All right, Tony D'Ambrosio coming over seven, to uh, hang out with six, Team Shreddit. Crowded are on their box here three, with Weta X and their two, team member Santana one, Starks facing five, off against Jameson Go five. and Silent Spring. Elimination bracket round seven. This is a big match here. Oh, and right out of the gate, Santana lost Whoa. his weapon. Huge hit. Oh, Huge I heard weapon. something reset. I heard the little song. Oh, That's no. not a good song. Oh, ah, here we go. Stick there for Silent Spring and Weta X moving ish. Oh, and that weapon on Silent Spring is fully operational. We are popping Silent X in the air. Jameson Go would love to escape the elimination bracket, but he has to go through Santana Starks first. Santana lost that uh, that egg beater drum nearly immediately in this match. That was a major hit in the beginning, and uh, that robot is not going to be back up to fully functional. But you never know; it might not need it. This inverted moment—that's when Weta X is really going to have to try and uh, make an impression and get some control points. Difficult to do. It clearly has a damage drive side and uh, damage wheel there, in addition to not having a weapon. But great driving can do a lot for you. Coming up on 90 seconds left in this match. You can see that drive <laughs> gyro. Now, interestingly, I saw Silent X uh, on the bottom of the Silent Spring bot. I wonder if he's running a Silent X bottom plate here for this match. This is truly a zombie version of Silent Spring. Oh, oh, we see no! some smoke. Oh, a little boy. bit of smoke from and what some action? fire. Oh, and that's fire. And then fire. it's back again. Let's see. Uh, nope, that's it. That is that battery. Is it. One minor death throw, and Weta X resigns itself to the grave. Your winner, Jameson Go and Silent Spring. All right, this negative air pressure system is coming in to suck out all of this uh, smoke. We're wafting and we're wafting. Oh, it looks like we're going to throw that in the can of uh, sand right there. We're going to go uh, bring out, uh, bringing it out of the building where it's safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What an X. All right, let's go and check in with Katie. Meanwhile, as the fire is uh, 
going fast. And, woo wee, that has a, a smell to it. Uh, Frederick over here with Marathon and Waddles over there, they both full started, in fact, got docked for it. And by docked, he means they both came full force. Waddles actually had a had an incident there with uh, Marathon, and unfortunately, he's down a little bit. So it was a false start hearing the count over there, and they misread it over here. Dang. Interesting. So they heard the count from a different box and they decided to go for it. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see if that affects this next match that we're going to see. Eight, seven. And here we go. Six, we don't have to wait long five, to find out. Four, three, two, one. Five, Slow start for Marathon. This gold and red Ooh. robot here, driven by Fred Moore, the driver of Valkyrie. Oh, and Waddles, Waddles immediately having some problems. Yeah. Waddles looks dead. Undefeated bracket round four. Waddles taps out. Fred and Marathon will advance to wow. undefeated bracket round five. Sometimes you don't bring a penguin to a gunfight. That's. I always that. bring a penguin to a gunfight. <laughs> All right, let's check in here with Katie. You're the best kind of people. Yeah, no, we got some excited, uh, we got an excited Frederick over here. Look at that deep breath, those big eyes. How would you describe this last 30 seconds? Uh, it was the most exciting 30 seconds of my life. Simply put, guys, in fact, <laughs> let's take that next level. Of course, there was a little bit of a thought that perhaps you weren't gonna be able to compete at that level because of what happened. I, I think we had a lot of faith. Well, I didn't have faith in the weapon, but I had faith in whatever was left in the drive, and I had faith in my wonderful coach, Brandon Zelensky, and my other coach, Anna Zolnikov. I knew that they were going to scream at me, and through the power of their own anger and their insights and their strategy, we were going to win through the day. <laughs> and thus, you have already done that, but you do have a little bit of a repair to do. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> we'll let you go do it, guys. All right, Fred Moore. Yeah, just powered on apparently positive and negative energy simultaneously. Some weird cocktail of, of uh, spiritualism coming together to get him through that fight. All right, I've always been curious about something with oh, Fred have? Moore. Oh, tell me. Maybe you can tell me. Maybe this is a professional BattleBots thing. Oh, it could be. Okay, he's always wearing those glasses. One is red, one is blue, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Is that designed to help you inside of the box? I mean, how many dimensions do you want to see in a fight? Eight. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. yeah, so add three more. No, it's there's an interesting story. You'll have to go to him to it, but uh, all oh. I can say is it's, it's a signature look for him now. Okay. That and the cowboy hat, and uh, it's hard to leave that behind. And why would you? It looks great. All right. Let's uh, go to a quick commercial break here. For laser cut parts in metal, wood, plastic, or composites, check out Send Cut Send. No minimum quantities, free design feedback, and instant quotes, all made here in the USA with free shipping. Scan the QR code on your screen to get started. Thank you so much, Send Cut Send, for sponsoring Norwalk Havoc. All right, now we've got uh, okay, four open boxes. Finally, I can ask you, Ricky. Oh, we're back again. I'm okay. on the hot seat. Now, you are the captain of Mammoth. Wait, me? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, you are. And uh, you fought uh, this past Thursday in the round of 32. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about that fight with, with Witch Doctor. Well, uh, talk about mixed emotions when you get, you know, the news that that's something you're going to go in for, right? Uh, we knew that there was a chance. Uh, there were a couple of robots that were 
it was a tight turnaround this year. There were a couple robots that we weren't sure were going to make it into their round of 32 seating. So uh, we knew ahead of time we need to be ready to go. We were right on the cusp of making it into that uh, play-in bracket. Uh, so we did our best to make sure we could, like, rebuilt Mammoth, had it ready to go, moment's notice. Uh, we started to hear about problems with, uh, with with two teams. I can't recall the other one, but, but Glitch was the one that ended up having the issues. Uh, we did what we could to offer help. Uh, lots of teams did. Uh, they had more hands than they knew what to do with. It's just, you know, sometimes those co things come up and you can't you can't do it in time. Uh, we would have loved to see Glitch get get into the finals. I'm excited to see them back next year. But at the same time, to have that second that second shot, uh, we were incredibly thankful. And yeah. I. I'm so happy with the feedback that we got. I was I was terrified when I got home that it was going to be like, why is Mammoth here? We want glitch. Yeah. Uh, and we got so much support, and uh, yeah, we got we got trounced pretty bad. The, the Mammoth had a hard season. We were running on a lot of spares. We were running on damaged parts. And frankly, Witch Doctor is a scary robot. Yeah. yeah. They're they're scary to begin with. Yeah. It was going to be a long shot on the best of days. Yeah. Uh, I think all things considered. Um, we put forth our, our best effort given the circumstance and, and something you didn't see on the show actually uh, Andrea came up to us uh, after the fight she says on, on top of the robot there are two uh, little wheelie bars essentially that allow it to drive inverted and those two wheelie bars apparently we had smacked one of them over wow just just enough to where it was hitting that belt yeah. just hitting that belt that drives the weapon. Yeah. So we were, and we went into this, remember, we went into this fight damaged with our weapon at about half power. If we had smacked them full power, it, honestly, it still would have been an uphill battle. But if we could have taken down the weapon on Witch Doctor, the, the pride we could have had, just, just knowing that the driving we did, the build we did, was capable of that, Eight, even if yeah. it didn't happen. Seven. Exciting. Six, but we got to get back five, to this. Four, We've got Try three, Hard and Warlock. Two, Elimination One. bracket Five. round four, Robots the 30 Five. pound division. Dominic and Cascus and Tryhard versus Warlock. This is a team at University of Maryland uh, Robots. Oh, Warlock, Warlock is now up on the stuck wall. Up on the rail. It got itself stuck there, Ricky. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. This might not be it. You don't see a lot of um, charity at this stage in the event, especially in the elimination bracket. Now, so uh, uh, earlier we paused the match so that we could go in with our little human hands to unstick a robot. But will this is what is this what's going to happen here? Oh, all right. All right, uh, Katie, I see your cage side. What what, what can you see? <laughs> Well, in talking with Warlock before this, they said they were nervous to get into this uh, cage with Tryhard. He said, uh, in fact, in December, Tryhard and or a similar robot. Oh, there is the pause. Okay, we are going to pause this match. <laughs> We've gotten Warlock down off of that rail. Looks uh. like Bubbles is uh, taking a nap, unable to help. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this box again in this match. Oh, interesting. There's some uh, drive issues already. Oh, interesting. Here's there may be a little high centering going on there, at least on one side of that robot. Yeah, we see that one wedgelet that's kind of uh, lifted up there on the uh, on the box left side. Yeah, perhaps the back side contacting the ground. But the gyro dance makes everything okay. Oh, wow! That's it. Huge chunks hits. flying. Whose chunks are they? We're gonna. We're gonna have to see. That's oh. the top. That's the top of Warlock laying in the middle of the arena. Yeah, However, that's, that, uh, that's that weapon housing, that, that motor housing on the top of Warlock. However, look at the drive. It is spry again. We can't count them out quite yet. The weapon on Warlock is down. Pieces, bits going flying everywhere. This is incredibly destructive. And frankly, we love to see it. Whoa, another big exchange here. Elimination bracket round four. One of these bots will be going home in less than 60 seconds. I don't know if they're gonna last until the judges, Ricky. No, pieces rapidly losing weight. It, it, this is... Oh, no! The wow! Norwalk died. There it goes! Oh, my God! Oh, but it's it's still moving! It's gone! Wow! Tap out. Wow! Uh, they said, come back and I'll bite your kneecaps. Uh, 
War and they got obliterated for it. Warlock is going to need a necromancer to bring himself back. Oh, my. Incredible. <laughs> Look at the energy in that exchange. You know, there are moments when you can tell every bolt on the robot has fatigued and is on the edge of breaking, and that first hit did it. Everything after that point was just gravy on top. It's easy pickings. Oh, and now we see smoke in the box. Oh, yeah. Oh, so that, we get back to that live feed. That lipo going up like nobody's oh. business. Oh, Let's yeah. get back over to this cage one. This is a true lipo fire here. That is a battery that's been forcibly removed from Warlock, and it is right about to catch fire here. I mean, its insides are being forcibly removed to the outside right now, so. Wherever you see smoke. Oh, there it is. There's the fire. You can see right inside of that battery. That is toxic, Ricky. Uh, listen, at a certain point, it just becomes a nice, subtle perfume when you build these robots long enough. Now, uh, we've got this negative air pressure system in here. It's going to suck out all of this lipo smoke and blow oh, it outside. Oh, look at it, look at it swell. Yeah, see, now I, I saw that, that reflective sticker and I thought that that was maybe fire. It's not, but you're right. This is a, uh, this is a battery that is swelling. And mm -hmm. growing and oh, growing my. and growing. Oh my, that's brave. <laughs> right away. Yeah, that is a battery without much time left until detonation. But wow. okay. it is safely in the box it's destined to be, and it is about to be safely outside. There we see the resident uh, Norwalk Havoc Gonk Droid that is uh, the battery disposal unit. Folks, it's a good moment. Just, just a reminder, if you're doing these things at home, be careful. This is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, doesn't happen if you take care, but uh, you should be prepared for just in case. Yeah, if you ever have a puffy LiPo battery, you know, uh... Time to throw that battery out. It's time to properly dispose of it at yeah. your local disposal uh, site. Throw it right into your uh, nearest endangered wetlands. Right, Ricky. right. If, if, <laughs> eight, if there's like a blue eight, heron and you can shoot seven, it right in the mouth, six, that's. Five, four. Three, All right, Demogorgon two, and Kaleidoscope. One, five, Demogorgon, robots, another Maryland robot, as we said earlier. And Kaleidoscope with those just. Frankly, intimidatingly long forks. Yeah, frankly, intimidating long plastic forks on Kaleidoscope. Frankly, intimidating. Good name for a robot, actually. Oh, good. I'm going to have to write that one down. Yeah. Brandon Bennett Young, Mammoth team member Brandon Bennett Young. Looks like he successfully uh, peeled off that back right wheel on Kaleidoscope. Demi Gorgon finds himself inverted, though. Yeah, He's in that inverted state, really having a hard time controlling it. Seems like both wheels are working. It's just can't get the traction. Kaleidoscope is, is the prettiest 12-pounder here today in the competition. I love this white and purple color scheme. Really some strong uh, uh, both end game um, and bite force vibes off this robot. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, deep plywood gouges left behind by uh, depth charge is certainly not making this any easier for a three-wheeled kaleidoscope. No, no, but we do need to remember that is part of the challenge it here is. at Norwalk. Now the weapon on Demi Gorgon is down. That sound like a jet engine is from kaleidoscope. The builder claims that the kaleidoscope has a 310 mile an hour tip speed. Impressive. You know, the downside to that is a lack of bite sometimes, but we've seen some big hits out of Kaleidoscope. I don't think they have that problem. Let's see if they can make another big hit here on Demi Gorgon. Demi Gorgon, we're really going to want to see that weapon spin up, and I don't think it's going to happen. Otherwise, it's just going to be nuzzling into, you know, a threshing machine. Yeah, moments before a uh, tragedy here. Look at this. Yep. Ooh, a nice little shower of sparks. Can Kaleidoscope do it? They've, they've trapped Demi Gorgon here in the side. Oh, interesting. Not a lot of movement. I'm thinking a count out will be in order. And then no. Back from the dead. Kaleidoscope's drive is definitely impaired. Just kind of sadly twisting here. Demi Gorgon's drive is not much better. We have two very injured robots here, so. It's going to be somewhere between luck and skill. Oh, 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 oh. 
Ricky, it almost happened. This wow. Is so close. They, they tease us so, don't they, Luke? I want to see a huge hit in the last 15 seconds. Just one. Oh, Just one so hit, Kaleidoscope. Oh, no. That little exchange at the end, though, look. Not a movement from Kaleidoscope. Wow, all right. And this one will go to the judges. All right, let's We're check gonna in have with Katie. Katie. Katie, I, I hear that you're cage side, is that right? <laughs> yeah, we're cage side. I'm with Nam and Warlock, or what was left of Warlock. If we get a quick look here, if you weren't with us over the last uh, 10 minutes or so, this used to be one robot. It used to be Warlock, but that's okay. The team here is laughing. They're saying they got a lot of good material to go back to uh, Maryland with. So congratulations for making it this far. You guys have a lot of work cut out for you moving into the future. Yep, thank you. Yeah, we put a lot of time and work into this robot. Now all we gotta do is just start from scratch, rebuild, and just improve. Yeah, just improve. And actually, I was hearing maybe July that this thing will be put back together. That's how long it takes. Yeah, we pretty much gotta start from scratch and just work on all the issues we had, fix whatever weak spots we had, and just become stronger. Quickly, we knew that the first ticket you got you guys pretty good. How did it? How did it finalize for you guys? Well, we knew what was wrong, and now, as you saw, we were able to make it pretty far and pretty much just repeat the process from there. Okay. Well, Nam, I got to send you home with something. It's a send, cut, send, send, cut, save gift card to help you reboot and uh, get back on track here at least by July for you and the rest of your team. Yep. Thank you so much. Guys, they had some work cut out for them. Wow, I love that. It's like, uh, you know, if you've ever wanted to see the inside of a robot, I mean, that's like an exploded view. Yeah, truly. So many different parts. All they need is a display shelf, and they have the entire, the entire guts. So we got to go to this last match here that we just came from. We've got, uh, we've, we've got here a judge's decision. However, the judges want to know from Brandon Bennett Young whether the weapon on Demi Gorgon was dead or if for some reason he turned it off for some inexplicable reason. Brandon, can you hear me? Brandon is standing there with Katie. Look. Real quick. All right. Uh, judges are asking, was the battery in fact dead or did you turn it off? So the robot essentially has two systems. has a weapon system and a drive system. So I think the problem was the weapon had a bit of stalling. I think uh, the previous match I had, it bent the whole system pretty, pretty viciously. So it's trying to basically draw lots of current and sort of browning out the receiver. So it kept going in and out. Uh, I think the weapon was like twitching, but it wasn't really getting to speed. How would you rate that? Uh, violence. <laughs> it was a great match. I liked Kale Kaleidoscope did a good job of getting the, uh, getting the impacts on it for sure. Um, both robots are definitely damaged, that's for sure. Yeah, I can see that that would probably be the case. Guys? Okay. Yeah, Brandon let's... has confirmed that the weapon was dead at the end of that match. Mm -hmm. At least severely about... damaged. Yeah, some, uh, some, some po possibly some electronic, you know, yeah. kind of glitches there. Yep, yep. Let's see if that uh, changes the mind of some of these judges. Um, all right, Don, Derek, and Andrew, let's ask you here verbally. Don, your, uh, your call here, Kaleidoscope or Demi Gorgon? I'm going Demigorgon. Okay, we've got one vote for Brandon Bennett Young and Demigorgon. Derek, your thoughts? Demigorgon. Two for Demigorgon. That's enough to advance. Andrew, is this going to be We're a unanimous three. judge's three. decision? Three wow! A unanimous judge's decision for Brandon Bennett Young and Demigorgon. Yeah, it was... I. I, well, I can't say what the judges had in mind, but the guts for me is what did it. They Eight, really just kept trying seven, yeah, yeah, the entire time. Amazing. Five, so you can't say that for everyone. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, here we are, Clyde, and uh, the beer one. Clyde, here's our, uh, our flame-throwing wedge bot here in green. Sepiel One Orange Wheels, run by Lucas Buermeyer on Ribot. Mm. One of the big things that we're waiting for with Clyde is flames from that big old flamethrower. Well, I see a little bit of accelerant. Oh, you he wants to make it work. You can see the fuel squirting out, but it all it takes is a spark.
Looks like the igniter on Clyde might be down. Mm -hmm. This is just a big old wedge now. Tremendous amount of gyro uh, off its opponent, though. Oh. oh, there you are. Big hits there. Elimination bracket round seven. Another do or die moment here in this competition. The loser here will be going home. Clyde, really a uh, worst case scenario for a big horizontal like that, but good work being done nonetheless. Yeah, a horizontal oh. hates a big wedge like that. They do tend to break themselves on big wedges. And the Clyde is able to show control here. Wow, look at that. That's a good pin on uh, from Clyde on Sepiel. He's managed to get Lucas into the corner there. Lucas escapes. His weapon is fully operational. But it looks like he's not doing much functional damage on Clyde. No, it's remarkable. I mean, that's what that wedge is for, right? It's a remarkable amount of durability, a remarkable amount of spark, but not a lot of hard damage. At the same time, if we don't see that flamethrower going, there's no active weapon to speak of. That's true. And that's going to make a, a big good difference. point. That could make a make the difference with the judges here. Yeah, with no flamethrower, there, there can be little to no aggression points awarded. So it's going to be an uphill battle if it doesn't do some real, you know, repercussive damage from tanking those hits and uh, you know the laws of physics. Yeah, if you're a judge, you only have to ask yourself, who's dictating the pace of this match? Who is choosing where they uh, want to be and who's being put where, they, uh, where their opponent wants oh, to put them? Oh, that's hit there. Big hits. I saw a big piece of wood come out. Yep. Starting to see a little drive difficulty now on Clyde, though. Both sides working, but clearly preferentially to one side. The gymnastics and the gyro from that weapon. All right, I am looking at the the clock, and that is time. This match has gone the full three minutes. I was so lost and just entranced in this match, I wasn't even looking at the time. Utterly engrossed. Yeah. All right, this one will go to the judges. Now, the judges here are going to deliberate for a little bit. Good point about no active weapon, Ricky. Yeah, it's, it's something you got to think about. It, Truly, it seemed like Clyde had a pretty dominant performance, but without that active weapon, it's it's got a huge handicap, an albatross yeah. along around its neck, right? It's got to make up for that. I mean, it would be a little bit more of a difficult decision for the judges if, uh, you know, Clyde was able to, uh, you know, constantly control the front of that using that plow, but we saw Sepiel had a, had a couple of great hits yeah, look uh, at from that the one. rear. Look at that. All right, we're going to go to the judges here. Looks like it's one vote for Sepiel, two votes for Sepiel. Is this uh, three votes? Three thumbs up for Sepiel. Oh, here we Has are. Has Lucas Buermeyer done it? My score is oh. it, and there we go. All right. Oh. Is it a unanimous judge's decision for Sepiel? Yeah. All right. Three thumbs are. up, Don. Sepiel, is that right? Okay, good. Three thumbs up for Sepiel. Lucas Biermeyer advances here into elimination bracket round eight. Incredible. Really? Now, he is on a crash course for uh, Jameson Go and Silent Spring. Now, isn't that going to be a fight? If, that, yeah. if we get there, there's going to be hits that just shake everyone's bones eight, in this building. Yeah, seven, absolutely. Six, five. <laughs> Four, oh my goodness, three, it's Ripperoni and Depth two, Charge. Oh, wow! Five, Everybody five, prepare five. yourself. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, is that a piece of the bar? Depth Charge was, uh, was the robot that oh, no, uh, breached just... the inner Lexan earlier tonight. Oh, oh giant oh. impacts. These are two incredibly heavy hitters here in the box. Massive destruction, although it's mostly the box that's suffering it right now. Wow. You can tell that the audience trusts the box in here because everybody moved over to the big box to see this fight. And can you blame them? I mean, the power in these two robots is just, you can feel it in your bones. Now, it looks like the oh, no. side drive of Ripperoni is looking a little sad. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> look at that there. couch! 
<laughs> oh. The double <laughs> discs on Depth Charge are spinning up. Wow. Oh, that's a big hole. Oh, and, and Depth Charge has, has speared itself into the side of the box. Embedded itself. I think an unstick can happen here, but it, yeah, look at that. Did you hear the noise as it, as it was removed from the wall? <laughs> oh! Taking apart this box. And then chucking Ripperoni as it approaches. Dustin Eswine, the captain of Deep Six, has built a horizontal Deep Six here. <laughs> oh, wow! Somebody ring the dinner bell. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Death Charge is a 45-pound robot because Dustin S-Line is running bristles instead oh, of wheels. The oh, oh wow. That's huge! Ripper already severed the belt on Death Charge. Remember that... that, that oh, I was going to say, Ricky, now that Tell bot doesn't move say. unless that weapon is going. So this robot is dead. Yes. 100% dead in the water, you might say. <laughs> Bravo. Well done. Huge round of applause from the audience for Ripperoni, who has defeated Deck Charge, the most feared 30 pounder in this competition here today. The audience wow. loves that too. Look at that. Okay, it looks like I could put my whole fist through that. Uh, kittens Let's check could in crawl with through Katie. There. Let's, uh, let's take a quick replay. Uh, look here at the replay. Look at that. The energy, just the impact. I mean, these, these are two of the hardest hitting 30 pounders I've ever seen in my life, Ricky. Yeah, you, well, you gotta think, the just on, uh, on Death Charge here, the Whoa. weight of that weapon, bigger than any other, any other weapon we've seen here today, right? Yeah, this was the kill shot. Ripperoni ripping into the belt of Death Charge. Scoring a decisive knockout here. Anna Truly. Zolnikov and Ripperoni advancing here in the undefeated bracket. Fantastic. Good showing. Now, uh, Depth Charge gets kicked down into uh, the elimination bracket, mm -hmm. where it's going to uh, face all sorts of little 30 pounders. Wonder, I wonder how many more. Oh, Gil's telling me this was the elimination bracket. Oh. I, I don't think that's true, Gil, because Depth Charge won its last match, right? Well, maybe that was an elimination match as well. Did Ripperoni lose at all today? Gil, we got we to get a double check on that. Uh, if you're watching along here at home, uh, we obviously have these, uh, <laughs> these headsets. We're able to talk to our... Oh. oh. Okay. All right, Gil. All right, let's, uh, let's kick it over here to Katie. Yeah, it's a big night for Dustin. He might be going home here early, but he's going home with some with some glass and also 50 bucks. So that was a send, cut, send, full send by the end of the day. Congratulations on uh, on your <laughs> big accomplishment. But honestly, this couldn't have been done without the Ripperoni team. I would have not been in this arena without them. They came over to my pit knowing they were going to fight me, and they gave me three of their people, spare parts. They're the ones that made this happen. And uh, I can't thank them enough. Wow, that is incredible. And speaking to that, I just saw a little fist bump here with Anna and her teammates. How does that make you feel knowing that you guys are not only doing your job, but you're also making a difference for others? Well, we just want to see good robots fight. You know, it's more fun if everyone's working. It's more fun if everybody gets a good hit in. I mean, here's my, here's my back play. We're going we're gonna to hold on to this. It's very exciting. I thought that was a fantastic match. I was excited to fight this robot. I mean, this thing is crazy. So we wanted to make it happen for sure. Well, congratulations. You're moving on, but again, making a difference for others around here. So congrats. Thank you. All right. Uh, Gil has set me straight. This was the elimination bracket. That is the last time we're going to be seeing depth charge here today. Ripperoni Eight, remains alive seven, in the elimination six, bracket. Five, Did you say was sleeping with the fishes? Four, three, two. One. Speaking five. of pizza, Robots five. wow! I hope you're hungry. All right, this looks like a, this is a fun match here. 
This pizza box looks like it has a, a battery taped to the front of it. Is that, that right? Is a, that is a box of Domino's pizza, which is probably one of the most dangerous things that we've seen in the box all day. Mm-hmm. That's bait. There you go. I've always wanted to own a uh, an RC pizza box, Ricky. You know, I would talk to him after the match. Today could be your shot. How difficult do you think it is for me to build a pizza box that I can drive around my house? It's it's almost exactly the perfect starting process for you. You should jump in. Okay. You know, go in hungry. Yeah. And uh, eat the pizza eat and then it. start watching YouTube videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. And look at this. This uh, this pizza's seen better days. Now uh, the it's whole Domino's. top of <laughs> the whole top of this uh, Domino's food product is uh, is gone. <laughs> Legally, you can't call it pizza, Chris. No, no, it's, it's almost pizza. Wow, that is a uh, that is a large box here. Wow. Johnny Sumpas and uh, Spartan X here in black and white. Looks like that's Caldera with Glenn Boxel. It looks like this might be Voltage from Johnny's team as well. I'd love so. to know who built that uh, pizza box robot. Uh, Look I, at the grease stains on it. I was going to say that just the calories in the cardboard alone is impressive. All right, and that is the end of our rumble. Round of applause for these builders here. Doing this only for our entertainment. And their own, of course. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is what the builders live for. Coming in here, throwing a bunch of things in a box and seeing what happens. Yeah. I, I don't know if you could come up with two more different robots, the uh, Domino's Pizza Box and Ripperoni. Those are on totally different sides of the spectrum. And yet the theme stands. <laughs> That's true. You know, it's... Uh, the common threads are, are uh, always surprising. Yeah. One of them can just absolutely destroy your internals, and then the other one is, is a ripperoni. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, Chris. All right, uh, looks like we're locked here in cage two. Jack move versus Tothic. This is elimination bracket round seven. We are really getting toward the end of this elimination bracket here for Beetleweights. Jack move driven by Drew Davis, our 10th grade English Eight, teacher from Schenectady. Seven, Topic six, run by five, Christian Cooper four, from Team three, WPI. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Now what we're seeing here is Topic getting the low ground oh. under Jack move with those super long forks. Oh, and Jack Move is bringing it straight back to Tothic. Drew Davis will not be pushed around inside of this box. That was a good pin, Drew. Here we go. Tothic with that menacing arm just hovering over the head of Jack Move. Jack Move doing a good job of keeping those forks on top of it rather than underneath of it. Uh, spoke too soon. Ooh, Tothic that's a good seeing his pin opportunity. Spinning up, and ooh, yeah. can't quite make contact. He'll need to back up just a hair, but he could lose the pin. Still, small smack on the, on the lid there. Really some angry noises coming from Jack Moose. Topic has been uh, struggling today a little bit with that articulating arm but has uh, still really been, you know, uh, ahead of the control game. Even against a bot like Jack Move, which is, uh, you know, so aggressive, so chubby, got the heavy front plow. Yeah, a hard robot to get under, but uh, with good enough driving, it happens. And, and here could be that moment. Oh, and a miss, swing and a miss, unfortunately, for Topic. And then popped upside down. This is not where Topic wants to be. A lot of vulnerable bits sitting right at weapon height on Topic.
And a lot of trouble self-writing. Jack move not letting up any and, and doing doing his opponent a favor. Ah, uh, there we are. A good pin from Topic, but uh, unable to parlay it into a, uh, a major hit with the weapon. Coming up on 30 seconds left in this match. Elimination bracket round seven. Oh, it's trying to spin up. It, it wants it. But instead, it's just smack. Oh, this is not a good spot for Jack Moo. This could be the end. It's entitled to an unstick, but... Uh, and there it is. Saved by the house bot. Oh, a good pop there. This is going to go to the judges. We're coming up on the last few seconds. And, and that's the fight. match. The crowd liked that one, I'll tell you. It was a lot of excitement, but uh, you never saw Tofik with that with that big, you know, decisive hit, and you yeah. never saw Jack move with that with that, you know, control that you would expect from a wedge like that. Look here in the replay. You can see the weapon up to speed finally on Tofik, and it misses. Ugh. You know, so close. If it was a half a second off, that would have made this a decisive match. And as it is. It's really, I think this is going to be tough for some of the judges. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I'm hearing from the uh, the judges now. If they're cu they're curious to know if, if Tothic's vertical can still spin, let's go, uh, let's go over to Lindsay. All right, so we have a bunch of Super Chats all lined up. Uh, the first one is just a, a nice message from a competitor who is here today, uh, Robert Rund. Uh, thanks to all the NHRL staff today. I had an awesome time. Never did better than three and two back when he used to compete in 2003 and 2004. Thanks. So he was comp uh, competing with Breakfast, and he did a great job. Uh, and then we have a lot of Super Chats about Ripperoni. So uh -oh. from Ian, that was one hot, spicy, melty ripperoni. Uh, and then, uh, oh no, Depth Charge has opened the pit of oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it had to be there somewhere. And of course, that would be under an NHRL cage. Uh, and then lastly, going home with some glass. So actually, interesting thing is that people found out about Norwalk Havoc today through Depth Charge and their fight being shared on Reddit. So it's already going viral what happened here, and there's a lot to talk about. So yeah, people are still buzzing. Pretty cool. I mean, it was incredibly exciting. All right, we're back with the judges. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, did, we, did we find out what the, uh, the status was on that vertical weapon on Tothic? Let's, let's kick it over to Katie right now. I see she's there. Uh, it still it didn't spin at full power, but it could still spin. Okay, so it was a functional weapon, just you know, a little sad. Not full, not full power. It happens. <laughs> okay, judges, does that answer your question? All right, so we have two Jack moves up on screen and a Tothic. Now we're gonna have to go through. Just there was a little last minute information. Let's see, Don, were you a Tothic man or a Jack mover? I was a Jack man. Gotcha. Derek, what can you tell us? I was for Topic. All right, so it's really going to come down to Andrew. What is your verdict? Uh, yeah, I'm Jack Move uh, on that one. All right, well, all right. Split decision, Jack Move. Uh, I, I think all of us thought it could have gone either way, and it was a, it was a pretty close uh, rundown there. So yeah, and you know, I, I see that they that they did break it down by that. Uh, that aggression factor, it seemed to be the, uh, the determining factor because mm -hmm. we didn't really see a whole lot of damage coming out. It was more or less them kind of going back and forth with pins. Mm -hmm. Tothic able to use those forks to kind of scoop Jack Move. Jack Move able to kind of, to, uh, kind of pin uh, uh, Tothic uh, from time to time against the wall. Um, really interesting fight. Uh, I see that we're over there right now prepping cage one. Yeah, we have a, a big-ish. And a Minimizer entering the arena. This is going to be a really interesting match. That's a, a big swing on Minimizer. And in theory, that is a fantastic way to hit those biggish wheels. So uh, it'll be a good test of design intent, as we, as we like to say. I, uh, I love this new design. I can't recall seeing anything 
really like it. Um, no, no. It reminds me like if you took Rotator Eight, in its one wedge seven, configuration and just six, stretched it out. Five, threw it on a rack four, and just three, see what happens. Two, one, fight. Right, right, the elimination bracket of the 12 pound category, Big Ish and Minimizer. Oh, big hit right off the bat. You gotta think Minimizer, a fantastic target for the weapon on Big Ish, but the wheels on Big Ish, a fantastic target for Minimizer. Big hit. Minimizer has lost a couple of its scales. That's all right. It's just shedding. Biggest doesn't look to be spinning anymore. I'm curious. No, uh, it, it is definitely down for the moment. We're going to see if it comes back. Wow. Is it my imagination, or might there be a little bit of sag in the middle of that biggish robot? It's. it's really been through the grinder today. It truly has. The fact that it's in here at all, especially in the elimination bracket, does, is just testament. But there's a, what we call that stamp to those wheels. A little bit of negative camber going on. Did I see maybe a puff of smoke as well from Piggish? Oh. How, uh, it looks like these wheels are getting a little wonky. <laughs> just a tad, but you know, that is the beauty of that material. It just keeps going until it's not there anymore. It looks like it's slowly doing a split. Yeah. It hasn't stretched in a while, but you know, it used to be a gymnast. <laughs> uh, frankly, great driving. Oh, look at that, right through one of the legs. Wow. Like it wasn't even there. If it can do that once more, then there goes the durability of Biggish. I'm sorry, there goes the drivability of Biggish. Oh, but the vertical weapon is back and spinning. What a comeback. Oh, and it's down again. Big hit again. We're just wondering if, if is Minimizer gonna be able to pull off that kill shot or not? Or will it matter? Is Biggish just gonna crumble under the pressure? Oh, there goes wow. one of the, the little ears on the top of Minimizer. <laughs> 45 seconds left in this match. Elimination bracket round four of the 12 pounders. Oh, and there's the drive problem starting to kick in. So much camber on those wheels. Camber, excuse me. It, it's impacting the body and it's not wanting to turn. Wow. Both, both robots trying their darndest here, but this match so far, in many ways, dominated by Minimizer. And here's the final countdown. We're just about at the end of this match. It's going to go the distance. We gotta go wow, to the judges. incredible. Incredible. We'll, we'll get into a, a replay here, but uh, really impressive uh, strategy by Minimizer. Really love how it's able to kind of throw that tail end around so quickly. Uh, you know, it's it's, uh, it's it's one second, it's got that defensive configuration in the front. The next second, it's just got that horizontal, like flipping around at your guts. There, that, that hit you just saw is the one that disabled the weapon on Biggish. And you'll see Minimizer one or two more times here, just kind of uh, lurk. Well, maybe not in this case, but the fight defined by the fact that Minimizer would sit there, wait for its moment, still be aggressive in its waiting time, and then swing around and make those impacts. And it really threw Biggish through the beat grinder. Yeah, very impressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we are with the judge's decision. This is a, a pretty resounding victory for Minimizer right across the board. Uh, look at those scores. I mean, uh, we've got a, a 15, uh, another 15, 14. That, that, those are, that's a decisive victory. Yeah, let me just get a thumbs up from the judges just to make sure that those scores look accurate. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got Dom there as a, uh, you know, a, a huge, uh, a mama, as a, a papa to the huge, you know, lineage. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's always hard to see something, a descendant of yours, uh, bite the bullet. But what a match. All right. And then and the uh, chat agrees with you, 96% voting for Minimizer. Let's go over to Katie with the uh, winners. Here we go. Yeah, wish, wish Sean and the min in Minimizer here 
How well do you think it's holding up at this point in the game? At this point, it's definitely taking a lot of damage. Like, we came here with four frames. This is the last two frames we're, we're running. And in that fight, actually, we lost. We couldn't drive forwards. So all of that was kind of driving backwards, spinning around, like, just the right moment. It worked. I'm really impressed with it, because, like, this is our first time out here. So it's been able to just withstand so much punishment. It's just been really fantastic. Did you feel like you had an advantage at that point when their weapons stopped working? Oh, yeah, for sure, because then we could just go for those wheels because without worrying about them hitting us and just destroying us. So it was a really, really good fight, and congrats to them as well. And, uh, yeah, hope we see them out again. Out of curiosity, why do you think Minimizer is gaining some traction out here within the community? Um, one, there's a lot of, like, work that we put into just making it look good. You know, it's a, it's a cool Stegosaurus-themed robot, and... Um, it just drives different from a lot of robots because a lot of other robots they just drive straight at the opponent and you know do what they can do. But Thagomize, it's all about strategy. You have to turn right at the right moment and get those wheels, get those side shots that are so like important to actually killing. Yeah, no, I can see how that would do. Uh, gentlemen, you gotta look cool sometimes to perform cool too, right? Is that how something like that works? <laughs> I think so. I, it really <laughs> does make a difference, especially with the fans. If yeah. you want to come back, you and I got to tell you, it makes all the difference having that support, especially when you go through, you know, not every fight is going to be a victory. But I want to back up a second. We've been calling that a crocodile pretty much all day. Apparently, it's a stegosaurus. I, we're, that's the first time I'm learning that. <laughs> if there's stegosauruses out there, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant no offense. All right. Let's uh, speaking of uh, hearing from the fans. Uh, let's let's go back over to uh, to Lindsay. Lindsay, what's going on on social? Well, I don't know that anyone in the chat caught on uh, that it's a Stegosaurus either. However, there is a ton of Minimizer love going on in the chat. I think it's like one of the most popular bots of the day. So Minimizer, way to go. Um, I do want to read a shout out that someone sent in for one of the house bot drivers named Connor, who's here with us today. Uh, he's going to be competing in the VEX VRC High School World Championships in May. So congrats to Connor. Good luck. That is really exciting and I hope all of your experience driving our house bots here are going to come in really handy uh, for Vex. I, it seems like a one-to-one, -one, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> big, uh, either way, big shout out. Uh, there's so many people that put in so much work here at Norwalk and the, the talent is amazing and, and you can see the results. Uh, we're going to go to a commercial break here though, so. Yep, quick commercial break coming up. Stay tuned. I'm Jake with Sen Cut Sen, and today we're talking about the linear deburring process. So once your parts come out of the laser, they still might have some scale and porosity, minor handling scratches, as well as markings from raw material. They now also have a little bit of a burr on the edge from the manufacturing process. What we do is we remove that through a linear deburring machine. This is also a belt sander, commonly referred to as a time saver. The linear deburring process is best suited for flat sheet metal parts like this, but they have to be of a certain size. The smallest part that we can run through the deburring machine is a 1 inch by 3 inch part, whereas the largest is a 24 by 46 inch part. So here at Senka Sen, we use the minimum amount of pressure on that deburring machine to remove that burred edge. So this is what you should expect when you receive your parts. It should be free of a burr on the outside surface of both sides, but it will still have a somewhat sharp edge here as this process doesn't roll that edge. It only just removes that burr on that outside face. It might still have some imperfections and small handling scratches as it goes through the rest of the handling process, but it won't have any raw material manufactured markings on it anymore. Parts that meet our criteria are pre-selected to go through this deburring process and check out. If you don't want your parts to go through that process, make sure you uncheck the box that says deburring. If you have any other questions regarding your design, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at sencutsend.com. If you have an idea for a new part or design but aren't sure where to begin, try the Send Cut Send Parts Builder, where you can find inspiration for your custom gears and weapons. Use Build4 Norwalk 10 for your 10% off your next order. And it really is a cool service. I, uh, I use the parts builder for my uh, for my bot um, 
uh, dark side last season, super easy. Uh, you do everything right there online, and uh, when you screw something up, they even sometimes send Eight, you an email to let you know. Seven, yeah, I, they six, want happy customers, five, and they are going to work for it. Four, We're here in cage three. three. Two, the undefeated one, bracket, five, round seven, four, three pound five. division. All right. Wow. Big hit there. Silk and Stoneforge. Wow. Silk going flying. Stoneforge very mobile. But it's still going to have a hard time getting around a wide robot like Silk. This is very exciting. The winner of this match is going to go on to face the, uh, the, the winner of the, uh, the elimination bracket to crown a champion. Yeah, we are, we are right on the precipice of glory here. I can, I can taste it. If you look at the energy in Silk popping itself around as it hits the floor after every exchange, and still able to give back big hits to Stoneforge. You can see just a clouds of solid dust from those spinning weapons. Floor has taken a beating, and so have these robots, but one of these robots is going to the finals immediately. Woo! Oh, I see some weapon troubles on Silk. We'll see if they're temporary or sustained, but that could be a deciding factor in this fight. Ooh, lots of action so far in the first 90 seconds of this match. Stoneforge still doing its best, still seems to be firing on all cylinders. Silk doing what it can, but without an active weapon, it's really struggling. Yeah. Still, that is a lot of heavy, hard metal at the front of Silk. If it can keep those weapons pointed at its opponent, it could break its fist with its face. A lot of control being demonstrated here by Stoneforge. Dictating the pace, the position. Oh, and then going after the minibot. That's just cruel, come on. What did it ever do to you? 45 seconds left in the match. With opportunity knocking, it looks like Stoneforge might be answering the door. Silk doing its best to shut that door in, in uh, Stoneforge's face, but is that a wheel that just went flying? It looks oh. like, yeah, it might have been stripped off of Stoneforge. No, I think that may be a, a cover. That's well, hard to say. Yeah, it's just so much, it's like a blur. Oh, no, it was a wheel. Look, it's that front left wheel that is some damage and it will make a difference. But this is the end of the match. We're going wow, to the judges right. on this. Yeah. All right. All judges. right, judges. Don, we're going to need your ruling here. Who did you have on top in this match? Uh, I'm going Stoneforge. Stoneforge. Uh, he just dominated the majority of the match and even though they lost their weapon at the end, it was, you know, not enough. Not the, the clock. Gotcha. Understood. Derek, can we go to you? I'm picking Stoneforge for the same reason. So lost the weapon pretty early, even though they had some pretty good openings early on. All right. Well, a massive congratulations to Stoneforge, but we still need to know, was it a unanimous decision? Andrew, what was your ruling? Uh, yeah, Stoneforge, uh, pretty close fight, though. But yeah, Stoneforge, Stoneforge for the win. All right, well, not too surprising there. It was a lot of dominance in that match, but also a lot of excitement. I mean, it, it kept going. Anything could have happened at any point, and um, good match. Thank you, judges. All right, let's go over to Katie with the winner. Yeah, James, your takeaway. I mean, this is, we're getting closer to the final here. What, yeah, <laughs> what, are, what are you learning in these that you can really now take to the final? Yeah, so this is my first time running my Billy Drum. Uh, it's working way better than I thought it would. That match with Silk was really exciting. Uh, just trying to prepare for the next fights now. And how are you gonna prepare? We, got, we don't got that much time left. Yeah, so my robot's actually a modular robot. You might not know that if you just watch this stream because I'm only running my drum module so far, but stay tuned, I, I'm ready for the next matches. 
Ooh, I love that kind of stuff. There's a little uh, stuff in the hidden pocket. Thank you, James. Best of luck a little later on. Yeah, we are interested to see what uh, the future holds for Stoneforge. It's always Eight, neat to see later seven, in the uh, fights six, those alternate modules come five, out. We're going to number four, two here for three, another beetle two, fight. Elimination one, bracket. Silent five, Spring, Sepiel, three minutes on the clock. That's 150 at the three pound division. Just to give you an idea of how many matches we've made it through today. Yeah, what an incredible journey we've been on, but uh, it's worth it for matches like these. Sepiel trying its best, taking off strips of Silent Spring, but that's what those strips are there for. They are semi-ablative armor. Oh! oh big hit. Remember, Silent Spring gets a weight bonus for the fact that it's a, it's a shuffler. So it is tossing around a lot of weight here. We have uh, a missing wheel guard off the, the side of Sepiel. Yep. Silent Spring gonna do everything it can to wear down its opponent and, and wait for its moment to strike. That's, that's the way of Jameson Go. But you gotta wonder, what, what will that moment be? What is he looking for in terms of an opportunity? These, these two bots are going for it. They are. It may not be with an active weapon, but that is, if not aggression, it is intensity in the driving from Jameson Go. And Sepiel, no, no fear in returning fire. Oh. oh! Oh! And there is smoke pouring from Silent Spring. Clearly that weapon penetrated deep enough to hit a battery or, or cause some kind of damage. Silent Spring used smoke screen and it's very effective. Just disappeared like a ninja. Sepiel unmoving Silent Spring in a blaze of glory, literally. What has Goodness. The countdown has started. Oh, my Jameson goodness. Go is your victor in this fight in giant clouds of smoke. Look at look at the face. The excitement on his face right now coming through. And uh, you know, the clouds of smoke just billowing out of this robot. You can't see. You can wow. see it on the live stream. You can't see here in to see these robots. It is that thick. That's the most excited I've ever seen someone who has to go rebuild an entire robot right now. Elimination bracket round eight. We, you got to wonder what happened to Sepiel there. It seemed like it won that exchange. And then it just, it died. The punishment from Silent Spring too much. Did a battery come loose? What happened? I'm really, I'm really interested to kind of uh, take a peek under the hood and see exactly what happened. Yeah, maybe that's something we can go uh, box side or pit side or ring side for later, but uh, what an exciting match, an exciting uh, surprise ending. Yeah, we're, g we're gonna have to see what's going on with both of these bots. I think All right, we're going to Katie now. Works. It just uh, probably nicked the battery a little bit, so. That's it? Yeah, I got two spare batteries. Put it in. Put a new one in there. Easy peasy, guys. So realistically, you you just kind of celebrated as though that was like an actual championship win. Why? <laughs> um. Well, I, they were telling me beforehand they have this very new AR600 blade. It's a really hard material, really sharp. I wasn't sure if the same strategy I used against Caldera was going to work, and it looked like it was not really going the way I wanted to because it, they're hitting high, where I added lots of hot glue. Um. So as you can tell, it eventually ate through where probably my battery was. So I decided to like go all in. And somewhere in that exchange, he stopped moving before uh, Ike stopped moving. So, you know, his countdowns will go. He's first. But you won. Uh, is it official? Before I celebrate? Uh, you were celebrating. It if is official. Saying it's, yes, it is official. It is yes, official. Not. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go to the replay here. Look at this. Sepiel coming in, bouncing off. That's when it first lost its armor. We thought that might be a turning point, but little did we know these hits to the back of Silent Spring were just death, you know, by a dozen cuts anyway. They're big hits. Yeah. There's the smoke pouring out. Uh, and there we see the beginning of this, uh, this lipo uh, fire that turned uh, Silent Spring into a, uh, a chocolate lava cake that we saw at the end of this match. Yeah, truly. I, 
And I, I, we can't tell from here very well, but it looks like there's a sheen on that robot. I think that robot got hot and, and started, you know, there's some parts that are melting on there. So Jameson's going to have his, his work cut out for him. All right, and there we see uh, Jim uh, donning the hazmat uh, suit next to the uh, the Norwalk gunk droid that's going to uh, get this uh, get this battery uh, out of the facility. All right. Oh, I see Jim has been upgraded to evil henchman. I, I thought he was just a henchman. I didn't realize he had a... Seven years of evil henchman school. Yeah, well, I didn't realize he was over there on the alignment chart, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. He put in the work. Like you said, seven years is a long time. And a dramatic exit, considering that's, that's the winner of your fight. <laughs> It's one thing to send your opponent home in a body right. bag, but oh, <laughs> when you ask for one for yourself. <laughs> uh. Oh boy. And you can see a little bit of the behind the scenes here at Norwalk, but. Uh, and that's where they just roll it down out into the neighborhood of Norwalk. Yep. Uh, it's like the streets of San Francisco out there, just long downhill stretches. You start rolling a robot, you turn around and you come back in and gravity takes care of the rest. No, we are, we are in fact very considerate and uh, very uh, environmentally conscious and, and this will be dealt with in a reasonable and professional way. But let's hope it's in time for Jameson to make the repairs he needs because we want to see him at full force. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm, I'm confident that he's gonna be able to get back there and do some uh, do some uh, magic, but uh, let's let's with with that much excitement. I want to hear what's going on over in social. Lindsay, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, several people have asked. Wait a second, Jameson advanced. He he won that match, and I think the definitive answer is yes, he won. Uh, and he has about 20 minutes to figure out how to take his bot that's currently in a dumpster and turn it into a bot that can, you know, continue on through the elimination bracket and take on uh, the, the champion bot. So uh, there's a lot of buzz going on. Uh, people are saying that this needs to go viral, uh, that this is the most smoke that they've ever seen. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, and then people are also recommending a Henchman Jim get a belt. <laughs> he's, he's doing a lot of maneuvering with this bot, the lipo fire. You know, you don't want to have to be worrying about pulling up your pants at the same time. That's too much. Right. So if, if Jameson is able to pull this uh, together, he's got to go up against Sea Dragon's Roar in the finals. Uh, what are, what are the, some of the thoughts from social media out there? Send your, uh, send your, uh, send your, your thoughts to Lindsay over there in social. Yeah. In the meantime, I guess all we can say is go Jameson, go. That's a cartoon that I would watch. Yeah, I, I would too, yeah. Yeah. Saturday morning. <laughs> Deserves its own cereal. Wouldn't you eat that as a cereal? Go, Jameson, go. Like, you know, they're sugar-frosted flakes of some type. Uh, yeah. Lith they're probably lithium polymer flavored at this point, but... They're probably actually, uh, a r you know, a really um, well-balanced, high-fiber, uh, incredibly efficient whole grain. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! The reaction at the end of that fight. <laughs> that was wild. But yeah, we can see why there would be, uh, you know, some confusion there. Uh, that smoke screen truly was a smoke screen, and uh, it, it might be hard for the viewers at home to see. Uh, its opponent, Sepiel, just shut down entirely. It sat there for uh, more than just a, a short countdown. Ricky, I am back. Oh. I've been in the bathroom for like the last 30 minutes. Anything exciting happened? That, nope. You know, that's what that grocery store sushi will do to you. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't, yep. you don't have anyone to blame for it yourself, but we do send our sympathies. You guys the grocery have any store matches? was all out. That was from the gas station. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, Yesterday. Did, did, we, did, did, I, did I miss any important matches? <laughs> any any close wins? Any lipo fires? Well, you know the answer to the last question based on the smell in this room. <laughs> I don't have to answer that one. But there, there were some... We've had a lot of excitement over the last 15, 20 minutes. Jameson Goh's story is just amazing here today. Yeah.
truly I, a journey. I'm standing back there in the merch area watching that match, and I am, like, hopping up and down myself. Incredible. Incredible. That's every time I see you, though. You're just hopping up and down. I think it's your natural state. I mean, I just get stoked when I, when I see a great match. Uh, I mean... Yeah, you're so I mean, that kill on. shot happened inside of the smoke. Yeah. You didn't even see it. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> best best shot of the evening, and, and no one gets to see it. Yeah. You know, it's, if someone did get to see it, and it's probably in some NFT locked video somewhere that, you know, only Jameson go or I whoever love it. it is. We'll see if we can run an infrared filter yeah. uh, there you on, go. on the video footage. Start frantically searching OpenSea for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So it's uh, not an uncommon story for Jameson to kind of work his way back through the elimination bracket. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, coming close to tasting victory. What do you think? I think that Jameson Go has the best chance out of everyone in the elimination bracket to escape that bracket and potentially take home another golden dumpster here tonight. That would be an incredible storyline. He's fought eight or nine times already here tonight. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we saw him earlier, we were surprised to see him over in the elimination cage earlier yeah. in the day. Yeah. But uh, as we sat there, we were like, this is not, this is a high, this is a high caliber robot. Yeah. This is not a robot that should be on its heels in yeah. the elimination bracket. Yeah. This is a robot that is on its toes and working its way up and climbing and like you said, if anyone can do it, Jameson, go. Oh, here we are. All right, right. Yeah. Let's go over to cage one. This looks oh, like okay. Axie Dead versus Ice Cream Sandwich. This is 12 pound sportsman action. Now, I don't oh. see the, uh, the round of this bracket here. I must imagine that we are pretty close to the end here for 12 pound sportsman. Interesting, we're not getting any hammer action off of uh, accident. Yeah, Axie Dent has no aggressive tapping. No. However, its opponent, we might have an unstick here. There was a lot of angry motor noise and not a lot of uh, robot movement. All right, production has just informed me that this is the championship. If Axie Dent is able to defeat Ice Cream Sandwich, Axie Dent will be the winner of 12 pound sportsman here today. If Ice Cream Sandwich is able to uh, defeat Axie Dent, I guess we're going to go into a sudden death rematch. Oh my. Now they've separated these two robots. It was see unclear. if they're going to come back to life here. Yeah, it was unclear whether they needed to be separated or, or simply neither of them was functioning. So let's hope for the best here. Yeah. Interesting approach on accident. You can see same uh, same approach that Shatter has on his weapon uh, hammer. All oh, right, well, we have accident is mobile. Ricky, this might be it. I think it is. This might be the end of 12 Pound Sportsman. Ice Cream Sandwich is dead. The tap out has begun. I don't think there's much chance for a comeback. Three, two, one. That is the end of the match. Your winner of 12 Pound Sportsman, Accident. Bravo. Now, uh, when you win 12 Pound Sportsman, you get nothing. Absolutely nothing, Ricky. That, that is absolutely not true. It is outlined specifically that you get a firm handshake from Austin. You get a little handshake, but you better not look him in the eye. No. All right, no, or else you're never coming back no, here. Mistake. Okay? You have to live with the fact that you brought a 12-pound sportsman when you could have brought <laughs> literally anything else. Uh, Let's be fair, though. 12-pound sportsman, great way to get started in this sport. Fantastic. Really, inc That's the way I got started. Oh, awesome. Uh, well, restarted. That's, okay. that, that's what brought me back into the fold, and I wouldn't be here without it, so I'm so glad they have a place for that here. Yeah. Uh, just, just don't linger. You know, try yeah. some new things, work your I'm, way up. As we get more 12-pound sportsmen uh, starting to fill out here, it becomes more of a destination for these types of bots. I'm sure that we're going to see, uh, you know, the tournament react to that mm -hmm. and uh, and give the appropriate prizes to those teams that, that really do uh, bring something different here. Bots that are resilient, that can go the three minutes. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to watch, sportsmen. 
Now, Ricky, I was just joking mm. in that I do love 12-pound sportsmen. I think that if I had a kid who was really interested in this sport, I would suggest 12-pound sportsmen as a starting point. Yeah. Now, 12-pound robots are pretty big. You don't have to be super compact with the inside of the robot, and you can continue to run that robot without needing a lot of spares throughout the day. You basically just charge up your batteries, put the robot back in, and it's really about driving, which is the absolute fundamental aspect of winning here at combat, in combat robotics. Absolutely. You start building that skill set early. You don't need tiny little, you know, piano player fingers. You can, you can put... You can put things together without having to be super experienced, yeah. and you can build those school skill set. The other thing I'll say, if Eight, you want to build something, seven, oh, we got to go to a match. Six, we'll come back to that five, a little later. Oh wow! Four, three, Look at this matchup: elimination yeah. bracket round five of the oh, three pound division. Try hard and Rick Maroney. Oh, oh, major oh. hit! Talk about kinetic energy. Oh, I felt that one in my teeth, Ricky. Rick Maroney uh, is. <laughs> Is it really the oh, end of the oh, 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 what happened? Oh, Big pieces of Ripperoni. There's a battery out of Ripperoni you can see through that robot. It's a lot more than a battery out of that robot. That it's is a see-through robot here. Oh, and Ripperoni is dead. Anna's a bit of a Wonder Woman, but I don't know that you're supposed to have an invisible chunk of your robot. <laughs> Wow, fast match for Tryhard. Ripperoni here is going to get counted out in the corner. Knockout. Amazing. Mm. Anna Zolnikov, I want to thank Anna for bringing the, uh, like, the, the, a robot that's completely captured the imagination of the fans here today. Ripperoni, great theming. And uh, it really was this one hit knockout. Here we go, one more. Here's a little taste of Italy. Two for hit knockout. Let's see it. And chef's oh. kiss right there. Wow. Wow. I Mama see Mia. what happened. Ripperoni was gyroing up onto its side, and Tryhard came in and cut it right there as it was on its side. You know, it's somewhere between luck and skill to be able to line up those shots, but when it happens, what kind of destruction can we see? It's, yeah. it's impressive. All right. Let's uh, bring it over here to Katie with the winner of 12 Pound Sportsman, Justin Smith. Yeah, Justin, Mandy, an accident. You know, when when they won, Mandy looked over and said, we have pride too. And I think that is so special because they are making a statement. They do have something to prove here in Sportsman. Justin, as you walk it through, you've been to a lot of these. How good does it feel? Uh, it's good to finally win one. I mean, we've had a lot of trouble with this robot. We always do. The weapon never works. And it's, it's nice to actually come out on top for once. <laughs> And as that is, what are you guys going to do to celebrate? Because you guys are kind of representing a different group all together within Sportsman. Um, I'm not sure. We're going to fix it up and see if we can make it actually work better next time. <laughs> a big congratulations to you, Mandy, as well. It takes a whole team to make this thing happen. All right. Round of applause there yeah, for bravo. Accident. And go and look for Austin McCord. He's going to give you a nice little handshake there. Yep. And uh, yeah, I hope to see Accident again at a, another competition. Eight, you know, I've seen seven, different versions of Accident six, over and over. We'll see him again for sure. Four, three, We're going to go over to Cage One two, right now for Elimination one, Bracket Round five, Four. Robot. Demi Gorgon and oh. Firebug. This should be a fight. I've, I haven't seen Firebug except for one incredibly brutal exchange. So I'm excited to see what it does to Demi Gorgon. Demi Gorgon run by Brandon Bennett Young, one of your team members here from Maryland, <laughs> appearing on BattleBots with Mammoth. And it, and it looks like Demi Gorgon has uh, kind of encased itself with a uh, fireproof tape. Mm hmm. Clever. Yes. Smart. I, I don't know. It looks a lot like how you make a, It's like how you make a baked potato, in my opinion. <laughs> I can see the accelerant. Here we go. Firebug run by Casey Jermiason. This is a massive flamethrower. He's been throwing up the very biggest flames of the day. See if he can do it here with Demi Gorgon. Oh no, Casey finds himself on his head. Demi Gorgon is trying to bracket. regain control. It seems like it, it, it catches it and then it loses it. We need to see some consistency. However, Firebug on its head right now. We are seeing very little fire from this bug. 
But pretty good mobility. Oh, oh, wow, and he slipped himself back onto his wheels. Well done, Casey. 90 seconds left in the match. Cindy Gorgon looking very mobile inside of the big box. Getting under Firebug. Showing great control here. Yeah, for a front heavy undercutter like that, the fact that it can push around an opponent is just is really impressive. One of the fun facts about Firebug is that it is running foam on the front of its robot. Those are almost like dampeners. You can see it spraying butane all over uh, Demigorgon and Bubble, but no fire. He's really punted Demigorgon behind the house bot. Really out of view. A, between a rock and a hard place here. Yeah, Demigorgon is uh, hidden from view. If only we had a mobile camera that was able to get over there and take a look at Brandon's robot. 30 seconds remaining in the fight. We're going to see what they can do for us. I'm surprised they haven't paused. Oh, but there it oh, is. Oh, there's the pause. All right, we are pausing this match. We're going to send in a human to go and uh, Not quite. Demi We're sending Gorgon. in Henchman Jim, who is uh, a little bit more than human. Superhuman in some circles, they're known as. He's 90% human, 10% robot, folks. Here we go, Henchman Jim. Very best in meat machine technology. <laughs> okay. Brandon Bennett Young's robot is still incredibly dangerous. Jim is pulling uh, this robot out using his crowbar. Never turn your back on a, uh, a robot. I think it's like bears, right? Yeah, walk away slowly and calmly and don't let them sense, you know, your nerves. Yeah, you have to make yourself look as large as possible. Mm -hmm. Never disturb a Demogorgon with their cubs. <laughs> All right, 25 seconds left here in this match. Demi Gorgon now is free from, uh, from the corner. Let's see if uh, that weapon is going to come back on Demi Gorgon. Oh. All right, this match is back on. Oh, and the weapon did come back. Demi Gorgon taking off a little bit of that foam and even more, cutting into the front of Firebug. Oh, the front of Firebug is looking sad. Foam everywhere in this arena, but it is a blade of armor. That appears to be the end of the match. Okay, wow. We only have 20 seconds left on the clock, and that is the end of the match. Let's take a quick look here at the replay. That first inversion, I think after that point, it was gonna be hard for, for Firebug to... I thought it was going to be the end of its chances of getting the fire going, but it did self right pretty quickly. Now, Ricky, would you say that uh, there was no active weapon on Firebug because we saw no fire? This was just a bug. It, you know, true. However, you did see the accelerant springs. There was at least an attempt at an active weapon, which mm. does matter. All right, we're going to go over to the judges. Who here, is, uh, who here is feeling strong about this? Who wants to start us off? Don, you're at the top. What, what do you say? Firebug versus Demi-Gorgon. What do they say? Uh, I think it was a really close match. Um, I'm definitely give the damage to Demi-Gorgon, um, but the control to Firebug... Um, uh, the, I still give the aggression to Demogorgon, but in the points system, I have it 9-8 Firebug. Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. A close decision for Firebug. This one may be a split decision. Derek Tran, your thoughts on this fight? Uh, for damage, I clearly give it to Demogorgon. We did a fair bit of damage. For aggression, I also give it to Demogorgon because they never really used the flamethrower other than spraying some accelerant, and they never even tried to spark it, at least from what I could tell after that first attempt. And for control, I would give it slightly to uh, Firebug. Oh. Overall, I'd give it to Demogorgon. Okay, this will be a split decision. Andrew Russell, break this tie here. Is it Firebug or Demigorgon? No, I did say Demogorgon. Oh, my yeah. good... Wait, two, we have two didn't for Demi Don say? Did Don no, say fire? Okay. I, I'm the oddball. 
Oh, my okay. Gosh. I got okay. you. Don, we've got yeah, two so votes Don, for Demi Don Gorgon. Don spoiled that. Uh, I'm going Demi Gorgon, uh, split wow. decision for me. Um, I thought uh, the control was more toward Firebug, um, but that combined damage and aggression from Demi Gorgon put him over the edge, and that's uh, two votes Demi Gorgon, one Firebug. Okay, all right, perfect. Split judge's decision for Demi Gorgon. We've got Katie here with the winner of that match. Yeah, here with Brandon, and in fact, do you agree with how, the way that they were kind of breaking it down? Yeah, yeah, Demi Gorgon definitely was able to punch Lee really hard, so that was pretty good. Um, he definitely had me for control, though. So I think he, he was able to corral me a couple times, get a good pins, so that was pretty useful. But I definitely had the ability to punch really hard. And that's probably a good thing. It's also good when you have parts of the other robot on the, on the arena floor. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, one thing that I think is really fascinating about your approach here is you're coming in not only as a competitor, as a mentor, as a coach, as a resource. How special is it to know that you two are making a difference and making waves for a lot of up-and-coming uh, roboters? Roboters? Robotics. Robotiers. Robotiers. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's a big joy, because I remember seeing Robot Wars and Robotica and uh, Battlebots back in the early 2000s. So I always view all this like kid stuff, just like I just enjoy as a childhood hobby. So even when Battlebots came back and the other sports started to get big again, like Norwalk, I still thought of it as just like something I enjoy. So when I went to Maryland and I started Leatherbacks uh, at UMD, uh, Combat Robotics, we Basically, the goal was it to build up more builders in the region because there weren't a lot of Maryland that really had a good scene to go to. So the goal was to have competitors sort of growing them home, uh, teams uh, sort of growing them up so that way I can fight against them later on. And then as I got invited to play in or help with Mammoth, it's like, okay, now I can cultivate my own team, cultivate more people to help, and then like pass it on to Mammoth and grow Mammoth. Let's see. It's like Maryland people, Maryland robots, love to see it. And, and one thing I think is really special is the idea of that challenge it presents as you wear in that hat as a competitor and that hat as a mentor. Congratulations. We'll continue to see you making, making waves, if we will. Guys? Okay. Now, uh, let's see. If, if, I, uh, if I've got my math here correct, that means that Demi Gorgon goes on to face Minimizer. Is that right? I believe you're right, but I think we're going to have to... Maybe I can check with Gil. I think Gil, we're going to have to check hear with my Gil voice. On. Demi Gorgon is advancing. This is pretty late in the bracket. Oh, hello, Lindsay. Hello, me. Rapid cut. Okay. All right, uh, let's check in here with Lindsay. All right, hello, hello. Um, so I want to just shout out some people in the chat because we have listeners and we have viewers who are joining us from all over the world. A lot of them are in the US, but a lot of them are from other countries, many of which are in the UK. And it is, I don't know, five, four or five hours later there. And as this night gets later and later, they are still sticking with us. And they are watching every single fight, commentating on every single fight. And it is really late. And they've been with us since, since some of the first fights of the day. So I, you know, that's a hardcore fan. I got to, uh, I got to tip my hat to them because it's, it's a long day and it's a long night for them, but they're still here and they're still making it work. Uh, so we have a super chat here from Team Billy. Really appreciate all the work put into running these events. Thank you. I wish Billy was here. Uh, we saw Billy last in December, uh, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see them here again. Uh, I know it's definitely a crowd favorite and a big time favorite of, of everyone here on production as well. We, uh, we love Billy. I love that Axie art there of yeah. Billy from Jonathan Clark, I'm definitely builder impressed. of Billy. Uh, Jonathan lives in Colorado, so uh, he's not able to make it out to every single one of these competitions, but I would be very surprised if we didn't see Jonathan a little bit later this year. Yeah, and frankly, you see him once, he's going to come back. Yeah. It'll only take one event before he's in the finals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, every single time that he brings Billy and Bobby, you know, he really, he really only needs to qualify once. Right. Um, and, yeah, makes super deep runs uh, through the competition. All right, we're gonna go to a commercial break here. Let's check in with Send Cut Send. So the first part of the process is for us to retrieve your material. We have over 200 materials in stock. Once we grab them, they're gonna be loaded onto one of three processes, laser, water jet, or CNC router. 
For laser cutting, we love Amata equipment. Uh, this is our four kilowatt Ventus machine, which is absolutely amazing. We use it for everything up to about a half inch in thickness. At this point, your material's been loaded. The G-code has been created on our network, and the last thing to do is hit go. If you choose a material such as carbon fiber or any metal over a half inch in thickness, it's gonna go onto one of our water jets. This is one of our Flow Mach 100s. Super amazing machine, 60,000 PSI of water pressure. It'll cut up to six inches in thickness. I don't think we're gonna offer that to the public, uh, but it's really incredible what this thing's capable of. It gives us amazing edge quality and we can cut just about anything with it. For some materials, the best method of cutting is gonna be to use one of our custom CNC routers. This machine is great. It'll give amazing edge quality on materials like UHMW and birch plywood. This machine has a 14 horsepower spindle and a 10 place automatic tool changer. So our setup time is measured in seconds, not in minutes. No matter what material you choose, we're gonna use the best possible method to give you the highest quality product. After your parts have been cut, if they meet our size and thickness requirements, they'll go through one of our deburring machines. The deburring process will remove minor burrs, dross, or heavy scratches in your part. After deburring, if your part has holes or features that need to be tapped or threaded, they'll come over to our tapping department to be processed. If your parts require bending, they'll come over to our bending department, and most likely they'll be bent on one of our Amata EG series press brakes. They're all servo driven, super fast, and highly accurate. If you choose powder coating, that's the last step in our process before shipping. We'll clean your part, coat it, bake it, then it's out the door. Finally, we have our shipping department. Your parts are counted, weighed, checked for final QC, then they're boxed up and ready to head out the door. We ship from the facility closest to you to guarantee two to three day transit. If you have any questions, email us, support at sendcutsend.com. Thanks for watching. SendCut Send is an online laser and CNC cutting service, the preferred service for many of our builders for their custom robotics parts and supplies. Norwalk Havoc fans and builders can get 10% off their next purchase with code BUILD for Norwalk 10. Thank you so much, SendCut Send, for sponsoring Norwalk Havoc. All right. You can see that nighttime shot and the train going past. This is one of the last trains, I'm sure, to New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's getting pretty late here in Norwalk, Connecticut. It is now 10.40 Eastern. We've officially been going for 12 and a half hours on the live stream. Yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of us here going for even longer than that. I mean, we, you know, it doesn't start the moment the live stream starts. But That's true. You look around, you see what we've seen today, and it's definitely worth it. Yeah, super exciting. Gil, if you can hear me. Oh my gosh, look, it's our names. Ricky Willems, Chris DeSico, and Luke Stangle. Wow, incredible. With Very three cool. amigos, I love it. Where are hats? <laughs> I know. We, we need to have Norwalk Havoc friend hats. Yeah. Somewhere out there, yeah. Kyle just has a single teardrop rolling down his cheek. All right. I mean, listen, Kyle could have been here today. All he had to do was just abandon his children like a negligent father, all right? He could have just left them out in the woods and just said, kids, I'm going to be back in about 16 hours. Mm -hmm. You can't fend for yourselves? Well, maybe the robots are better than you. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Or he could have left them in the car, just cracked the window, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, do we have the same rules that, uh, that uh, Motorama and BattleBots have where it expressly forbids children from driving the robots from within the cage on top of the robot? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, okay. that's organic matter inside that's, of the, uh, the cage, all right. Ricky. Oh, Assuming oh, your yeah. children are organic. And liquids. <laughs> There you Lots go. Lots of liquids. <laughs> Lots of liquids. Oh, my God, Chris. Oh, it's getting dark here. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> of, uh, speaking of kids, you know, uh, driving bots, you know, we've got Drew Davis here. He's got his young son. Wow, it's way past his bedtime. He's going to be driving the mini bot here of Bug. Drew is still alive here in the elimination bracket. We can see Dominic Yankaskis here. Let's uh, check in here with Katie. 
Yeah, and, and having the conversation with some of these teams, of course, it's a time of the night where people are really interested in maybe just a hair more time. Think about Jameson Go and some of the repairs that he was going to have to make pretty quick. And talking with these guys, uh, Jack Move said that he feels pretty comfortable with where they were at in the repairs. Meanwhile, Narcissist over here is saying, hey, look, I'm tired. So <laughs> at this point, whatever happens, happens. Let's do this thing. All right. It is nice to see that, uh, you know, that range of engagement for people. Some people have already had their fun. Some people are, yeah. some people are just happy to have been here, won some fights, go yeah. home, they'll build another robot better for next time. Some people are hungry. Yeah. Some people are coming for that gold. Dominic, yeah. got to imagine that's, he's, he's one of those guys. I was talking to Dominic Yankaskis, and he said, you know what I want to do here? Eight, I'm here to win. Seven, I'm not six, here to have fun. Five, I'm not here to make friends. Four, I'm here three, to win. Two, well, All right, let's one. see if he can Narcissus pull it off. can pull it off Robots here. Fight. Oh, good opening uh, hit there on the minibot of Bug. A jack move popping Narcissus in the air. Is Narcissus behind the house box? Yeah, he's hiding, but not intentionally. Big hits there. Oh. Narcissus doing what it does and bouncing wow. around. Drew Davis with Jack Move is winning these early exchanges, popping Narcissist in the air. And Dominic Yankaskis is just cartwheeling inside of this box. He'd love to stay planted to the floor. Has he landed right side up? He has. That weapon is still going. Oh, big sparks flying there. That's a good exchange, but... That's the kind of hit that that wedge on the front of Jack Move is made to take. That, however, Huge hit. the inverted hit, just one lucky one, and it will be upside down and a whole different ball game. Let's see if Narcissus can make it happen. Whoa. Wow. That was a hit so hard that everything went black for just a moment. Narcissus back up uh, on, on its, uh, its back hind legs here. Popping Jack move onto its head. That's what Narcissus wanted right there. Let's see if he can capitalize on it. Looks like he's doing a pretty good job. Tire shot, tire shot, weapon shot. Getting in there and chewing up the drive system. Oh, it's and Drew Davis's weapon is just dragging along the floor. Yeah, if Jack Move can't invert itself soon, this is going to be a foregone conclusion. Oh, and Jack Move is up against the rail. If you look closely, you can see uh, that that wedge on Jack Move is slightly tacoed. Oh, and Drew Davis asking for the unstick. The match is paused. Okay, we're going to pause this match and go in and unstick Jack Move. I think that because of the blistering pace of these fights that some of these house robots have run out of juice. That's my guess. You know, it's possible. And they put in a lot of work over the day. I can't yeah. blame them for being tired. Yeah, we typically have to, uh, to replace the, uh, the batteries at least once a day, you know, in these mm -hmm. things. And we just have not had a second to breathe here in these cages. You know, they've also taken a lot of big hits. Incidentally, damage is not out of the question. Yeah. Now they have unstuck Jack Move, but left Jack Move on its head. This match is back on. Narcissus here is an overcutter. Oh, nope, it's now back to an undercutter. Oh, coming back to do more work. Major with 45 hit. seconds left. But Jack Move back, right side up. Looks like that weapon's working okay. for a Spoke moment. Too soon. Oh, this is a bad spot for Jack Move. It's trying to Jack Move. It is not able to Jack Move. And it oh, takes some hits. big hits from Narcissist. 25 oh. seconds left. Oh, oh no. No. The bottom plate, or top plate is it, on Jack Move completely removed. Wow. It, There's some juicy internals. If Narcissist can get under that robot, just, just one lucky hit is all it will take for another smoke screen, the likes of Jameis and Go. Oh, and Drew Davis just did the lean back. I've seen that move before. His robot's dead, but it's going to uh, get saved by the bell here. Incredible match. This one will go to the judges. Let's take a look at some of these, uh, these highlights here. Good round of applause from the audience. Wow.
Early in this match, Narcissus spent a lot of time cartwheeling around, and it looked like Drew Davis was in complete control. This was an incredibly punishing match for these two robots. However, I will say between the two of them, Narcissus looks like you can just put it right back into the box for its next match against Adrift. All right, uh, judges, we're gonna go pretty fast here. Maybe a round of, uh, of hands, maybe thumbs up for Jack Move. Any thumbs up for Jack Move, okay. How about thumbs up for Narcissist? Oh my gosh, it's four thumbs up. Narcissist takes it, unanimous judge's decision for Dominic Yankaskis, which remain, who remains alive in the elimination bracket. Mm -hmm. As you said, here to win, and he has a pretty good shot at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, like Dominic Yankaskis has that kind of warrior spirit. You know, he uh, takes this sport very seriously. He drives here from Indiana. And it's like a two-day trip to come here. He loads up his truck and all of his family members. They bring four or five robots to a competition, and he is here to win. I mean, we're seeing great performance from TryHard. We're seeing fantastic performance from Narcissist. This is a team that really is, uh, is focused on getting to the end of the bracket. All right, we're gonna check in with Katie, who is uh, here with the driver of Jack Move. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Now it's been a full it's been a full day. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been a long day for you guys, right? <laughs> but hey, well done to you, to the boys, to the whole family who are out there today. How how proud are you of the family? I'm so proud that they just wanted to fight, and they no matter if uh, it was rough or a difficult competitor, uh, that they kept trying, and they're so eager even after losses just to come back and go again. So I'm just proud of them, proud of my wife for helping, proud of my boys for driving. Uh, they did great. Makes me happy. I can imagine so. And for all the efforts, and for a little fix here and there, that's a send cut, send, send cut save uh, for you. You guys are taking a gift home. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. There you go, man. <laughs> Enjoy and safe travels home. Thanks, guys. All right, Drew Davis, one of my favorite builders. Going home here after going super deep here, 12 hours of fights later, he and his kids are packing up and going home. Yep, that's yeah, true. And, and every time I've spoken with them today, it has been nothing but positivity. It's been nothing but excitement. Yeah. And you know that they're just, you know they're gonna get home. They're gonna meet, go to sleep. They're gonna wake up in the morning and they think, what can we do better next time? And yeah. how soon can we get back to Norwalk? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be surprised if I didn't see Drew another uh, four or five times here at this competition this year. He loves Norwalk Havoc. Mm -hmm. He's made it to the finals, the last two finals in a row. I think it may actually be three. I should check with him on that. I know definitely the last two because I was here for both of them. Mm. And uh, Drew just goes super deep. I, I would be surprised if he didn't qualify two or three robots later this year. Yep. All right, loading into cage two, very exciting. Losers bracket round nine, elimination bracket round nine. William Marchese and Sea Dragons were the plucky little robot from the city, redesigned and facing Jameson Go, the captain of Sawblaze with Silent Spring. Oh, I see a lot of gaffers tape on the back of that robot. It's Silent, tough stuff. Silent oh. Spring uh, survived a intense light low fire in its last match. Looks like we are going to be changing Brett's batteries here. Kids, again, don't try this at home. If you have a Brett, this is uh, one of those things that is pretty delicate. Oh, wow, look, look, the lights came right back on. I want a Brett really badly. You know, you could probably arrange that. Yeah. I think we could. Okay. Maybe I could take one of these home at the end of tonight. I mean, they bite, so careful. <laughs> All right. Elimination bracket round nine. Sea Dragons Roar versus Silent Spring. William Marchese Eight, facing seven, uh, the top-ranked driver five, still alive in four, this bracket. Three, if two, he can pull off a win one, here, it would be a massive five, upset. Five, five, first exchange. Sea Dragon's Roar popped up in the air about two or three feet. Oh, and it looks like the belt is off of Sea Dragon's Roar. Yeah, that weapon is going to be down unless it has redundant belts, and I don't think it does. This is elimination bracket round nine. The loser here will be going home. 
Wow, big hit on Sea Dragon's Roar. But Sea Dragon's Roar's uh, drive is still going. Those wheel guards are working. This is where you see the extra pound and a half or more that that uh, Silent Spring has. Every hit, Sea Dragon's Roar goes flying. Silent Spring stays dead centered. Now, uh, I don't know if you remember, but Pepperidge Farm remembers when Silent Spring used to go bouncing all around inside of the box when it was just a three pounder. Now at five pounds, it remains absolutely planted to the floor and it looks like this may be the end of the road for William. With some pretty aggressive driving from Brett. You can see William uh, working those sticks and that robot is dead. There is your count out. That is the end of the match. Wow. Round of applause for William Marchese. Sea Dragon's Roar. In the off season, he went and he completely redesigned that robot. This is still a relatively new driver. And for him to go nine rounds in the elimination bracket, face Jameson Go and survive for a minute? Yeah. Incredible. 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 All right, Thanks. let's take a look here at a recap. We saw some there. huge hits from uh, Jameson Go and Silent Spring. And this was the hit where William died. Here we go. But a face can you can't you help but love. You know? <laughs> Throw your hands up and just say, that's life. Sometimes it be that way. Sometimes it be. All right. Let's uh, check in here with Katie, who's cage side with these two competitors. Yeah, we're going to first kick it off with Sea Dragons, where I feel like William. You put in a whole lot of efforts, but most importantly, you have uh, some family here. What do you got to say to them? Oh, um, well, my mom and dad came here with me to uh, watch. It's their first time at Norwalk, and uh, they've been very supportive. They've been very supportive the whole time. I I've taken over their living room to make this thing, and um, it's been... It's been so much fun. This, this performed so much better than I expected. I'm really happy uh, with how the day has gone. And um, I, I just want to say a uh, shout out to my grandmother, who uh, unfortunately I lost at the beginning of this year. She was very supportive uh, with, with uh, making robots. She's always saying how smart I am and all that jazz. So I uh, love you, Grandma. And um, thank you, everyone, for being so nice. And uh, I'll hopefully be back in April with some sort of a robot. <laughs> And you know, one of the things that stood out to me was your little get ready dance as well as you were uh, in the motion. And so for the fun and the, for the love that you have for your family, Sencat Sen is giving you 50 bucks. And you also had a couple of pieces here that were loose. Thanks to Jameson, go over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, went, he went straight through my titanium wedge. So uh, I might need to rethink this design somehow. Don't know how, but I'll figure it out. Congratulations on the journey here today. Meanwhile, for you, my friend, real quickly, what changes are you going to have to make? I got to figure out who I'm fighting next. Uh, you don't have time to think more than one match ahead, basically. I mean, with cleaning out that fire, it was just, I don't know. It was worse than, I don't know, a smoker's home. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you... you smoker's home, so I don't know what it's like, but... <laughs> it's just, <laughs> he's getting loopy. He feels a little lucky here today. How did you get... <laughs> that smell. You know, yeah. How do, and how does someone do that? How do you turn it around like that? You just have to. <laughs> One step at a time. Jameson should write a book on motivation on how to build robots. This guy always has one-liners in his pocket. Best of luck. We'll see you here in a little bit. I Guys? love it. I feel like everything that Jameson Go says could be turned into a t-shirt. Don't right. you think, Chris? Suboptimal. Suboptimal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What can you do? Just one match at a time. All right, so we have an update here from the production booth. Waddles has forfeited, and uh, Tryhard has advanced to uh, face the winner of the undefeated bracket wow. for 30 pounds for the finals. All right, so it's going to be Dominic Yankaskis. And who is he going to be facing uh, in the finals, Control? And we have one drive. And that's Waddles. There's Team Waddles right waddling their the way up the stairs. <laughs> It's a group of penguins. They have forfeited, but they've gone super deep today. Very excited about that robot. Yeah, frankly, any match that happens this, this late in the day, both the competitors should be proud. Both of them, honestly, everyone here is going to be excited at this point. Well, yeah. they're going to be exhausted, but they're going to be excited tomorrow. 
Yeah. All right, uh, a quick question for Gil or perhaps production. So that final 30 pound match, it's going to be try hard and marathon, Fred Moore. Oh, -ho. okay, wow. Two BattleBots builders mm -hmm. in Dominic Yankaskis and Fred Moore. How surprised are you? I mean, Marathon, is, it's been running here on the East Coast for years. That is a hard hitter. It, it is a legacy robot in a yeah. lot of ways. But Fred knows what he's doing. He's had a lot of time to refine it. It hits hard. And uh, it's really just going to be a question of how much has it endured over the course of today? I mean, you heard him in the last fight. He said, I'm worried about this breaking. I'm worried about this breaking. I'm worried about this breaking. But I'm confident that, you know, positive energy will pull us through. Well, we're in the... We're getting to the final. We're, getting, we're almost there. Yeah. Good energy isn't enough anymore. You're right. going up something that hits, uh, you know, the way Dominic's robot hits. you, you got to be firing on all cylinders. All right. Uh, Marathon, though, is a vertical spinner. So kind of the rock, paper, scissors here, Ricky. Mm -hmm. Favors the vertical, wouldn't you say? <sighs> For a bot like Dominic's, I don't... Dominic, excuse me. I don't think it does. It, because, it's a, because it's a beater, it doesn't have a wedge on the front, it's a, rather it's a drum. It doesn't have a wedge. It's got these two open sides that could that could take big tanking hits. If, right. if Dominic just goes a little bit to either direction, uh, Fred's gonna have to drive perfect. And Fred's a great driver, Yeah. but it's hard to be perfect. So yeah. uh, we also don't know it's gonna be weapon tip speed, right? So if you have a weapon and uh, one is moving dramatically faster than the other, that's the one that's usually gonna bite first. And that's the one that's gonna come out of exchanges on top. Yeah. And I don't know their weapon tip speeds. I doubt they know each other's weapon tip speeds. We're going to have to see in the box which, which favors which. Both Dominic and Fred, though, are among the best drivers here still alive in the brackets. They both have BattleBots experience, quite a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think that Dominic will be looking for those angles in that fight. Oh, he always is. Dominic always is. Fred always is. I imagine both of them are talking amongst themselves, amongst their teams, and trying to figure out what their edge is going to be. All right, let's check in with Katie, who is uh, cage side with Fred Moore in Marathon. That's right. In fact, uh, when you won the last one, there was a conversation about your glasses, and there was a big question on, does that help? How much dimension does it give you? Looks good. Why? Why the two-tone? Well, listen, we live in a three-dimensional society, and like you like to think that with your average 24-hour time, that there's only so many dimensions. But once you embrace the extra three dimensions, you can start seeing that cube or that time is cubic, and it's actually a 72-hour multi-phase day. It's all on my website, timecube.com. Okay, okay, don't take me away. Again. Okay, well, well, we can check that out first. That was very. <laughs> Thank you for giving us that insight. Um, I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more, in fact. But realistically, let's take it to the cage here. What were those changes? Was it a bit of a thrash and dash, or do you feel pretty comfortable? Um, to the actual robot, we haven't changed all that much after the last fight. I am actually set up to fight uh, Waddles right now. Um, I've got the wedge on. I'd rather not have that on to be fighting tryhard, uh, but I was told that I had to come immediately and I didn't have a single chance. So, eh, better the wrong robot than no robot. There you go. And, of course, that's because Waddles, uh, we just heard, uh, we got news that they are they pulled out. So, in fact, that's what we're up against here over at cage number four. Okay. Now, the strange thing is, if you do realize that uh, the 72nd dimension would have given him the foresight to know that uh, he shouldn't have had the, 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 the wedge configuration on there, uh, you know, I think it disproves that theory. Yeah. I think that website is, is uh, that's, that's a bunch of lies. I think Fred has uh, just convinced me that the Earth is in fact flat, you guys. N not cubic? <laughs> <laughs> the Earth is cubic. There I mean, flat go. on each side, maybe? Oh. Right. How many... Yeah, we're just a cube spinning through the galaxy. Yeah. I love it. All right, uh, let's check in here with Lindsay. All right, so I was just spending some time on timecube.com, but I actually have some things to share from the chat. Uh, so I asked folks who they thought was going to win at this point. I know we still have a number of matches to go, but who they thought the front runner was going to be. And I got answers that ranged from Silk to Stoneforge to Silent Spring to Narcissist. We even got a Lynx in there. You know, Lynx isn't competing, but he never counted out. And, uh, it's pretty durable. But I think, like, the there is no consensus. This really could be anybody's game to win in the three-pound tournament at this point, and I think that that's pretty exciting. Yeah. 
Your thoughts here, uh, who, who do you think uh, among the, uh, the last bit of uh, you know, our, our, our final three pounders? Who's looking good, Ricky? I, you know, we've got the cream of the cream left. Yeah. The cream of the crop, top of the top, yeah. both in driving skill and robot skill. To me, it's going to come down to who has survived the best. What? Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. We have to wait and examine this creature that's found its way into the facilities. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This um, is a... Um, huh. It's a strangely shaped goose here. Uh, does it come in peace? <laughs> it... Is, is that feedback over the microphone system, or is that thing trying to communicate telepath? I. This is the mating call of the swan, Chris. Is that a, is that a swan? <laughs> it's a uh, it's a very strangely shaped swan here, Chris. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> I do. Who built this? Okay. Did they also build the pizza robot? Amazing. I've, I've never seen someone look so nonplussed. Like, did you see the facial expression? You ask it questions and nothing. Wow, incredible. I, I can't read that forth. Uh, All right, let's check in here with Katie. <laughs> yeah, as I'm uh, following Dominic, you can see that Trey Hart is actually in his hand. He's coming around here to cage number four. Now, he was supposed to come on out here because we know that about what happened with Waddles. And we also know that Fred and Marathon has a different weapon that they would prefer. Dominic, on your end, real quick, Describe, uh, describe how you're feeling at this point. I'm tired. It's been a long day. A lot of fights. You know, starting in the loser's bracket early in pretty much every class was uh, not easy to come back from. So <laughs> it's just been a lot of repairing. A lot of go-go. I was looking for that uh, second wind here as uh, he has a couple more battles to go with not only this but also Narcissist. All right. Now here's what's happening here. This is the final match of the 30s. Marathon hasn't lost a match yet here today. If Marathon is able to defeat Tryhard, this is it. Fred Moore will be the winner of 30 pound full combat here for March. Mm. If Dominic Yankaskis is able to uh, win here, we will go into a sudden death rematch where they will have 20 minutes to fix their robots. They will come back and that will be the final match of the 30s. Remember, you need to lose twice here to get fully eliminated. Fred hasn't lost once, so he's gonna have to lose twice in a row if he uh, is gonna be taking home second place. It's interesting here. Fred came back and he said, this isn't the configuration that we want, right? This, yeah. is, this is a different setup. And I, I said briefly, well, you know, it's too bad they don't have a wedge. Turns out they're running a wedge oh, in this fight. Good. Not good. The interesting thing with this wedge is it's too Eight, low seven, for the opponent. Ah. Six, five, so we're going to see if it just gets ripped four, off or what happens, three, but it's going to be two, an explosive one. fight. Fight. Robots fight. Marathon out a little quicker, five. but both robots up to speed. Oh, big hit on the tire. Oh, this is interesting. The, the bot itself, Marathon, I think is just able to get under Tryhard's blade. It's practically perfect size if he hits it just right. Much less so when upside down, though. So this is going to be a battle for Marathon to self-right so I can get that uh, weapon back up to speed. But it's holding its own so far, although I think I see some, some sparks flying from those motors. Marathon is bumping around on its head. That weapon is dragging along the ground. Try hard, though. Looks fully Ooh. operational. The weapon? No, the weapon on Marathon is back up and running. Oh, here we and go. And we're back. -righted. This, is a, this is anyone's game again. You notice it looks like Tryhard not putting that weapon full blast. It wants multiple hits on its opponent. Marathon kicking in and out in its weapon. So we'll see how the durability holds up. Whoa! Ricky, the weapon on Marathon is down. Yes, it is again. We have a, a wheel on Tryhard that's looking a little askew. That right hand wheel doesn't look right, Chris. It doesn't even look hand. <laughs> 90 seconds left here in this fight. Dominic Yankaskis uh, eager to uh, score a knockout here. He would love not to take it to the judges. 
you know, it'll be interesting after this fight. Oh, I hear some uh, struggling motors. That is the weapon going down on Tryhard. Sounds. Yes. Oh, it's coming back. But that is a struggling motor. It does not have a lot of life left. Minute left. seconds that. left. Marathon stays on. It probably has what it's. Oh. And Tryhard stuck against the wall. This could be wow. it. Wow. Fred Moore dancing in, in delight here. This is a tap out from Tryhard. My they goodness, are the winners. Winner. Marathon and Fred Moore. Round of applause. 30 pound full combat winner for March. Fred Moore earning $1,000 in cash and the golden dumpster and an automatic invitation to the finals in December. I'm just gonna go ahead now and take back what I said about the uh, the fourth dimensional stuff. Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna, if he's got like a thing that I can subscribe to, I'm probably gonna just go ahead and do that. Listen, I'm you can't argue with results, right? <laughs> and, and talk about results. This wasn't the fight I think Fred wanted, but look, he stayed on his opponent the entire time. He wore him down. He kept his his systems running at least enough to do the job, and and that victory is earned. I don't know what that little pelvic thrust was at the end, a little hop, but whatever it was, he earned it because that came together just beautifully. All right, congratulations to Fred Moore and Marathon, winner of the 30-pound full combat uh, division here. This is going to be our first golden dumpster that we're going to hand out today. Now, Tryhard is going to go home with $400 cash and an invitation to the December finals. I mean, nothing to sneeze at. Let's yeah, be, let's fantastic. Be honest yeah. All right. Okay. Now, uh, your thoughts on that fight. I mean, we saw huge hits from both of these robots. True. You know, these are two of the hardest hitters uh, in the competition here today in this weight class. Kind of funny, though, that, that they, uh, they eliminated Ripperoni and they eliminated Depth Charge earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it could have been those two. Well, remember, those are heavy hitter robots. And yeah. heavy hitter robots, are they're apt to do the same damage uh, to their themselves that they do to their opponents. So there's a reason that you tend to see failures early on. Now, let's, let's go here. We have sitting in front of Luke, this an amazing is trophy. Truly. The, uh, this is the golden dumpster here for March. Fred, come on in. Bring it in, buddy. Fred, Hi. round of applause for Marathon and Fred Moore. Look at this. Bravo. Uh, how about we put the, uh, the bot right yeah. here on the table? Sharp edges. And it's sharp all around. Everything sharp. All right, uh, here you go. Here's your trophy. I think there's $1,000 cash in there, Fred. Oh, we're going to have to check with Austin. Yeah. yeah, we should check with Austin. <laughs> All right, tell me a little bit more about your uh, undefeated journey here today. What were some of the hardest opponents that you faced? What were some of the most memorable fights? Uh, the hardest, hardest opponent was Try Hard, who tried his hardest. And he tried probably a little harder than I was ready to have tried on me. But we outlasted him, drive was great, kept running into him, kept going, don't give up, never surrender, never say die. All right, round of applause for Fred Moore and Marathon, incredible. Fred, anything that you wanna to say to your fans before we let you go? I have fans. Heck yeah. What? What? You just won 30 pound full combat, man. <laughs> I, I, I do know that there are fans out there, all four of you, um, you've been going for this robot since 2018. It's on the same frame. It's the original drum. It's a lot of dreams from a long time ago. It's been a big journey, but hey, we finally made it. Thank all four of you so much. Thank my team, Brandon Zelensky, Anna Zolnikov. Uh, I'm losing my voice. Sarah Peretsky, Amanda Fowler. Uh, yeah, it's been a really omega time here. Omega, yeah, the mysterious. This is not a cult, right? You know, I do. It's not a cult. I do <laughs> notice, you know, this, this symbology on your robot. Pure coincidence. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cease your investigations. Omega is not a cult, Ricky. Oh, all right. Omega is not a cult. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Fred. Congratulations again for winning. Let's uh, kick it over here to Lindsay. 
All right, so we have a lot of congratulations in the chat for Marathon. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out was Chris Caps, who was um, competing earlier this this uh, tournament today. He was pitting next to Marathon, and he is just so happy for them because he said they were really cool to sit next to. They were a great team. He's really happy for them to win. Uh, and then, you know, Fred, you said you didn't have fans. That's just not true. Several people in this chat are saying, what are you, what are you talking about? We are all your fans. And there's just been an outpouring of love. So Marathon has a lot of support behind it. And uh, we're all so, so happy for you, as are all the fans. Marathon went undefeated here today, taking home the 30-pound uh, full combat trophy. And uh, $1,000 cash, not bad. Well, maybe. We'll see if they can, you know, fill up that dumpster later. Yeah, I think Austin's good I, for I it. I think he's good for it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Put Just no, an but, IOU inside of it. Yeah. yeah. I will say I'm a little concerned that the uh, golden dumpster is shrinking in size in 2022. Well, you is know. this shrinkflation? Uh, yeah, I, you can only buy so much gold for that many dollars now. <laughs> that's right. That's yes. just the way the world works. Yeah, I think that's about $1,000 worth uh, of yeah, We're lucky the golden dumpster isn't filled with gasoline. It would be just a thimble. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Great. Um, now, let's see. I see us. We are working inside of these boxes, but uh, they're looking a little bit empty. Maybe, uh, maybe we can take another look here at a replay of the 30-pound finals. Look at that hit. That, that is one of the first big hits where it seems like you know, uh, not a cult Team Omega Marathon starts to do its, really starts to do its damage. And you could hear towards the end of the match, you could hear what was happening in the robot. I don't know if the folks at home can hear it or not, but this kind of grinding, chainy, rubbing noise. And that's, that's those big hits coming back to haunt them. Uh, not just from this fight, granted. You know, we gotta give, we gotta give Dominic his due. He's been fighting all day. Yeah. Probably those components have been in there since the beginning of the day, or at least yeah. some of them. Yeah. So it's that war of attrition I talked about before, and, and it comes down to every fight, really. It's not even a matter of uh, the finals. Halfway through, you're battling the fact that they've, they've experienced these shock and load and hits and accelerations. It's, it's unbelievable the forces that these things have to endure. They're also fighting this war of attrition on multiple fronts. You, you know, the, the family has so many bots, like, already competing that, like, your time and energy uh, and, you know, the just the amount of thought that you can put into the bot has to get divided uh, amongst... You know, uh, you know, more than one bot. It's just, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna weigh on you even more. Yeah. The Ancaskis family is loading into cage three. This is Narcissist versus Adrift losers bracket round nine. Dominic Yankaskis, fresh off of his second place win for the 30s. We are going to check in here with Katie, who is standing cage side <laughs> with Dominic. Here's the thing. I've asked Dominic four times how he's feeling. We're gonna give it a go another time. How you feeling now? Uh, even more tired than last time, even though it's only been a few minutes. So. Yeah, taking taking uh, that battle and, and kind of, if you could rethink it a little bit, how would you describe it with, uh, with Marathon? I thought I was doing pretty good, but then I ended up losing uh, drive motors. Maybe I sheared my mounts on the other side, but the weapon was still good. But I just tapped because there was no point. I couldn't move anymore, so. How satisfied are you with that second? I mean, I came back from a, you know, a loss and early on, so it's always good to come back from behind, but I wouldn't have been able to beat him twice anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. Okay, like moving, moving forward now, we have Narcissist. How do you switch gears into foco focusing for that? Well, luckily they're both horizontal spinners, so it's pretty straightforward as far as uh, what I have to do to control it, but uh, Narcissist is a little wild, so I just have to, I don't know. Try and get through it <laughs> some way or another. <laughs> Try and get through it. Again, we're going to ask him again later how he's feeling. He's probably going to be tired, but man, I don't blame him. It's a long day, huh, Lizzie? Yeah, it's a long day. I uh, can't deny that, uh, but... You know, regardless, the Super Chats are still coming in. People are still sending them in, so thank you for those. This one is from uh, uh, Steel Central. They say, Brett Plushy, pin the idea. I mean, that is a supreme piece of merch if we could figure out how to do it. Uh, you know, if you can't have a real Brett, go for a plushie. Why not? 
Now, why can't we have a real Brett? I want to have a real Brett. I've already encouraged you. you. You know, no one's gonna be watching at the end of the day. Just, you know, watch your <laughs> That's fingers. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna carry this one back to my hotel. But, I mean, you probably can't just stuff it in your jacket and go. I will warn you. <laughs> All right, we're loaded into cage three. Narcissist versus Adrift. We just heard from Dominic. He's very tired. It's 11:15 Eastern here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Elimination bracket round nine. The kids are up way past their bedtime. And uh, we're going to see if Dominic and Narcissus can defeat Adrift here and uh, get closer, one step closer to escaping that elimination bracket. Facing Adrift, which has had an absolutely dominant day. Adrift run by Carter Benninghoff from uh, both Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. I don't know how you can live in two places at once, but that's what it says here in my notes. An absolutely punishing horizontal spinner against the undercutter of Narcissist. All right. It looks like they're trying to uh, figure out what's next here in this. They're making an adjustment here inside of the box. Fantastic. Elimination bracket round nine. This is a do or die moment for these two robots. The loser here will be going home. I don't think that it's enough for them to qualify. I'd have to check inside of the brackets. We're very close to that cusp. Yeah. Yes. Eight, we're we're seven, close, but I don't think six, we're quite there. Five. She's amazing. Four, 154 three, fights in. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right. Narcissist and Adrift spinning oh, up. Oh, 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 oh. That was a big hit from Narcissist on a drift. All right, there's your answer. Winner fights Silent Spring next in the elimination bracket. Narcissist pushed up against the rail. This is maybe the first time I've seen that weapon go down today. Really some amazing physics compared to some of the other uh, exchanges that Narcissist has had to have. I don't know that it's faced another horizontal spinner undercutter like this that, that poses that kind of threat. I think that's where it's, it's struggling right now. You can see those blue wheels of Narcissist being peeled away. The weapon is down on Narcissist. Ooh. It looks like he's been popped up onto his nose. Oh, and Narcissist is looking very sad. Two minutes left in the match. Drift looking to cast away Narcissus. Good reference. A seafaring reference, Ricky. At 11.15 at night, I love it. A drift with these huge concussive hits, throwing a drift across the box. A drift would love to continue to eat into these wheels. But Dominic Yankaskis has built a very tough little robot. 90 seconds left here in this fight. Big hits here from Adrift. Now, do my ears deceive me, or is Adrift's weapon slowing down? It may well be, but it does still seem to be powered. Oh, and look oh. at that. Ricky, there I called go. it. You I did. called it, Ricky. You truly did. With 60 seconds left, the weapon on Adrift has slowed to a stop. Oh, and Narcissist is still mobile-ish. It got Bumping think it around on its head. My look, look at that. That mobility might not be great, but this is enough to keep it in the match if it needs to be. Is it enough to get control points? Is it enough to get aggression? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see how it goes. Dominic Yankaskis did not give up. A drift looks like it could be dead. 25 seconds left. Will the ref count them out? This would be incredible turn of events. Yeah, is it? Oh! Knockout. Is that a knockout? It is! Narcissist advances in the elimination bracket. Incredible! What? Dominic Yankaskis never gave up, did not surrender, didn't tap out. 
That robot looked so sad there at the end. I cannot believe that he's done it. No, he really has, though. And, and it's that continuous just, you know, passion to compete that has brought him through here. You do have to ask yourself, nautical-themed robot like a drift loses. Think they're a little salty? <laughs> Ricky, okay. Ricky, this is great. He How really, he really keeps his have? jokes current. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, let's go here into a replay. We saw this uh, this this <laughs> little miniature mini bot go rocketing into the ceiling, and uh, these early exchanges really did not go narcissist's way. Almost nearly no. immediately peeling off part of that rubber wheel. Then, however, you know, the fight continues, it starts to do some damage to that main weapon, and you can see the tides changing. The drift continued to engage. They wanted to stay aggressive, but at some point their weapon died, and then their drive died. It's, it's interesting that this was kind of the, uh, the mirror image of that last 30-pound uh, match that we saw, it's right? It's true. Oh, wow, that is true. Yeah, there's, there's uh, a lot to be said for the, the symmetry there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, now it looks like uh, we are going to next to Katie, mm -hmm. who is uh, standing cage side with the driver of a drift. Yeah, that's right, it's Carter. And uh, Carter, you've had an up and down day overall, but how would you describe it from a, a scale of one to 10? Uh, I would say it's about an eight, probably the best we've ever done. Come to two events before uh, July and September last year. I think we went three and two in both. Had some lucky wins, but a lot of issues. Well, and you worked through a few today. I remember you working on the your your weapon and everything else, and then it came to that battle at the very end, and it's hard fought. What happened? Uh, the battery ran out. Yeah, we'd use different uh, drive motors, and I guess we found out that they draw a little bit more current. <laughs> than expected. <laughs> it's the little things that you learn. And in this process, we want to give you uh, a, a parting gift, if you will. And, a, and an 8 out of 10, I'd say it's pretty good. Here is a uh, send it full, send, cut, send. Uh, and you're going to take that home, and you're going to be able to fix your bot and uh, do even more with it. Thank you. <laughs> All you go. right. Guys? Great work, Carter. Fantastic. You can see really that improvement of the robot. Yeah. You know, coming back, this is his third competition, went super deep into, uh, into the bracket. And uh, yeah, fighting 10 matches here today. Really intense. And Incredible. I, yeah, uh, in, in no way is this any kind of slight, but you can see the exhaustion at a certain point. You can, yeah. you can see, but at the same time, you can see a little bit of the relief when the, when the journey is over. And yeah. you can obviously see the pride because that, what an incredible run. Yeah. Combat Robotics is a war of attrition, and you need to remain mentally focused in the pits. Now, we've talked to people before who say, you know, I put my robot back together, and I pinched a wire. Yes, yes, and, this uh, happens a lot. And, and because I wasn't mentally focused, mm -hmm. you know, like, my, I put my robot in the box, and it was dead right there, just uh, wouldn't even turn on. Yeah. And, uh, it, and it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of wild that uh, he had 2 minutes and 50 seconds worth of battery, and, uh, you know... Uh, Narcissus was able to stay alive the, the, entol the entire three minutes. You know, if you have a well-designed robot and you've done your homework, you've done your math, you don't put more than three minutes and, you know, ten seconds of, yeah. of, of juice in your robot because yeah. if you do, you've wasted something. You yeah. could have put that into weapon. You could have put that into something yeah. else. Uh, and I All think right, we're going to uh, go to break here, and we can talk a little more about the details later, but look at that Norwalk skyline.
For laser cut parts in metal, wood, plastic, or composites, check out Send Cut Send. No minimum quantities, free design feedback, and instant quotes, all made here in the USA with free shipping. Scan the QR code on your screen to get started. Thanks so much, Send Cut Send, for sponsoring us mm -hmm. for March Norwalk Havoc. All right, I can see loaded into box four is Demi Gorgon. I think that Brandon Bennett Young is waiting for his opponent. So we're gonna hang out here a little bit. Ricky Willems, Mammoth Captain Ricky Willems, love it. Joined here by Chris DeSico and myself, Luke. Wow, okay, great. Uh, Ricky, this is, uh, let's see, <laughs> the last time you were here at Norwalk Havoc, we were in a completely different building. Yeah, last time I was here at Norwalk Havoc, I wasn't here at Norwalk Havoc. I yeah. was there at Norwalk Havoc. That's true. Yeah. You were a judge, though, virtually one time. That's true. That's true. I've been here in spirit and in, uh, in voice, but... Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's hard to really kind of, like, capture the scale of this if you haven't seen it in person. It's pretty wild. Back at 50 Day Street, when we were all kind of crowding around a single one of these cages, mm -hmm. there were no stanchions. The, uh, the, the, like, people just stood around there eating Cheez-Its and, uh, you know, watching these fights. There was no separation between the audience and the builders. The pits were right here. You could walk into the pits. Uh, it was just a much, much smaller event. There were a dozen robots, maybe 20 robots. And, uh, you know, you brought your robot baby shoes I did, to yes. the competition. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to check in here with Katie, who's cage side uh, in, uh, here at cage four. Yeah, and actually talking with Brandon about Demigorgon and uh, your, your overall uh, evaluation of it. So Demigorgon's already half dead going into this fight because uh, in its fight against Kaleidoscope and uh, Fire, Firefly, Firebug, I forget which, basically each of those big impacts was ripping the pinions off of the drive motors. So I went through two of them now in the past fight, and it's the third one. The third one's already like fried because it was fought back last year, like early last year. So it's in there, it can like twitch. It's only like one wheel and just the weapon. So the weapon's gonna carry this whole robot. So we're gonna see how long that can last against Minimizer. All right, well, best of luck out there. I love the little story heading into that one though, guys. Yeah. It's exciting. Ah, baby shoes. So uh, baby shoes was it's like a basically like a prototype of mammoth. Would yes. you say? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, it was the thing that started it all for for my rotary lifter career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a really exciting robot. When are we going to see baby shoes again? You know, you almost saw baby shoes today. Wow. I had planned to bring. Oh, wow. um, I had print. Well, I had planned to bring two robots today. There's uh, evolutions uh, that. Not exactly like baby shoes, but uh, bloody shoes and moccasin, which was going to be the 30-pound uh, version of this robot. Uh, we'll see. That might be it might be next event. Might be the event after. But uh, I've I've had a lot of people asking me to come and um, you know help on uh, both Mike and judging and everything else. Yeah. And and frankly, you know now's the time. Yeah. It, it's so many cool things are happening. Uh, I know Norwalk is, is in it for the long haul, so I'm going to be able to come here and compete, and I'm going to have a blast with that, but I, I want to hang out with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> this, this, this is fun. fun. Yeah, this is pretty great. All right, uh, loading here into the box, we've got Brandon Bennett Young and Demi Gorgon, and uh, over here we've got Minimizer. Minimizer, this very strange and uh, very cool robot from Sean Becker from Fairfax, Virginia. Sean is a uh, systems engineering undergrad student at George Mason University, and he's built a very interestingly shaped robot here. Am I, am I crazy, or was Minimizer an undercutter in the back before, and now it is an overcutter? Uh, it has, in at least some of its fight, been, ah. been an overcutter. So uh, it may be configurable, but that is, is not the first time we have seen it as an overcutter. I will say, interesting call out here, there is a strong Maryland-Virginia rivalry. So... Oh. You know, Eight, this is Battle of the seven, Beltway. Yeah. Six, okay, good. Five, a little bit of regional four, pride here three, on the line as well. It, two, it might just end in, one, uh, in, five, in traffic. Robots, <laughs> <laughs> it always does. Uh, fight right off the, hit right off the bat there. And it looks like the weapon on Minimizer is dead. Brandon Bennett Young coming in to capitalize. Elimination bracket round five here for 12 pounds more combat. Incredible mobility for, for the level of drive left in that system. Now, as we learned earlier, the, uh, oh, the sides of that is Minimizer going now. here. Oh, you're right, Chris. The weapon on Minimizer is back. Oh, 
Now, what we're seeing like we here were these big wide arcs from Minimizer before, trying to eat at the wheels of Demi Gorgon. And it looks like Demi Gorgon has a has a locked up wheel. Yeah. Well, that's that's what they warned us about. Is the fact one of those drive sides is going to have trouble. But Brandon, being the driver he is can really do a good job on just a single wheel and the weapon. However, if either of those go down, he is in massive trouble. Minimizer, on the other hand, two wheels, weapon, has a real shot, you know, a real extra life, if you will. That's true. Minimizer, one of the great things about Minimizer is that it keeps its weapon safe, and it, it decides when it's going to come around, swing around and try and hit one of these wheels. Demi Gorgon with its kind of sluggish driving. Trying to figure out a good strategy here. If they can get around to the side of Minimizer, they may be able to cut through the body. Oh, that wheel on Demi Gorgon has started to uh, get a little chewed up. Given its already altered mobility, it's gonna be a major hurdle if he's not careful. Oh, oh and there's side chunks. Of the drive is down on Demi Gorgon. Oh no, you're right, Ricky. There's chunks coming out of the wheel. Oh, oh. perfect hit from Minimizer. Not quite enough to disable Demi Gorgon, but it's close. This is the time with 50 seconds left to come in and finish the job, Minimizer. Minimizer has been doing a fantastic job of being conservative of when it's time to attack make sure that it's still protecting those wheels, protecting the sides. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it. Is that it? Tap out. Wow! Oh, the kill shot! Out. Incredible. Your winner is Minimizer. Sean Becker advances here and will be facing Carmen, 12 pound full combat. I love this bot. I love this bot. This is yeah. a great bot. All right, let's take a quick replay here. Look at that, look at that driving. The drifting in the beginning is fantastic, but it's just not enough to overcome the fact that one good hit to that wheel is the beginning of the end. The thinking behind Minimizer is just brilliant. I love this, these wide arcs coming around to uh, attack the back of the robot. You've got to wonder if something like this will be successful at every weight class. Could you scale this up to 30? Could you scale this up to 60? 120, 250? What do you think, Ricky? I think the beauty is, is that they're finding that out right now without yeah. having to do that first. And that's, that's, what a, uh, that's what a clever competitor is going to do. They're going to probably do another, you know, maybe they do one, two more additions in the 12-pound region, or 12-pound uh, space. Yeah. Maybe they do one more addition in the 12, and then they start in the 30 then. Yeah. They work their way up, and they find out. It sure looks like it would work. Certainly, if I was that builder, I would say, well, I have enough evidence to go to the next level. Yeah. Get to the next level. If it goes well, you build from there. Not everything scales. I mean, part availability. There's, there's all sorts of things that go into it, but... From all, from all accounts, there, there's a real, you know, there's some legs here. Yeah. Let's uh, go over to Katie. She is uh, going to check in here with Sean, uh, okay. the winner of that last match. All right. We're right now doing the math on where exactly uh, Minimizer is lined up right now. But, Sean, what was the strategy in that, especially knowing what you were up against with the Megorgon? Yeah, so kind of the strategy, as always, with Thagomize is just use that weapon. That, sorry, use the wedge, slow down his weapon as fast, as much as we can. And then we end up getting a good shot on one of his back right wheels. And you can see, if you look back at him, you can see he starts, he changes his driving style to always keep his back tire, his, his alive tire away from our weapon. And so it was a really close game because I'm trying to get to the other side and he's, it was a, it was a very tactile game because we we're trying to get closer and always reach around, but he, know, he knew as we were doing that. So um, ended up, we ended up getting around there and sliced his tire off. And that's exactly what Thagomize is designed to do. And what condition is Minimizer in right now? Um, not the best, honestly. We did not expect to go this deep into the bracket, so we are on pretty much the last of every single one of our parts at the moment. But I don't think we took too much damage in that fight, so uh, as long as we don't get hit, we should be doing well. All right, quick reset here for you guys. Congratulations on that win. Lindsay, what do you got? 
All right, so I have a super chat here from a viewer who has been with us, I think nearly all day long, Aaron R, who says, thank you for the great entertainment and dedication to the sport. So, I mean, thanks to everyone back at them for, for sticking with us literally almost all day, so many of them. Um, but one question that I keep seeing pop up in the chat over and over is how do you qualify in a qualifying event like this for the December finals? What is the cutoff? How, how do you make it in? Fantastic question, Lindsay. Uh, to qualify here, you need to finish in the top four. Now, because this is the first event of the year, we're going to take the top four, uh, one, two, three, and four, just in that order. Now, for our next event, we may have a returning uh, champion, someone who already qualified. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we would take the fifth person or maybe the sixth person, right? By the time that we get to the end, when we're looking at November, we might have eight or nine people who have already qualified and they finish at the top of the bracket. And then we're taking like number 10, number 11, number 12 to, uh, to get into the finals. You basically have to uh, be among the top four that have not qualified yet. Mm -hmm. uh, now, to go to December is a really big deal. Uh, this is really the, the best bots from across the continent. Uh, we've had robots uh, really here from Mexico that, uh, that have qualified for December. And uh, I, I've heard that we're going to be getting some European competitors here at Norwalk Havoc later this year. And we've had Canadians as well, right? Yes, yeah, that's right, yep. Uh, we keep trying to talk the Canadians to coming down to, uh, to Norwalk, Connecticut. You know, this is really a fantastic uh, competition for them. I think a lot of people watch this show at home and they wonder, do I have what it takes to win? I've got a robot that wins in my region. Mm. I'm, a, I've got, I'm a Florida bot builder, right? Like Florida Poly, these, these kids. Or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the number one beetle weight in Canada. You know, can I come down and face Jameson Go? I wonder what's gonna happen. That's one of the really cool things about this con competition because you are going to test yourself against the very best builders on the planet. All right, a good shot here of the control room. These are all the people who oh, make look it at those happen. Happy, happy folks. Look at this. After this uh, broadcast, we're going to be launching uh, this, uh, the, the next, uh, I think, uh, heavy rocket, I think, for NASA. This is incredible. <laughs> that room alone has gone through 400 pots of coffee today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who uh, make this, this show happen. You know, I was, uh, I was reflecting on that when I saw our, our kind of like morning production call. Mm -hmm. There were so many people there in that room, and they all have, you know, really important jobs. We had so many camera operators here, so many referees, cage managers, people helping run the, uh, the brackets and keeping people on track, and um, everybody back there in the production uh, room doing such a fantastic job. Yeah, and, and not just the effort they put in, but the talent they bring to the table is just incredible. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Now, uh, this is the, uh, the, the time of the night where uh, we have these kind of longer stretches where uh, we, are, we are waiting for the, uh, the builders in the pits upstairs mm -hmm. to, uh, to fix their robots. The uh, intimate moments. Yeah, I can love happen it. now. Ricky, this is fantastic. Right, right. We're here together. Let's, uh, let's check in here with Katie. <laughs> I like that the intimate moments here can happen. And so I decided to climb up in here to cage number four and just kind of, kind of take a look at what we have. And the floor is completely beat up, as you guys can see. Um, we've laid down some extra care here. And I don't actually even know all the terminology of what Ed and the team have done, but I can assure you that glass is all protected and secure as well. Now, one idea that I just had was, why don't we do something called Katie's Call? And right now we can go you know, to you gentlemen here in the booth and uh, kind of talk a little bit about what your favorite moment of today was. For me, I really enjoyed, just to kick things off, I, I really enjoyed the fact that there's a lot of joy, right? There was a lot of surprises. I think about Milk Tank. I think about the Penguin and Joe over there. And there's just a lot of really cool moments that happened. Um, and that's what my takeaway is so far for today. What about you guys? Oh, I love that answer about joy. You know, like, this is a really joyful sport, wouldn't you say, Ricky? Absolutely. And personally, I, it's, there's so many family moments that yeah. happened today. And, yeah. and, you know, I don't want to get too, too mushy-mushy, but it is the intimate moment time, as we said. Uh, there's, there's family showing up, competing together, and we've seen so many, and, 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 and some going deep. I mean, you know, the Yukaskis is... Um, yeah, that that 
that's always cool to see, bringing your kids along for that ride. But, yeah. you know, we've had competitors talking about uh, Dearly Departed and, you know, folks that, that brought them to where they are. I know that's something that I would not be, you know, where I am in life or, or in combat robotics if I didn't have supportive people around me and supportive family and, yeah. and people that got me started in this. And it, uh, it just brings you some sense of, uh, we're here for more than just this, even though this, just this is amazing. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a history that brings us here and, and makes it all that much more fulfilling. Yeah. This is a very wholesome sport. It's a very supportive community. Mm -hmm. You can see that upstairs in the pits. There's competitors, there's rivals, you know, who are helping one another. You may be facing your rival and they need help in the box because they are running out of time. You will go over there and help them get into the box, even though you might be destroyed by that person, <laughs> yeah. you know, in like five minutes. There, there are very few competitors here that would ever want to face someone else when that someone else is below, you know, the best they can be. Yeah. And if if helping them can can make for a better match, a better fight, for uh, a better friendship after the fights are over, they're gonna do it. I mean, that's that is the crux of why almost everyone is here. Yeah. I mean, we uh, we we love to see things explode. We love to see fire. We love to you know try new ideas. But really, it's it's people and it's sport and it's excitement and it's ingenuity and creativity and curiosity. And it. if you can check all of those boxes, then, you know, everything else that comes along with it is just gravy. Yeah. It's a wholesome sport with flamethrowers. How often do you get that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's what makes, the, you know, so much of the magic yeah. is you can have, uh, you can look at this as, as violence in a way, and yeah. that doesn't seem wholesome. But yeah. you can also look at it as, you know, in the same way that you look at, um, you know, wrestling or, or some other sport that, that you might go through that takes discipline and uh, camaraderie and appreciation and um, really come away with, with a, some deeper sense of, of just, you know, pride in what you're doing and, and pleasure for what you have the opportunity to experience. I love it. We went philosophical. Didn't we, though? All right, let's check in here with Lindsay. Lindsay, your thoughts. All right, so I'm going to jump on the wholesome bandwagon. Um, there have been a lot of people in the chat, not just tonight, but over the last year or so, as long as I've been doing this, who I have seen make the transition from person watching casually as a fan, hanging out in the chat, to then building their first bot, reaching out to you know Havoc builders for mentorship and advice, and then competing. And, and one of the, the people that I actually want to point out is, is Chris Caps with, I, I believe his bot was Tiger Claw today. Um, but he was here as, a, as just a viewer, you know, hanging out in the chat, and he went pretty far in the competition today. And there are a number of people that I've seen, you know, comment today who, some of them, this is their first time seeing it, some of them it's not, but who want to maybe take that leap into becoming a builder. Um, and there's just so many ways to do it. You don't have to go and shoot to become number one right away. This is a very accepting sport where you can, you know, experiment and have fun and, and winning is sometimes secondary. So uh, I'm going to uh, throw over to a super chat that we have uh, just to wrap up the wholesomeness. Uh, this is from Irrational. Just wanted to say... Thanks for the fights. And we can't fight if you don't participate. So if this is something that you think appeals to you, just give it a try. It's fun. Amazing. Now, Lindsay, you've told us that uh, you're interested in building a 12-pound sportsman and bringing it here to the oh, competition. Oh. Is that still on the table for 2022? You know, uh, it might be. I'm not very competitive, so I feel like sportsman class is my uh, is my scene because um, I'm interested in the driving aspect. I'm interested in like the strategy, um, but I'm I'm like too afraid of actual spinny spins. So yeah, maybe, maybe we'll figure it out. Um, I I happen to know a 30 pound builder his oh. name is uh chris Disico. Oh. um so i might pick his brain for some knowledge and for some bot parts that we may or may not still have in our basement yeah exactly good chris tell us a little bit more about uh, your your bot building journey you know you you really came storming onto the scene with one of the weirdest robots i've ever seen and uh, people are still asking for it in the chat i saw a, a super chat earlier asking uh, where is dark side so uh, where is it, Chris? Darkseid uh, does actually still live in my basement um, and uh, has 
well, it's, it's, it's dry. It's well lit. It's got lots of tools and shrapnel everywhere. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a, a, a reemergence uh, from, uh, from the depths of my basement at some point this year uh, with an all-new drive system, all-new weapon. Should be pretty crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, we're not going to reveal your secret here live in front of hundreds of people on the live stream, but I do think that Ricky would love this idea, you know? Oh. Because I'll tell you, new Dark Side is even bigger than it was before, and Dark Side was already pretty big. That's true, and we have to still decide if we're going to be rolling out with uh, a, a new Dark Side or Dark Side Plus One. Oh. In which case, we would be unveiling our, our newest bot, Alternate Side. Oh, mm -hmm. Alternate Side. All right, that's a little, uh, that's a little hint. And it's relevant, I would say. Highly relevant. Yeah. Okay. It's really going to sweep up the competition. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, you've, you've almost revealed the entire thing. I've done nothing, yeah. Luke. <laughs> I've done nothing. Uh, all right, back to, uh, to Katie's question. Did you have a favorite robot so far today? A favorite moment, a favorite fight? Ooh, for me? Let's see here. Hmm. I, I have really enjoyed uh, seeing Silent Springs, you know, return yeah. from the dead. I, I love a good comeback, comeback story. Yeah. A and the consistency of that robot and how it just needed to be perfect every time and its execution and how it worked and, you know, sure enough, it did it. Yeah. Uh, that, I don't know, I have a soft spot for that. But, um, yeah, I, I would say that's probably the, the biggest moment. I've, I've also, I, I've been a marathon fan for a long time. Yeah. So seeing that come to fruition, uh, uh, soft spot there as well. Nice. Okay, Chris, uh, did you have a favorite robot? Favorite moment? Yeah, I had a, I had a few um, favorite moments. Uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, besides the greasy pizza box. Yeah. Oh, forgot about the that. greasy pizza box was pretty nice. Okay. Yeah, liked that. Um, but uh, you know, I've. Let's see. Um, some of the more memorable uh, fights that stood out to me tonight. Obviously, we had a, we had a gigantic burning penguin. Uh, the um, the uh, the emergence from the depths with depth charge, oh, uh, yeah. this absolutely devastating weapon, uh, on top of a, a very unusual locomotion on on wire brush. This this bot was so destructive. It barely required the spin up time uh, to just eat up that plywood floor to shatter the uh, the inner wall of the Lexan uh, box. This thing was absolutely terrifying uh for that moment when it actually struck the box yeah that half of the building went quiet yeah because like we did not know where parts had ended up yeah mm -hmm. um luckily that that half inch uh lexan on the outside of the box is nearly uh indestructible there's here's here's that moment oh what a hit Incredible. Right into the wall. I'm going to take it to my grave. James won this match, showing incredible aggression and control here, bringing his opponent uh, their depth charge into the, uh, the inner Lexan, smashing that inner Lexan. Now, this has already been a big topic of conversation on the internet. You guys are going to see this later to the, uh, tonight when you check into all of the groups. Yeah. There was a little bit of confusion initially about what had actually happened and if anybody was in danger. They were mm. not. Uh, we have an air gap here. We've got an inner panel. We've got an air gap and then an outer panel. And uh, Depth Charge was successful in shattering the inner panel, which um, is, you know, in some ways, you know, it's designed to be shattered. Um, but it did not manage to escape the box. No one was actually in danger. I mean, there were some front row people who were in danger of having a heart attack, but that was, <laughs> that was about it. Yeah, exactly. They weren't going to get hit. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, like, my favorite robot today was Ripperoni. Mm. I just love the theming on the robot. That, that robot was so aggressive. We saw such huge hits, and uh, I'm really hoping that we can see Ripperoni again here at Norwalk later this year. You know, I've, I've talked to the uh, Ripperoni team and seen some of the things that they have in store, and there's some really unique uh, ideas that, aren't, that haven't come to fruition fully yet for Ripperoni. So there's going to be some, especially with the general success that they saw today, you're going to see some neat stuff soon. Nice. Okay. 
Loading into the box here, we've got Jameson Go and Silent Spring with Dominic Gankaskis and Narcissist. We are getting very close to the end of the three pound bracket. These builders are trying to escape the three pound bracket, the elimination bracket, face the winner of the undefeated bracket. Dominic Jankaskis, look how tired he looks. My God, he's even more tired than the last time we saw him. That's generally how it works, Luke. Tired is not a feeling, Dominic. Tired is a state of being. A state of mind. No, it's, it's definitely a state of being. I think we all share that. Mm. Dominic Jankaskis wants to win. I would say that that's the uh, prevailing emotion that he's feeling, this desire for carnage. He wants to rip this robot in half. Yeah, I've known Dominic a while. I think really his two emotions are tired and wants to win. So. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's both. Yeah, yeah. It's, it can be both. It does, or nothing, you know, if, beginning of the day before you get going. But uh, yeah, generally, a little dash of each. All right, so we've got a good, uh, good little fact here from Gil. The winner of this match will fight Silk in the elimination semifinal. The loser will be going home. Just a couple more matches here in the three pound bracket. Jameson Go is uh, going to pull his tool bag out. There's his weapon lock. It looks like we are going to be closing up this box, locking this cage. This match will start here in just a moment. Elimination bracket round 10. These are two of the very best robots here in this Eight, competition. They have seven, survived all the way six, to the end. Five, four, Jameson in three, two, combat stance. One, fight, robots fight. Off they go. This is going to be very interesting. Narcissus has been flying everywhere. Silent Spring has been incredibly stable. This is undercutter versus undercutter here. So the uh, geometry is really favoring weapon-on-weapon -weapon hits. One of the tough things with an undercutter is you want to oh have dear. exposed wheels. What happened? What? That is a tap out. Is that a tap out for Narcissist? Knockout. Tap out. This wow. is a tap out from Injury. Narcissist. Silent Spring advances and will be facing Silk. We're gonna have to go pit side for that. I'm really interested to see what happened. It looked like a pin. I was expecting, you know, an unstick. Yeah, yeah. But Dominic Jankaskis hitting that tap out button very quickly. And that's interesting because in his last match, he really ran it all the way to the very end, even though he was looking like a zombie robot. Mm -hmm. I was expecting him to go the distance here with Silent Spring. So the weapon is off, but we don't know if it's down, as you can see in this replay, but uh, the fact it's not spinning now leads me to believe it probably was out. Interesting. And then nothing. All right, we're going to go to Katie, who's cage side here with Dominic Yankaskis and Narcissist. Yeah, Dominic, a couple of questions here. Everyone's asking, why'd you tap out? Uh, the pulley fell off. We just ran out of time to check everything, and apparently it wasn't tight. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. But overall, a successful day today for you and the family? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we had a lot of comebacks, so uh, I guess you can't complain about that. Everybody helped out and did what, um, you know, we got everything done, so. And the greatest news of all, you get to go to sleep. <laughs> That's right. We're done for today. <laughs> Congratulations to all that you guys accomplished today. Guys. All right. Round of applause for Dominic and Kaskis and Narcissist. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to ask a quick question of Gil and uh, the production team. Uh, has Dominic qualified for the finals? Are we down to the final four Beatles of, uh, of the competition? Gil, you got to answer it. How many robots are left? OK, good. Uh, I, I can now officially confirm that Narcissist and Dominic Yankaskis have qualified for the December finals. They will be coming back here in December. Fantastic work with this robot. Bravo. Round of applause for that.
Now, each of the robots that we're going to see, uh, you know, here in the uh, three pound finals Silk, Silent Spring, and. Hmm, it's the last one. <laughs> They've all qualified. And um, yeah, so, uh, so really, I mean, they are now just fighting for cash and that golden dumpster. That miniature golden dumpster. Yeah, smaller every day. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. All right, now uh, Silent Spring and Jameson Go, he will go back into the pits. He has 20 minutes now to fix his robot. So uh, he is going to get ready for his fight with Silk. Yeah, and you know, he has to feel good coming out of that because you see, how, how long was that match? What did we have, 30 seconds less? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the ideal place to be. And it's gonna give him an edge in the next fight. That's more time to check everything. That's more time to basically, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's. Does he need that advantage? Maybe not. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But I uh, expect to, he'll, he'll use every minute of that 20 minutes to just go over everything and make sure that he's ready for that match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A different builder might say, yeah, I didn't take any, any damage in that. And my battery's basically full. If you bring down Silk, sure, I'll fight it right now. But uh, that's really the kind of experience gap, you know? Jameson Go knows that he needs to go upstairs, take everything apart, mm -hmm. charge up that battery, take a look at everything, uh, and, uh, and get ready for this next fight. All right, we're gonna check in here with Lindsay. All right, I have got a super chat here from John Dorfler, oh. making sure everyone has eaten something today. Uh, and I think that is a reference to maybe their run in December at the finals where, uh, you know, his, uh, his team didn't really uh, even have a chance to take a sip of water. Lindsay, I'm pretty sure uh, that's Joe Dorfler. Joe, I don't know if there's a John Dorfler. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. It's Joe. What Those? I do recall uh, was that we offered the Dorflers donuts uh, maybe 40 times, and yeah. they turned it down every time. So if they were hungry... They looked emaciated there. You know, they had no donuts inside of them. They had low blood sugar going into that final match. And uh, I'm not going to say it's be like that's the reason why Huge lost 12-pound uh, full combat in December. But Didn't it's help. a factor, Joe. You know, you should have been stuffed full of donuts going into that match. I really wanted a Dorfler's Donuts after that. Oh, my gosh. It's Don Dorfler. My goodness, I've been uh, maligning you this entire time. Don, are you well fed? Joe is checking in on you. Uh, no, I have yet to eat dinner. What? Don! Hey, you know, yeah, what's up? Somebody sent Don like uh, <laughs> some food here. My God. Live stream watchers, you know, can you grub hub Don like a pizza? Yeah, Just... we are going to, uh, we're going to drop Don's home address here into the live chat. Mm -hmm. Feel free to oh, just no, no, send no, no, him no, pizzas. Don't do that. <laughs> Wait, you send us your, your W-2. We already have it here on, uh, on file here, Don. Yeah, you can't see. It's, it's scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, so everyone just oh, screen man. cap that. Feel free to send pizzas. Oh, my gosh, there's Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello. My gosh, <laughs> look at this. Joe, bring your brother some food. My goodness. <laughs> He's his own man. He can go do whatever he wants. He is starving, Joe, all right? Hey, at least it's not like December, all right? He's had maybe a couple of drinks of water here and there, Gatorade. At the finals, we had nothing. <laughs> it was just normal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, the Dorfler brothers. You gotta love that. Um, you know, I think that there was some talk about maybe uh, Tony D'Ambrosio making a Dorfler's Donuts t shirt. I want one. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, John? Do you think that uh, you'd licensed your last name for a t shirt here at Norwalk? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like we've got another super chat. Uh, I think that we can go back and check in with Lindsay. We've got another super chat. This is from a name you might recognize. Oh. Kyle Kroos, who says, well done to the whole team. The event looks great, and you folks are absolutely crushing it. Ugh, don't make me say it, Kyle. P.S. Monkey eat banana. God, You're Kyle. supposed to be camping. What are you doing with technology out in the woods, Kyle? Kyle's that watching the live stream there in the woods. His <laughs> kids have already gone to bed. I saw that in the chat. No, that YouTube comment was, you know, sent by smoke signal and carrier pigeon. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. It's a very low bandwidth, but it gets through eventually. He sent that this morning. I refuse to camp anywhere where I don't have at least 4G coverage. If I see the little three, I'm turning around and going mm. straight back home. All right? You know? <laughs> yeah. Ideally... 5G LTE, okay? I, yeah, if I'm gonna I go... want to be able to stream a robot combat event 
in the middle of the woods. More G's, more better. I get it. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Um, Kyle Kroos, my goodness, we've missed you the entire day. And, uh, yeah, I am a slowly dying. I am disintegrating here on the stream, okay? Mm -hmm. What time is it here? It is midnight. Oh, my God, it's exactly midnight. Oh. We've been going officially for... 14 hours? 14 hours. My this goodness. is very cool and very legal. This yeah. is great. This is definitely... This is amazing. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, we should keep doing this. Okay. I think we have a couple more fights left, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, just a few. But, but we're, we're the, we are in the home stretch. I mean, yeah. the people at home, thanks for sticking with us. We, we have been excited. I hope we've been excited, but, uh, but we're almost there. The question is, what can we do you know, to keep them hanging on? Yeah. How can we reward them? Ricky. Yeah. You are not suggesting what I think you're suggesting. Maybe I am. No, stop What it, am I missing? Ricky. Ricky, no. All right, listen, your thumb is too short to compete, okay? I, <laughs> I've got two. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> all right. Oh, this no. This is not happening. No. Oh, well, not no. Happening. If no. you insist that it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to throw it out there uh, to... Uh, <laughs> to the YouTube live crew, uh, we're going to need to raise $150 oh. in Super Chat money mm -hmm. before we, uh, before we, before we <laughs> thumb Before wrestle. we thumb down? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, a midnight, a little after midnight thumb wrestle here. And I'll, I'll throw this out there. If you guys get it up to $500, we'll see them leg wrestle. Yeah, okay, good. I'm wearing shorts, Ricky. I, thankfully, I'm ready to not. show off the, uh, Show up the uh, these powerful legs. Yeah, the gams. Right. That's what they that's what they're here for. Okay, let's uh, let's check in here with Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Ricky, you opened Pandora's box. I mean, he opened Pandora's box. <laughs> I just put it in front of him and said, "No, no, please don't." Yeah, and he he took it, and uh, this the chats have been just scrolling a constant sea of 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 messages, <laughs> OMG yes, thumb wrestle, uh, thumb wrestle, uh, in all caps. Uh, yeah, uh, people, uh, thumb wars with like 12 different A's. People are very excited. This is, I think, why they tune in. The robots are secondary, and the thumb war past midnight is maybe number one. Yeah. Um, and so are you really going to leave these people who have been tuning in from yes. all over the world, yeah. all over the world, Luke, to yeah. see this, and you're going to deny that for them just because maybe you have sweaty thumbs? I have incredibly sweaty thumbs. I have the most disgusting hand here inside of the facility. You do realize this. that that's a, if a I, performance if I put my If I put my hand down on the... Look, you're going to see... A th look, oh, wow. A th look at my hands! Wow. Right? This is I, disgusting. That... We're going to need some wet wipes. <laughs> All right, listen, I know how the internet works. You mm -hmm. can't uh, tell them no. You have to just set the bar higher and higher. So I'm just going to keep doubling the price. Oh, I see. Yeah, so last time it was 75 This time it's 150 mm -hmm. If we're able to raise 150 bucks here, it's going to be $300 next time. Yeah, that, that'll be something. We're just going to keep going. $600, $1,200, mm -hmm. $2,400. $2,400. That's the only way that we can stamp out this terrible behavior. Oh my God, we're already getting super chats. Stop it, guys. Oh my God, Lindsay, what is going on? I'm trying to write them all in our system, but we, we do have two super chats. I don't have the graphics for them yet. One is from Pinfari. Uh, Oh, great. Yeah. Thumb wrestle with depth charge. Okay. I don't recommend that. That's a really bad idea. Uh, Thumb wrestle with humans, not with, like, literally the most destructive 30-pound robot that there's ever been. Um, so, yeah, take that one with a grain of salt. Well, you know, we could go, uh, just to say this for a moment, thumb wrestle, pretty good name for a robot if you want to oh, show up in the 30-pound yeah. league. Yeah. I would watch a robot named Thumb Wrestle. Yeah. Fight Death Charge. It would need to have like a big thumb, kind of like a hand shape, and it just presses down. Yeah. It's I, a crusher. What I want to see is, you know, like it comes, that's that's the on-off switch, and it comes in, and it's thumbs up. Yeah. And then you, you know, you want to kill your opponent, and you just go. Oh. Oh. And that's, that's it. That's, that's what I want. And it's like Caesar themed. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. It looks like we got another super chat here, Lindsay. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, we actually, we have two. So one is from Gary Branham. Uh, who says, I'm in. 
He's all in. He's ready to go. And then we actually have another one from Akron Guy. So Akron Guy literally found out about Norwalk Havoc today through Reddit, seeing the post <laughs> about Depth Charge. Okay. He is not. He doesn't have the history of Thumb Wars here at Norwalk Havoc, and he still donated two dollars. Oh my mm. gosh, Akron Guy! My goodness. Thank you, Akron Guy. And you know, we should say for a second. What does this money go to? Uh, this money goes straight into the pocket of Austin McCord. He needs oh. to recoup his costs. He spent millions of dollars here at Norwalk. Millions Catholic, so. and millions uh, of dollars. It goes to Thumbs Across America, <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the program for underprivileged thumb wrestlers. Uh, really great organization, great people, great thumbs. Yeah, absolutely. That is a non-sketchy 501c3. All right, we've got some activity in the cages. Oh, we, right. We will say that those dollars do go to help, you know, make all of this possible. So, um, yeah. Okay. You know. Sure. We'll say that. <laughs> that goes straight into the uh, gas tank of Austin's Porsche Panamera. Okay. I'm pretty sure that all of his vehicles are electric by now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. Now we're loading into cage three. We've got Silk versus Silent Spring. This is elimination bracket round 11. My God, these two have been going all day long. We've got Christian Cooper from uh, Team Ribot versus Jameson Go, the captain of Sawblaze. All right, uh, let's kick it over to Katie, who's uh, going to queue up this fight for us. Yeah, Christian Cooper over here. It's taking a, a book, a word from uh, Jameson Goh's book, and saying he's about suboptimal. If you can take a look at his uh, robot, he said it's not quite mint condition, but it's going to do. He's a little bit terrified going against Jameson, but that's part of the game at this point. Meanwhile, Jameson Go is saying he's in pretty good condition. He changed the battery, and he's ready to rock and roll. Long day for both of them, so we'll see how this goes down. All right, great. Elimination bracket round 11. These are the semifinals of the elimination bracket. The winner here fights Stoneforge in the finals. And the loser is eliminated. We'll be going home with nothing, no cash at all, Ricky. Hmm. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. <laughs> Good opening exchange. Jameis and Go finding the, uh, the low ground here in this fight. Bits and pieces already coming off of Silk, but still seems to be functioning. Huge hits on the top of Silk. Silk finds itself inverted for most of this match. Would love to gyro itself back onto its feet. Wow, that sound is horrific, Ricky. It truly is. But more sound, good indication that, the, that you're going to continue to have an exciting match. All right, Silk found itself on its feet for just a second. Oh, it's flipped itself back over. One of the problems you're going to see is that wedge on Silk just isn't enough to stand up to, to what Silent Spring is bringing to the table. That's why that inverted position was not so bad. But. It's in this position, it needs to do what it can with what it's got, and it's doing a pretty good job. Worst case scenario, it flips back over, keeps doing what it can. Oh, we're starting to see that wedge really, uh, really kind of getting uh, bent out of shape on Silk. Yeah, that is no longer a straight line or even a crooked line. It's oh, and here come red wheels being sprayed around inside of the box. Jameson go and Silent Spring. Starting to cut through these wheels. Things are getting foamy in the arena, that's for sure. And back right side up, but, oh no, excuse me, it is still upside down. It's just oriented backwards. Less than 90 seconds here in this match. Things are go, taking it straight to Silk. Now there really is no letting up from Silent Spring through this. And why would there? Ooh, another good pin from Silent Spring on Silk. Jameson Go needs to avoid the weapon of Silk. Oh, and it's sounding very quiet in there. Yes, that one, weapon of Silk. One or more of these weapons is down. Definitely Silk. The weapon on Silk is down. Silent Spring seems like it may have turned itself to a you know lower capability here. Smart move. Question is, can Silk move at all? 
All right, with 30 seconds left, we're going to see if the ref will count out Silk. There's a tiny bit of twitching, but I do not think it's going to be right. enough. All right, I think that was, that, was a ta that was a tap out. Oh! That is a tap out. That is Silk. a tap out. Silent Spring will advance and will be facing tap Stoneforge. Out. Incredible. Another small round of applause for yeah. Jameson Go. Does this mean that Jameson Go has indeed escaped the uh, the the elimination bracket? Uh, you know, you never really escape the elimination bracket until you win the whole thing. And he's put himself in as good a spot as he can be. He's he's earned every every spot that he's climbed. But until that final happens, he's not out of the uh, fire. All right, we're going to uh, check in here with Katie, who's cage side with the winner of this match, Jameson Go. Both Jameson Go and actually Silk and Christian Cooper. First, uh, congratulations, you made your way through it. Not probably exactly where you want to end up, huh? I mean, I'm happy to get third. I qualified, so that's a win. Yeah. And you had a couple that you were at hand with today. So balancing the act between the two in the same class. How challenging is that? It was a lot of work. I pretty much had no downtime all day. It was constantly sprinting back and forth, getting one robot ready or the other one, yeah. which is a little stressful, but they both did well, so I'm pretty happy with that. And going up against Jameson there, what do you think he had on you there at the very end? Um, a robot that didn't look like it was thrown in a washing machine. My wedge wasn't even touching the ground at first, so that's not great, but you know, it was good. There's been an ongoing question within chat about eating and making sure people are eating. Did you eat today? Yes, I didn't eat till like six, but I ate. Okay, good. He's one step above a few other people within <laughs> within the circle here. Congratulations, so finishing third. I gotta hang your hat on that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, guys. All right, great job today, Christian. Now, uh, Jameson Go has already scurried away to go back upstairs to the pits and uh, check his o over his entire robot. He's going to have to really take a close look at everything in there. Yeah, he's not going to waste a minute. Yeah, yeah, he dipped out. Yeah. <laughs> he knew that an interview could, uh, could be right around the corner, and I watched him just disappear into the shadows. Yeah. Well, you know, you've seen him with smoke screens today. Yeah. He's <laughs> just, you know, gone. It's yeah. impressive. Exactly. All right, well, we've got another 20-minute break here. Mm -hmm. While Jameson Go... Uh, Really, we're just waiting for JMO to fix his robot. And uh, yeah, we are gonna just hang out here. Lindsay, I see that we've gotten more money from the super chat. This is concerning. Oh. Now, if, if, I, if I was better at math, I'd know like how close we are, but I'm basically mathematically illiterate, Ricky. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, can you tell us what number we're at? Listen, Lindsay can. you know, uh, on a normal day at a normal time of day, I can't add. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after midnight, after a day like this, definitely can't add. However, we do have a lot of super chats, and I can read those to you. Please. Okay. <laughs> so the first one here, we're back to Flurb McGurb. I don't know if you remember him from, I don't know, 12 hours ago with the uh, bunger, bunger, bunger. Well, now we've got uh, bunger, 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 thumb, rassle, please, bunger, bunger, bunger. So still, you know, that makes sense to you. Flirt McGurb. All right, I've just done a, a rough estimate here on the math. I think we're up to 120 bucks. We're this is terrible. Okay, listen, please stop sending in Super Chat money. <laughs> I don't want to do this. No, I would like to go home with all my digits. Ricky, I've seen your hands. You have mechanics hands. Yeah. I have, I have little delicate rider hands, Ricky, okay? I, I don't even work outside with these things. <laughs> no mercy. All I do is just type on little wireless keyboards mm -hmm. all day. That's mm -hmm. it. No, uh, guitar playing, rock climbing, uh, oh mechanic my God. That's all I do. No, no. Yeah, yeah, just, you know. Left swipe your thumb right off. All right, all right. Okay, we are going into cage four. And uh, we can see here Minimizer, Sean Becker from Virginia, facing off against... What the heck is that? Isn't that a good question, Carmen? I think that's Carmen. Yeah, there we go. Where in the world? Oh, good 90s reference there. Good job, Ricky. Thank you. That's why. Good yeah, eye, like sleuths. The, uh, the, the profile there threw me for a second, but that is indeed Carmen. Carmen versus Minimizer. This is 
going to be a very interesting match. Carmen has just been tearing through the competition Eight, today with that seven, very, very mean-looking egg beater. Four, three, two, one. Fight. An interesting fight to be sure. Minimizer. Interesting in that. Uh, struggle a little to get going just for a moment. It's going in the undercutter uh, configuration which we talked about earlier. I yeah. think that's the right move. It needs to, you know, get at those tires and get at that vertical rear armor. Or Minimizer more. Is, uh, is looking very uh, mobile here. Whoa! Oh, huge hit from Carmen on Minimizer. That's the kind of hit that has been struggled to connect on Minimizer all day. The fact that Carmen was able to do it is really something. This is the 12 pound elimination semifinal. The winner will go on to fight in front oh. of for the final. Oh, I and I've seen something coming out of the bottom of Minimizer. It's high centered on a chunk of itself, Pierce. That may be a lipo. That may be a lipo for the motor, for the weapon. Oh, wow. Minimizer uh, yeah. now dragging its guts around on the ground. If Carmen is able to get around to the back and fire up that weapon, we may see a fire here. However, Carmen's weapon, as noted, not going. I'm hearing a count out, Ricky. I think this may be the end. All right, this is the end of the road for Minimizer. Round of applause here what? for oh, yeah, the robot. Yeah, incredible run. run. Knockout. For an, an in, well. Yeah, for a design like that, to see it do this depth of a run is really impressive. Incredible. At, All right, oh, let's, check in, uh, let's check out the replay here. Ooh, that was a good hit from Minimizer on the side of Carmen. However, it's not long until... No, it wasn't that hit. I thought it was that hit there that was the beginning of the end for uh, uh, Minimizer's weapon. But oh, it's all in that there. one giant hit. That was it. There was so much air time there. You can see the front armor got pried up a little bit. That's what enabled yeah. that battery to work its way out in subsequent hits. Man. All right. So I, I guess, though, you know, big shout out to Carmen and, and Carwoman. Um, you know, would be reasonable here. But all right. Uh, Let's check in here with Katie. Yeah, Sandy here with Michael. Uh, who was controlling Carmen, and uh, we were kind of analyzing what you had going. What are some of those fixes you're going to have to make for the finals? Uh, some interesting things happened. I haven't had happen yet. Uh, they got a good hit on the side here, so it split that and uh, broke that pulley. Uh, I run two belts on my weapon, and they kind of twisted, so I'm going to have to check that out. But um, otherwise, I was driving pretty good. Um, if I can get the weapon figured out, um, I think we should be should be in for a good fight with Zach. So. As I was saying, you know exactly who you're up against, huh? What are, the, what are they bringing to the table? Um, a very scary robot. Um, we've been wanting to fight each other for a while, so we were kind of hoping today we'd end up in finals together. So I'm going to do my best to get it back together because I know we've both been looking forward to it. Right on. Congratulations and good luck. All right. Michael Shore is going to go upstairs. He's going to run upstairs. You have 20 minutes, Michael, to get ready for your fight with Pramheda. Mm. Meanwhile, uh, we've got uh, Jameson Go frantically fixing Silent Spring, ready for the finals for the threes. Are you stretching your fingers over there? Is that what I'm seeing right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. All right, let's check in with Lindsay. Oh, he's limbering up. Good news, we got some super chats. This is bad news, Lindsay. No, this is fantastic news. This People is terrible pay good news. money for this good news. All right, so the first super chat is from Send It Robotics. One, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> you know what comes after that. Oh. Troutman, thumbs across America. Oh my God. Yeah, Ross, okay, this was a wholesome one. Ross Pro Cup, such a long day. Our first time watching, we drove up from New Jersey, we stayed until 5 p.m., drove home, and they're still watching the live stream. Love it. They can't wait for next time, and they can't wait for your thumb wrestling. Oh my God. Uh, Art Wall, I've been watching since 7.30 a.m. A thumb war would be the icing on the cake for me. Please do it. You can't deny Art Wall. Uh, Mary Catherine Carr, $50. Oh, Mary, Do no. the thing, Luke Stangle. Wipe off those grimy hands. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. Um, and yeah, Aaron R., who I believe is the one who put us over the edge. One of you will lose the thumb war, but the chat remains undefeated. Ooh. 
Blue That's Puma true. 14, Eddie Friend. Luke, use the thumb. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. So the chat has spoken and they have met your demands and now you will you will uh, pay up to what that you owe them. This is the worst thing I've done all month long. This is terrible. I'm about to lose a thumb war to Mammoth Captain Ricky Willems. I with that level of confidence, yes, you will lose. What you need, you need to get in the moment. You need to get into, you know, into your depth. Okay. Oh dear. All right. Let's. Uh, the let's, folks have started. Let's, the chanting let's, let's has set, begun. Let's set up like a little bit of context here. What, are we doing left hand or right hand? Uh, the, right. I think we have two right-handed individuals. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so let's, I'm going to lay some ground rules. I'm going to lay quick. some ground rules here. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay. First, let's go ahead and just determine uh, yeah. hand weight class. Go ahead. Let's hold those mitts up. Oh, so okay. he's, he's, you know, outclassing me here. This is a weight class above. But I have a tiny thumb, Ricky. Yeah, that's true. I do Look have... Uh... Look how long your thumb is, Ricky. <laughs> that is a freakishly long thumb. Right. I'm okay. seeing, yeah, there's... I see more power in one hand. I see a meatier hand. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of meat Did here. you see how wet my oh, hand was? No, it's, all right, it's literally all right, all right. dripping. All right, all right gentlemen, all right. gentlemen. Okay, there bring, are bring rules. Me, bring We're going to go over this paper rules, towels right? here. Okay. Here you go. Just, this is... Okay. This... All right, I'm going to do a little bit of, of hand sanitizer here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, what do you say, Ricky? You want some of this? Uh, yeah, I, you know I do. Okay, look. Oh, you know, as these two uh, prep and, uh, and slather with hand sanitizer, I think we're going to watch a fight. What? <laughs> Is that Have what I, I heard? Saved? I've been saved. Oh, we're going to go to cage three instead. What? Wait, what's happening? All right, Wait, do control. we have to thumb wrestle in the cage? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh my god. Is that what's gonna happen? Control has called it too early. The cage three Are is Are we all moving the, way the open. thumb wrestle to one of the cages? Control? It looks oh. like cage three may be a spot for action with Jameson Go. Oh. Alright, my hand is now dry, Ricky. Yeah, for the next two and a half seconds. I'm gonna have to just hold it up like this. Yeah. Just all right. Katie, uh, we've got you cage side with Jameson Go. Let's check in. Yeah, my, my, my palms are so sweaty watching you guys wipe your palms off. I can't begin. <laughs> that is just a weird <laughs> thing. How are you at thumb wrestling? Just a, a thumb wars. What's your take? Oh, I don't know. I got weird pinkies, so, you know, whatever. No, that, not, that doesn't have anything to do with thumb wars. Good thing you're about a pinky, pinky war. So, um, moral of it, you are out here. You are ready. You're the first one out. Does that give you confidence uh, within what you got with the bot? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the past few matches, luckily, have been, you know, go in, hit stuff, come back out, and uh, we're able to repair, recharge quickly. It's just been, it's been really good for us. We're hoping to take that momentum all the way through. Yeah, we're hoping for you there. That would be the, the luck of the draw, I think, here for today, if you were to. And for you, on the other hand, how are you feeling? You've had a little bit more time than Jameson to make sure your bot's in good shape. Yep, most definitely. We're just trying to make sure we have the correct config set, and we're ready to go. Man, that is short and sweet and to the point. Let's see some battle here, huh, guys? Okay, now this is the three pound finals. If Jameson Go is able to defeat Stoneforge here, we're going to go into a sudden death rematch, another mm -hmm. 20 minute repair period. If Stoneforge is able to do the impossible and defeat Silent Spring, uh, James Wynn will be taking home the golden dumpster in $1,000 cash. You know, James Wynn has made it through the entire day without defeat. I think he could do it again. Have he, has he faced Silent Spring, though, yet? He hasn't, but here's a question. Who did Silent Spring face when he lost? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's some rock, paper, scissors here. I mean, listen, Jameson Go, this is his 12th fight of the night. He's mm -hmm. faced every single type of uh, weapon that you can imagine. You think that bad luck has worn off by now? I don't know. We'll find out. I guess we're going to see here. This is very exciting. Wow. All right, Stoneforge has had Eight, hours to prepare seven, for this fight. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Match 158 of the undefeated bracket. Round eight, three pound division. Silent Spring and Stoneforge. Oh, and in these early exchanges, uh, neither robot's getting under the other. We are just seeing some weapon-on-weapon -weapon hits. Ooh, that was a good hit onto the side of Stoneforge from Jameson Go and Silent Spring.
no sign of slowing from either one of these robots, oh. except... Wow. There goes the wedge. The wedge on Stoneforge has been stripped away. Silent Spring is now going in. Oh, and that wedge is gone. That is a major development. They are going to go weapon oh. on weapon. A huge hit from Silent Spring on Stoneforge. Without that wedge, it is going to be excruciatingly difficult for Stoneforge to get under Silent Spring and for that weapon to be effective. And it looks like the weapon on Stoneforge is down. Folks, it is only a matter of time and luck at this point. As long as no mistakes are made, it is going to be Jameis' game, but anything can happen. Oh, it looks like that weapon is actually up. It, oh, there you go. I misspoke, Ricky. Just the weapon barely. on Stoneforge is up. It's in bad shape. It's struggling, Bumping but around. it is going. Is that a tap out? I think it I think it might be. Tap out. That is a Stoneforge tap out. Silent Spring has done it. We are going to go into a sudden death rematch here in 20 minutes flat. 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah. Wow. It is crunch time. Yeah, it truly is. And it's you got to wonder, what are they going to bring back to the table? What are they going to do different? All right, uh, let's kick it over here to Katie. She's cage side. Yeah, you had a quick reaction there for that tap out. Why'd you do it? So we wanted to make sure that our robot was in tip top condition. Since we are in the winners, since we are the winner uh, of the winners bracket, we want to make sure that we have a good opportunity for the second fight. How how good are you feeling about that opportunity? Feel good about that second fight. Uh, we'll do as, do as best as we can for the for the match. Right on, we'll see you out there in a little bit. Okay. James Sago has done it. I, uh, I'm getting flashbacks to the December finals with a Megatron and Emulsifier. Hmm. He did this exact same thing. He went through the loser's bracket, defeated Emulsifier twice to take home the grand prize for 30-pound full combat. Yeah, wow. it's, it's yeah. a Jameson move, honestly. He's done this before. I'm sure he'll do it again. The question is, will he do it tonight? Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, whoever loses here is going to take home second place. And uh, both of these robots have qualified for December. Really, it comes down to who is going to be taking home that trophy and the cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, James Wynn packing his robot up, putting it into that case, running upstairs. They're going to check that robot and uh, see if they can fix it here in 20 minutes or less. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's go and check in on that 30-pound finals from last year. Let's check out that highlight package. We can see how Jamison Go won the grand finals last year. All right, here was Megatron here in black, losing a match to Emulsifier, getting sent down into the loser's bracket. Jamison Go fighting his way through the loser's bracket to come back and defeat Emulsifier once. And they went into a sudden death rematch. He uh, just twerked the, uh, the the frame of Emulsifier so hard that they had to run their spare frame here. And he ended up defeating Emulsifier twice, taking home the grand prize of $15,000. Amazing. Really impressive. Okay. All right, yeah, it's not, it's not impossible. I mean, you can fight your way through the elimination bracket, come out on top, and uh, let's see if Jamison Go can do this. Either way, he's going home with $1,000 in cash right. or $400 in cash, which yeah. is really not that bad. No, no. I mean, I know that uh, that is a robot that takes a lot of research development and all, but yeah. no, one, no one's going to sneeze at $400. Yeah. And uh, everyone's going to walk home pretty happy if they get an extra 1000 in their pocket. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ricky, uh, I hate this, but uh, I think it's time. I, we can't really put it off any longer, can we? We no. have one more championship to crown right now, it sounds like. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to lay some ground rules here. I will be doing the judging for this. I will determine who wins. This we'll confirm that with the, uh, with the social media feed. Uh, I see that you're both prepping your hands. A couple of ground rules here. All right. right. I want to see a tight lock okay. on the hands. Okay. I want to see no pulling mm. back or forth. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, cherry bombs, very illegal. Immediate disqualification, okay? 
Uh, yep, so none of this. I want a, I want a nice stable match. I want a clean match. We're These gonna are do the a strongest three. hands I've ever seen in my life, Chris. We're going to do a four, three, two, one. I declare a thumb war, and then we're just going to go into it. No, no, it's a one, two, three, four. What kind of craziness is this? Four, oh. three, two, one. I declare a... I think it's, a, it's a thumb. I think it's four, three, two, one. Let's have some thumb fun. <laughs> Thumbs across America. <laughs> Thumbs across America. That is so much. All mm. right. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Are we ready? Uh, Let's get a nice tight shot of our just. Uh, this is this is terrible. No, this is yeah. This is deeply uncomfortable. Okay. All right. Okay. Ricky. All right. Uh, here we go. Count us down, there, Chris. Yeah. One, two. Three, four, I declare a thumb war. Let's get it up! Ricky! Ah! Okay, li listen, Ricky's thumb is so, so long. Okay, I feel. I see elbows, oh elbows my God. still. Okay, literally, he's crushing my hand, Chris. <laughs> okay. Oh! oh! I got an illegal elbow move on Luke oh, Stangle. Oh, oh my God! Oh, it's so slippery! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to reset this. <laughs> okay, okay, Literally, okay. Woo. I am pouring sweat out it's, of, out it's of like my hand. It's like five anacondas coming out of the jungle this in is, the rainforest. I hate this, you guys. There's liquid from everywhere. Oh, uh, Look at the arm movement on Stangle. Okay. Uh, it is, if, it is if intense. If I had a dry thumb, I would have beaten Ricky here, okay? Are we yeah, gonna go you're not to, uh, helping yourself with does your- Does anyone have some chalk? Strategio here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh All yes, right. that's a that's an idea. Elbows okay. on the table. The well, other thing I think he's going to be at a disadvantage. disadvantage. Oh, interesting. Okay. Next All time right. around, we need like at the bowling alley. You have those fans that come up. You dry your hands on. <laughs> that's <laughs> yes. what I want. Yeah. And by next go. time around, I mean never do this again. No, it's going to be three thousand dollars next time. Yes. I'm never doing this again. Enjoy this. This is my last time doing this. Okay. I All love right. it. He says it every time. All right. Sudden death rematch. Let me, All right. Let me, okay. Let me see if I can okay. pop my. Again. Okay, here we go. Let's keep the uh, the elbows under control. Okay. Let's get those fingers locked in. Okay. Okay. I'm, I want a clean he's, fight. He's crushing my hand, Chris. Okay. Right. Literally, I'm, he's gonna break bones here, well, Chris. Well, it's it's called thumb wrestling, not thumb playing. It's thumb war, not thumb my skirmish. My hand is turning blue, Ricky. I have no nails left. I don't okay, know what that means. Okay. Here we go. One. I can't two. Even... Three. Four. You guys are declaring a thumb war. Let's get it out! Uh, look, look, at the, look at the back angle on this. I hate this so much, uh, Ricky. I'm Luke just, Stangle is using the checker strategy, there's, not there's moving like the a, back row. Okay! Oh, no. No. A pin! Uh, a reverse pin! Uh, One, two, three! Uh, oh my god! So much, Ricky! <laughs> wow! Do we have okay. a new champion? Oh, I'm not even kidding. My hand is misshapen now. Look, look at, at the, this. Look at the colors. Okay. Wow. Two titans of the sport. Oh. Wow. Look at it. Look at the determination what on is, Ricky's face. What was that shape that happened in the back of my hand where it looked like you had a coin slot? I'm not kidding. My fingers are misshapen. That's not the way that my fingers normally look. I, the mine are dripping, so I have that. You, you have crushed my hand, Ricky. Listen, it was all for a terrible cause. No, it was great. <laughs> I'm, we raised $150 that no one should have paid to ever do this because... <laughs> Why did they want to see this? Hashtag Thumbs for America. You know, that's, you're right. Thumbs Thumb, for America. I thumbs forget. across America. Thumbs for America is the one that is conspiracy <laughs> theory. Oh, oh, oh. That's, that's the 40 chess um, right. cube world time All right, thing. let's check in here with Lindsay. Well done, Ricky. Well done. You have passed initiation. Um, so I did open a poll before you fought to oh. see, you know, who the crowd thought was going to win. And decisively, with 71% of the vote, the crowd chose Ricky. Oh, wow. wow. The crowd Sorry, read Luke. me like a freaking book, Lindsay. Okay. Yeah. They, they looked know. at my delicate little writer hands. Oh, wow. Okay, listen. I think in that first match, I could have taken Ricky if I just had it a was drier close. thumb. There was also, what level of pasty white is going on in my hands there? I need to go <laughs> outdoors. This, this is not our natural skin color. Uh, we no. are under intensely bright lights right now. You could, you could grow any kind of plant here. 
<laughs> if you had a yes. plant that grew on the planet Mercury, yeah. it would be very at home in the middle of this table. Yeah, here's the thing that uh, confuses me. Lindsay's lighting is fantastic. She looks no, like yeah. she's ready to go on HGTV. Uh, correct. I mean, it, yeah. we look like we are walking corpses, Ricky. <sighs> I kind of feel like a walking corpse at this point, though. That's true. It's look true at this. To life. Look, look at the color difference. I, I am a tan person. We're like pink, weird baby color. <laughs> right. You know, right. we look like someone took us out of the womb and, like, smacked us a little bit. 2022 is the year that we're going to finally fix the colors here in the yeah. big Yeah. You have a... You, there is... It's not a tan. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. It's not a tan, but there is, like, you know, a beige to I have you. some color. There, It's not... Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. All right, let's uh, check in here with Katie. So, gentlemen, my, my hands are actually sweaty, and I don't know if it's because I'm nervous for you guys. Luke, I am so sorry. I don't know why you're, you're, yeah, I feel you. You're, here's an idea. Why don't we do an arm wrestle next? Oh, no. <laughs> Katie, I don't work out, okay? <laughs> You know what I do? I like but open Ricky, up that you? heavy refrigerator door. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's an idea. You hold a we microphone, and, you know. No, Ricky's a he's a he's a rock climber. Yeah. You could yeah. go scurrying up the side of this building, Ricky. They're they're tiny. That's gentlemen. Just... It's like twelve thirty in the morning. Why not? Why not do a little? You know. Oh no? my God. Forty-seven thousand dollars we need idea. to raise in chat. Forty-seven thousand dollars, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I will I will I will. Uh, I will lose to, uh, to Ricky <laughs> Willows here for an arm wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know what a good number there would be. I yeah. mean, 47,000 is a pretty good number. Yeah, 47,000. Yeah, At least got specific. It. Yeah. Do you owe a bookie? <laughs> You've got to ask Ricky that question. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ricky, I, I'm not even kidding. I think my hand is damaged. I, you know, yeah. no joke there. I got nothing else. Those are hands that can, I don't know. They're, those are bare hands, man. Yeah. The, yeah. You might not be in the prime of your hand life, yeah. but there's potential in those digits. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, there's something there. And I think with the right training, the right coaching, okay. you know, the right support system, yeah. you can come back bigger, stronger, better. I mean, I know you can't you know, come out with a new prototype right. for your hands the way we can come out with new prototypes yeah. for the robot. But the, but the passion, you know, the drive. I have no passion for this sport. I hate thumb wrestling. Yeah, yeah. But the hatred is what got... You know, Fred Moore, that's what I heard, <laughs> got him through to... Or was that Ripperoni? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was one of those robots. I, it can fuel you just as deeply. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how I would train my hand. I mean, you're, you're a rock climber, right? I mean, like, yeah. are there... There's, like, hand strength? Yeah, no, no. Of... You, you go and you hang by your fingers, and then you lift yourself up just by your fingers. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I, I don't know anything get, about the sport. You get, Are you, you get, serious? Yeah, you get per, you get smaller. And you small. hang by your fingers, Ricky. That, that, no, but you get smaller and smaller little holds till eventually it's it's just a teeny little ledge. Why you know, do so humans do this? Go high, be fun. I don't know. It's not great. No, it's it's it. You get hurt. When was the last time? What, Katie? You're a rock climber. What? Are you what? serious? What? Really? Why are people so surprised by that? Yeah, my thumb, my thumb wrestling isn't very good, but yeah, I could do a little. I was vice president of the rock climbing club. Oh, you we're are? vice president of the rock climbing club, like of That's America. Right. <laughs> no, of America. Na- uh, no, man, just of like the of the world. Like North Central High School. Yeah, of the world, in fact. What? Yeah, that's true fact. In fact. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a, a little on belay, belay on, or you know, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ricky, you know what I'm talking I'm, about. I'm surrounded by athletes. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Okay. I was the person who walked uh, in PE and read books. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> During the walking. Yes. Imp- <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, check in with the pits. The We're pits go is to all this thumb massive right now. Cavernous <laughs> space. Bodies in the pits. everywhere. Yeah. And uh, let's see what is going on there with these final... Uh, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oh, that is not... Oh, there you go. This looks like Zack Knight with Promheta. Is that right? It looks like someone had to blowtorch a pulley off of a motor. That's kind of an interesting problem to have. But you'll see in the pits, people are going to do all sorts of creative things to get their robots back in some kind of shape. It might not be with the way it showed up, but... They're going to do what they can to get it back in the ring. This now, is how, team, much, how this much time do we have left on that clock? That's a good question. Oh, probably 10 minutes. I don't know. We saw a good shot there of Team Minimizer. They are packing up and going home. 
This here is a good shot of uh, Michael Shore here with Carmen. And uh, Michael is desperate to, uh, to get Carmen in fighting shape for Pramheda. Hmm. All right. Michael, if you can hear me, do you have one of those clocks on your table? How much time do you have left before your 20 minutes are up? Chris, they caught you. Uh, you they were, caught me yawning. <laughs> you were yawning, Chris. I was, yeah, well. Yawning is a sign of weakness here, all right? I'm just going to keep going. We're, we're just you know what else is a sign of weakness, continue to fight, though. all right? <laughs> Ricky, don't see. <laughs> Richard, this is not okay. Okay. This, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. I'm humiliated. No, no, I, I was turning down a challenge okay. for an arm wrestle. Oh, event. That's, 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 that's a better way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. I like that. And look at no, this. No, there's no shame in losing. Jameson goes ready to go. I love it. Wow. Okay. He is ready for his rematch with Stoneforge. Let's see if James Wynn is feeling uh, just as ready. You know, I'll be honest with you, that not Jamo. Uh, Shirt got me earlier. Really? Yeah, I walked up to him thinking I need to go to talk to him. Went to go pack him on the show. Was, oh, it says oh, not J-Mo. This isn't J-Mo. No. Yeah. yeah. Just I, somebody who looks like J-Mo. Yeah. It's hard to tell under the mask, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's difficult. I mean, especially coming, you know, from behind. It's just a, a dark-haired person wearing a mask. And, yeah. But uh, also, I, I don't know. I would give those shirts out to everyone. Everyone would be not J-Mo. Yeah, no, that's smart. Yeah. There's really only one JMO, isn't there? Yeah. All right, and we're walking through this very empty green room. It is now 12.41 a.m. Eastern. Sweet goodness. Here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Jameson Go is ready. This is the final match of the Beetleweights. The winner here will go home with $1,000 in that tiny little sad golden dumpster. And the loser will be going home with $400. Both of these robots have qualified for December. Luke, do we still get a not golden dumpster to deliver that $400 in? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just want to make sure that was still here. All right, let's check in here with Katie. Yeah, Stone Force, you had some quick changes to be made and you also said you, you felt good about what, what you were gonna put out. How did it come together? It went together really, uh, really nicely. Uh, I had a feeling that the last match might go the way it did. So in preparation for that, we had another module backed up. So we're ready to go. Uh, we think that we have a pretty good chance. So yeah. Are you ever, are you regretful of that you took so long to tap out then if you knew at that point? Or do you still feel comfortable with how you played that out? I think that it's important to play every single match like you're gonna win it. Um, so no, I'm not regretful at all. Well, wishing you the best out there. And meanwhile, I think we have a uh, Jameson over here who uh, gave us some strong arms. He should have maybe been part of either our arm wrestling or our thumb wars that we had. <laughs> Very intimidating, my friend. Um, but how are, how are you feeling now that you feel like this is the last one and you found some luck along the way today? I found a lot of luck, and I, I hope I just have a little bit left of that uh, for this last match. You know, it's all down to the very final match tonight for the three-pound class. And after that first loss, it's like, oh man, there's like a million fights left. And just one after another, after another, after another. And then suddenly we're here, it's amazing. Do you have any kind of um, feels from December and how you had to make your way through that way? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, every time you just keep winning matches in, in quick uh, succession, it's, it's, it's just like, you get this momentum built up. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, we're here, we're here now. We're back at the finals. Well, that's how he's feeling, and hopefully he can carry that momentum as well as they are getting ready for the finals here. All right, this is the final match of the three-pounders. We have no more three-pounders left. Every single three-pounder has been defeated already here today. We've gone through like 60 of them, it's which is amazing. Incredible. The winner here will go home with $1,000. The loser will go home with second place at $400. Nothing to scoff at. Yeah, fantastic. Now we've got Stoneforge here with James Wynn and Silent Spring, of course, run by Jameson Go. These two are ready to go. I want to see the configuration for both of these robots. Stoneforge is running what looked like a, kind of like uh, blades, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of like that drum right, that we right. had seen earlier. I wonder if he's going to go with the drum or those blades. The multi-part drum has been gaining popularity, and it's, it's an interesting approach, but... It's the drum! 
I think he's running the drum. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. James Wynn with Stoneforge is running the drum here in this final match. The winner here will go home with $1,000. Silent Spring here running the exact same configuration he's been running all day long. Going through the elimination bracket, escaping that bracket, defeating James once. He's going to see if he can do it here again. Oh, big hit from Silent Spring on Stoneforge. Wow. You can hear that drum spinning up even faster. Sound coming off that. It's like an air raid siren. Incredible. Jameson Go getting around to the side of Stoneforge, kicking it right there into the uh, Lexan. The durability, though, that Stoneforge is showing is just fantastic. Amazing. That that uh, weapon uh, that that weapon belt is running right down the center of Stoneforge. Oh, that could be it. We hear a slowdown. Certainly, it's still Here's spinning. Slowing down. Coming up on 90 seconds here in this match. Jameson Go is the picture of reliability. Stoneforge eager to uh, score some damage points here. Oh, big hit again on Stoneforge, which goes rocketing off. Oh, and you see a little bit of white plastic peels away. The weapon on Stoneforge is going full set here. Another big hit. Jameson Go landing a huge hit on Stoneforge. The stamina and patience of both of these competitors. I mean, they're doing everything they can, but the restraint it takes not to just get greedy and go for the kill, especially on Jameson's part. 45 seconds left here in this fight. Stoneforge uh, trying to back up and reset itself. But that drum is suddenly sounding quite a bit quieter. 30 seconds left here in this match. The drum is still running, but not quite as fast as before. I think that James Go has succeeded in stopping the drum of Stoneforge. Oh, another big hit here with 15 seconds left in this match. 10 seconds left here. Final moment. Two, one. This one will go to the judges. Incredible. Round of applause for the final match of the threes. Really James impressive. James Wynn and Jameson Go. Incredible. We see Katie Osborne mm. there standing on top of a chair to get a better look. I don't know if that's OSHA approved. We are going to go to the judges who will be deciding the winner here of this match. I don't want to uh, cloud the judges, uh, you know, judgment, but I, I think that this was a little one-sided. What do I, you think? I, would, I think you're right. I mean, we can look at the replay here. Every time that they try to go in for a hit, Silent Spring is able to get under and just deflect it. So there's, there's just so little that can be done with a drum against Silent Spring. They, they certainly put their, their, their heart into it. They did their best. They kept on them and incredible durability, but I just can't see where the um, where there was ever a stone forge advantage. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's All right, tough. We're gonna see uh, here. We're, we're gonna check in with the judges and see how they uh, they judge this match. We've got Don Dorfler, Derek Tran, and Andrew Russell. I feel like I always start with Don. Maybe we can start instead with Andrew. Andrew, your thoughts on this fight? Who do you think won the three pound finals? Yeah. Um, you know, this whole day's been a day of and Jameson, uh, you know, had a little bit of a rough start, and I think he's turned it around enough to uh, walk away the first 2022 champion of uh, Norwalk Havoc. Okay, we've got one vote for Jameson. Hold on, we don't know that yet. Derek, cast your vote. I think Silent Spring won. It was clear he won almost every weapon to weapon, or at least was equal in every weapon to weapon, and he took some chunks off of Stoneforge, so yes. 
All right, we've Sounds got two right. votes for Silent Spring. Don, this is just an academic vote, but cast it anyway. Oh, that's right. All right, we've got a unanimous judge's decision for Jameson Go and Bravo. Silent Spring, winner of the three pound finals here for March Norwalk Havoc. Now I can see Kimberly over here. She's got the golden dumpster. She's ready to go. Do we have Jameson Go? Oh my gosh, she's coming over. Chris, he's gonna take your spot. Jameis and Go and Silent Spring. Another big round of applause from the audience here. Uh, I can't. My thumb's injured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Amazing. Jamo, uh, okay, th there is so much tape on the side of Silent Spring. I don't know if I've ever seen uh, Silent Spring looking so rough. Like, tell me about this, this, this bot that, that really held up today. Oh, well, it's the, the backside's taking impacts from all sorts of, I think, did I fight like all horizontal spinners almost? <laughs> Very like close. Most of, the, most of the bracket was just horizontals, horizontals, horizontals. And the whole point of uh, this go around was to really test out the new horizontal module. So we only ran horizontals this time. This is one of them. There's another one which is black in color and that was testing, else, testing something else. Uh, hey, hot glue, some face. Incredible. Face. Very good. Wow. This so as a result, the back armor took a lot more impacts than it was probably intended on doing. But uh, yeah, you fill it in with hot glue and you cover it with tape and then you go into the next fight. Jameson, we've just heard a delightful little factoid from the back. This is your fourth time here at Norwalk Havoc, fighting your way through the elimination bracket to win the finals. Wow, look at that. He's surprised. I'm, I don't know. That's a cool fact. Yeah. <laughs> Jameson, go. What does it take to, uh, to really make your way through the elimination bracket? You know, like, what, what is the characteristic of a winner who is able to do that? I would say preparation and perseverance. Hmm. So you have to have enough parts um, and, you know, for some forethought to what you might have to do to repair in between fights. And you also have to work like heck uh, when you have a limited time between fights. That's that perseverance, that determination that says, I can't give up, I need to keep fixing this robot, even though it seems all pointless. Yeah, that is incredible. When I saw you get kicked down into the elimination bracket, I was like, wow, there are so many robots that you have to fight your way through. And you did it. That was incredible. You fought probably 12 robots here today. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's a real testament to uh, Silent Spring. Jameson, what was your confidence going into this final? Into it. So what was your confidence going into this final? I gotta say, after all the fights I've been doing this afternoon and evening, I'd say it was pretty high. I felt like that momentum was on my side. I could just keep going every next fight. So it's incredible. I'm sure. All right, Jameson Go and Silent Spring, another round of applause. Congratulations for winning the Beat Away Finals here for March Norwalk Havoc. And uh, inking your, uh, your ticket to the finals. All right, let's check in here with Lindsay. All right, as you might imagine, Jameson, there are a ton of fans so happy to celebrate you in Silent Spring. Uh, we have one message in particular that you might be interested in, and this is from Hydra Captain Jake Ewart, who says, hey, tell Jamo if he wins it all, I might just send him a purple poker chip. So, I mean, the, you know, cash prize is good, but a purple poker chip from Hydra is also okay. Jamo, what do you think? Jake Ewert, you know, sending you a poker chip. This is a pretty hotly, uh, you know, like this is a hot item. Come on. Very, very, uh, you know, hard to come by. That is a fantastic prize. And I believe he was telling me there's only what, two or three in circulation? Yeah. yeah. Other than his pocket. So You know though. That is a rare, that is a rare poker chip. Speaking of fantastic prizes, I think the time has come. Here you Hoist are. that uh, giant golden dumpster here over your head. Hoist it. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> Jameson Go and Silent Spring. Amazing. All right. Great job, Jamo. We're going to check in with Lindsay. All right. So we have one more super chat from Ro Russ Prokop, who says, Silent Spring, this bot was on fire. So just people really want to know you to know how much they love your bot. So congratulations again. All right. 
Everybody loves Silent Spring, Lindsay. Yeah, why not? What's not to love? I don't know if there's a bigger Silent Spring fan in this building than Lindsay Bear. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I remember the very first time that we went to Norwalk Havoc. Uh, Jameson Go was there. He was fixing his robot, and Lindsay was just whispering to us, "Oh my God, I think that's Jamo. I think it's Jamo." Mm -hmm. And we couldn't even work up the uh, the confidence to go and say hello to him. We just kind of leered at him from across the room. Yeah, you got that was that was an early thing in 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 your group, but you've evolved. Yeah. You <laughs> Innovated, and uh, and here you are today. Yeah, I think I'm almost on first name basis now with Jameson Go. Well, practically, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Give it a couple more uh, golden dumpsters, and I think maybe I'll be able uh, to, uh, you know, if call you them up if I need a ride him or something a like that. Thousand dollars, I think that helps. <laughs> there we go. Oh, ho, right. oh, oh, ho, oh, 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 ho, oh. Chris is now making an. Hey guys, entrance. what I miss? Oh my gosh, nothing. Okay. Now, I think that we're getting ready for a couple of final fights. Oh, is that right? We've crowned the 30-pound full combat winner. We have. We've crowned the three-pound full combat mm -hmm. winner. We are now looking for the 12-pound full combat Yeah, don't winner. forget the 12-pound sportsman has also been crowned, correct? 12-pound sportsman has been crowned. Accident did get a very nice little handshake from Austin McCord. Oh, have we confirmed this? Yes. Oh, okay. Was it sweaty? No. Austin has perfect hands. Oh, okay. All but right, we're going to check in with Katie. No, this actually is my... Uh, <laughs> fourth time here. Yeah, so we're just kind of talking about his history here with NHRL. It's his fourth time here, but the highest that he's ever placed. So congratulations to you, to the team as well. What did Jamison Go have on you there at the very end? I think he had, uh, he definitely had the weapons advantage. Uh, I had to run my drum against him and uh, Undercutter beats drum every single time. Uh, uh, assuming e uh, equivalent built, uh, weapons, but it was a super fun match. I'm really happy that I lasted the full three minutes. Uh, super, super fun match. And overall, how would you rate your experience here at NHRL? Definitely a 10 out of 10. Uh, my first event actually was uh, March last year, and I got to see firsthand how, how cool this competition could be. So I'm glad that it came full circle, and uh, I'm super proud of my performance today, and definitely my team's performance as well. Congratulations to you guys. The second place here in the three-pound bots. All right, James Wynn, student at WPI. I see here in my notes that he's also interested outside of combat robotics in baking and oh. disc golf. Interesting. Oh. I think that the uh, Team WPI, uh, you know, folks, they're getting into disc golf. I think that's a new thing. I don't think I saw that on all of their bios, Ricky. Oh, really? Yeah, did they send you the book? No, well, maybe they did. I don't check my email. <laughs> that's... I went disc golfing for the first time last year. What? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Chris, well, we're very good friends. How did you not tell me about disc golfing? Well, you know where the dog park is down in the Kingston waterfront? There's okay. actually a, a disc golf course around there. That always struck me as hard mode to put it next to where the dogs are. It's just like <laughs> asking for interceptions. Yeah, it's, it just counts as, uh, you know, uh, like, a, like a sand trap. I see, I Chris, see. Chris, did you rent equipment? Did you purchase your own discs? I got a couple of loaners from okay. a, a, an avid disc golfer. He pulled them out of the woods. There were, there were woods nearby and just piles of old All right. moldy discs. Here, here's the deal. I'm, I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes. Chris and I, we chat every single day. Chris is my brother-in-law. And, mm. uh, you know, we've literally, we talked on the day that you went disc golfing. I'm positive of it. And you didn't tell me about it. I'd love to try it out, Chris. Did you ask if I went disc golfing that day? Mm, I guess not. All right, we're going to check in here with Katie. Yeah, before, before we wrap it up with Minimizer, the team, it's Sean who is uh, the, the driver of it. And he has a little gift especially for you gentlemen in the booth. What you got? I have a little tiny version of Thagomizer. You know, it's a desk sized and uh, the weapon spins. And just a thank you for just really putting on a really amazing show. It's our first time coming out here and like, it's like nothing else. So I just want to say thank you and um, here you go. My there you God, go, gentlemen. I'm going to be dropping this sucker off here for you guys. But look how cute that little it's face adorable. is. Adorable. That is incredible. Yeah, thank you so much, Sean. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Super classy move here. Yeah. Amazing. Susceptible to bribes. It won't help you, but we are susceptible. This is a 3D printed version of Minimizer. Yeah, look at this. Wow. Can amazing. we get a zoom in somehow? I don't get know. Get a close up on this greasy desk. Yeah, yeah. It's, now, this is all just my wet hands, you guys, all right? <laughs> that uh, is really something cool. And it's hand-painted. I guess as soon as we go off the air, we're going to have to thumb wrestle for this thing. Uh, maybe. All right, great. <laughs> there we go. This is, the, this is the shot we need. Look at this. 
I can see uh, I can see loading into uh, to cage four. Looks like that is Pramheda. And uh, this looks like this is the 12 pound finals. Pramheda Eight, versus seven, Carmen. Six, five, four, now if Pramheda three, is able to win here, two, this will be the last one, match of the night. Fight, robots, if fight. Carmen is able to win, we will go into a sudden death rematch. Oh, but Pramheda has successfully pushed Carmen up against the rail. The weapon on Pramheda is down. I can see it twitching. That doesn't look good. The weapon on, Col uh, on Karma is fully up. On Carmen is fully operational. Oh, oh a big hit on from Carmen on Pramheda. Pramheda seemed to have. Uh... Wow, they shook something loose in Pramheda. That weapon is back. Wow. Huge oh, hits here from Pramheda get an air time. The weapon on Carmen is down. Pramheda, oh, and Pramheda, Zach, go in there and capitalize here. Still anyone's fight, but it seems like the tides have turned. Two minutes left on the clock. The weapon on Pramheda is fully operational. Oh, it looks like the weapon on Carmen is back as well. Oh, and it's easy Carmen. picking. Wow. Tap out. Oh my goodness, this is a tap out from Zack Knight and Pramheda. Carmen survives. We are going to go into a sudden death rematch. We're going to go into one more 20 minute uh, repair here. Carmen and Pramheda are going to run back upstairs to the pits. And we are going to be ending March Norwalk Havoc here in 20 minutes at roughly 1.30 a.m. Ricky, uh, you know, I'm pretty old. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. You said that you're a, a night owl. Do you typically stay up until 1.30? I typically do. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you are just cruising. Just Well, I don't typically get up uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning either. So <laughs> okay. that, you know, give and take. Yeah. All right. Well, that's oh. good. Yeah. They Let's say the in. night owl eats the early worms. Let's uh, check I in here with Katie. Yeah, first and foremost, uh, one, of, one of the guys just took off running that way. You, on the other hand, you just got roofed, so you're one of three in uh, HRL to do that. Congratulations, I suppose. Um, what's your takeaway? Why, why, why the tap out? Um, I have a whole other robot. Uh, that one was not winning that fight. I wasn't going to put it that frame through the rest of that beating. I can replace some of those parts if I kept going. That part, that bot would have gone home in a uh, pile of scrap, so might as well go get the other one. And was, from your assumptions, was Michael happy with that decision? No. He wanted me to, uh, to win that fight so that we didn't have to do this again. But he's going to change the battery and we're going again. All right, let's rock and roll. Gentlemen. All right. Thank Zach you, thank Knight single-handedly holding us hostage for yet another 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, we're seeing a lot of these sudden death rematches, which mm. I am just thrilled by, Ricky. I can tell. The, the excitement in your eyes, in your face, in your sweaty, sweaty hands. It's, it's yep. incredible. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, you know, as, as every, every half an hour or so, you know, beyond uh, midnight, just mm -hmm. the sweat from my hands I understand. Just is growing exponentially. It. I'm one of these people who's at, like in bed at nine, okay? Oh, wow, yeah, this is torture for you. Yeah, I was up at 5.30 this morning doing Wordle, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. checking my email. You know, there was a... a time when I, I had a professor come up to me and he goes, I want to tell you a story about Albert Einstein. Okay. He says, okay, well, uh, the, the dean of the college came up to, to Professor Einstein at the time and said, you know, we've got a very prestigious award. Uh, the award ceremony begins at 6 a.m. sharp. We expect that you're going to be there. <laughs> okay. And uh, Einstein goes, well, you know, I don't usually stay up that late, but for you, I'll make an exception. Oh, wow. That's and that's, that's words to live by. Now, uh, I, I guess the, uh, the implication here is that there's a correlation between intelligence and night owlery. I think right? there's a correlation between wanting to do this stuff that happens here in the pits yeah. and not doing it until it's too late not to stay up very late. And then there's no coming back. Yeah. All right. That's good. Zach Knight and Pramheda, you know, keeping us here for another 20 minutes, tapping out early. 
I have feelings about this, but I'm going to keep them inside me, Ricky. All right. I'd I feel a lot leaking. better about it if we can get a live camera on them frantically trying to put a bot back together. You heard Zach. His robot's ready to go. He's just going to go back there and just sit in the uh, sit in that little chill-out area mm -hmm. right? and just wait for Michael Short to come to him. Mm. Hey. They're going to cook one Hot Pocket in a conventional oven. Yep. Does that take 20 minutes? I don't know. All I can think of is cooking Pop-Tarts in the microwave, which I don't know if you knew you could do that. What? It's one and a half seconds. <laughs> what it, are you it, talking it's about? It's so... Or I think it's one. It might be three seconds. It's a ridiculously short amount of time. It says on the Pop-Tart packaging, what? if you want to microwave your Pop-Tart, do this. Ricky, I'm so worried about you. Are you eating Pop-Tarts on a regular basis? I'm not, but it fuels, like, a, a substantial portion of my team sometimes. And it's... Wow. Yeah, it's... Things you have to know. You just pop them in. You can. You gotta remove them, them from button. that foil wrapper first, or you'll. It's lava inside, and it's like crusty and old on the outside. And good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like how the uh, pop tarts. You know, it's a minute inside of the toaster, but for people who are really short on time. Yeah. Three seconds. Three seconds in the microwave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure it's a terrible experience. Oh, too. it's so horrible. It's <laughs> horrible. I've tried it, but you know what's worse? Eating the cold pop tarts. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. You know what you should try? Hmm. All right, uh, seriously. Literally anything pro other tip. than Pop-Tarts? I'm going to give you an actual pro tip. Half of my tips today have been ironic. This is true. Mm -hmm. Everybody here as well. Freeze your Pop-Tarts. Hmm. Yeah. You want to talk? Go. We're going to go up and uh, check out uh, here the pits. It's got a nice view of our cavernous and empty space. Zach Knight. Oh, my God. Zach. Just put a coat of wax on it. Mm hmm Yeah. All right. Well, that'll buff out. They are cleaning the wheels on Carmen. They're trying to get as much sawdust as possible off of these wheels in hopes of getting better traction for this final match. Now, they know if they're able to win here, they're going to go home with $1,000 cash and a tiny little golden dumpster. You can see them shooting pressurized air into the robot, trying to get all of that sawdust out. Mm. But uh, the bottom plate is off. That is concerning. Okay. Now they're cleaning these wheels. I'd love to get a shot of Zack Knight. I swear if he is kicking his feet up, I am, I am going to uh, I'm gonna start shouting at him, you guys. Oh, there goes the weapon lock. Okay. Does this mean that the bottom plate is coming on? I think it does. The battery. Carmen, are you ready? My goodness. I saw that uh, they did a battery swap there. This looks like it's a fresh battery. So fresh. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Carmen built by Michael Shore from Plum, Pennsylvania. He is a mechanical engineering student at Slippery Rock University. And, uh, oh, I've got some great fun facts here. Oh. He's also minoring in music. He's been playing violin for 10 years. He also plays piano and guitar socially. socially. Uh, he's competed previously in the 15-pound level, you know, for NRL, uh, for both high school and college. And uh, he has multiple state and national titles from, uh, from NRL, which is an education-focused kind of STEM uh, combat robotics program. Also, oh my god, I'm reading to the end of my notes. Michael was once lost in a submarine on a school field trip while he was in first grade. That's like three levels of story there. That's pretty deep. That is oh. a truly horrifying story. Stuck inside of a submarine. It almost sounds like Lindsay when she was stuck in, what, was she stuck in an elevator? She was stuck in a bathroom at a high lie court. <laughs> in a high lie court? Are you serious? What? Okay, Michael Shore putting on his transmitter. He's going to be walking Carmen downstairs, just making sure everything uh, there is complete. You know, kind of when you, you tap your, your, your pockets looking for your wallet, your phone, and your keys. Mm -hmm. I think he's just making sure that he's got everything. Doing a little overhead press of Carmen. 
Yeah. yeah. That is a 12-pound robot. And look at this. He's ready uh, with so much time that he's going to take Carmen to the test cage. Very smart. This is the, this is the mark of an experienced builder. They want to test it before they put it into the big box. Oh, I got bad intel production. He's walking straight past the test cage. He's going straight into the big box. OK. Look at this. Zach is already ready. That test box felt like, you know, the, the guy who goes in for the high five that isn't his. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's all right, Zack Knight and Promheta running a brand new robot here, his second uh, robot. Facing off here against Carmen, which uh, looks very clean, no sawdust at all on the robot. We'll, we'll fix that. This is the final match of the night. This is the 12 pound full combat finals. Zack Knight and Promheta just uh, experienced his first loss. The winner here will go home with $1,000 a tiny golden dumpster. Itty bitty. We're closing the uh, the box here, and it looks like we are going to be uh, crowning a winner here in three minutes or less. A little bit of sluggish driving for Carmen as it's trying to make its way to the starting square. Oh, that's concerning. It's uh, typically not a great sign when you can barely get into your starting square, Michael. Oh, no! Fluffy is pushing the robot back to the box. Are we going to reopen this box? What do you think it could be? It's uh, vengeance from the test box that was uh, overlooked. Michael has uh, told the ref that he needs to tighten the screw here. So he's making his weapon safe. Is he going to flip the robot over? He is. Oh, he's high centered himself on a screw, Ricky. Aha. I did wonder as they assembled. It seemed like some Me of those too. didn't go I, all the way through. I, I saw that. Me too. The three of us saw that. I guess we saw something that Michael didn't. Well, you know, there could be some reason, though. It's, it's, sometimes you want that little bit of extra um, ability for that panel to move, uh, you know, for compliance purposes. So it's, it's possible that was intentional. It just had repercussions they didn't anticipate. OK. Carmen is moving a little bit better now. Kind of wild that it has so little ground clearance that a single screw can uh, mess things up for them. They've managed to limp their way into the pink square. Zack Knight and Prompheta, he is licking his chops. He loves to see this. Yeah, this is this is a lamb to slaughter by the looks of it. Or you know, this could all be a ploy. Oh, interesting. Wouldn't that be something? A ruse. Mm-hmm. A clever ruse. Let's see what it is here. Are we ready to go? Have they hit their buttons? Zach is three minutes away Eight, from uh, winning either seven, $400 or $1,000. Three minutes three, away from maybe losing two, $600. One, there you go. Fight. Robots fight. Oh, and the spin up on Prometa is good. Carmen's weapon is up. This is gonna be a huge hit here, folks. to the floor. Carmen getting itself up onto the rail is now. Oh, oh another big hit. hit. An immediate weapon stoppage on Carmen. We'll see if they can get back up to speed. They can. Glancing blow on the side of Promheta. Something sounds a little off over there, though. Chunks starting to come off the sides of Carmen. It's not a good look. Yeah, and that wedge is being peeled apart. It looks like uh, Promheta has cut through those uh, those screws holding the wedge of Carmen in place. Carmen is now on its head. Zack Knight is uh, trying to decide if he's going to come in here for the kill shot. But it looks like Promheta is spinning down. We've got a little saving uh, throw from Fluffy. Interesting. Just pushing Carmen into the corner. Ooh, the weapon on Carmen is back. He's going to see if he can self-right himself. 
an attempt being made, but it's gonna be tough. You can see Zach Knight hanging back. The drive on Pramhetta doesn't look great. It doesn't, but it is a substantial step up from what Carmen is bringing to the table right now. 90 seconds left here in this fight. You can see one of those drive belts is hanging loose. Can Pramhetta move? Oh, Boom. there we go. Good question, Chris, and I'm glad that Zach answered it for you. Carmen is now back on its feet. That weapon does look like it's dead. Oh, wow, and Carmen's also lost the drive belt. Yes, Carmen, unfortunately, has only rear drive on one side. On the other side, it seems to have both. I'm not sure what's going on with the weapon. It comes in and out. 60 seconds left here in this fight. We're 60 seconds away from crowning a winner here. Zack Knight just needs to hold on. Oh, another big hit, and, and there goes the wedge. The cloud from uh, Carmen. The wedge in the front wheel. Wow. Carmen still limping along, really putting everything into this fight, but without a miracle, it probably will not be enough. Well, Zack Knight uh, really doing full send here. Carmen like struggling. The on Carmen is spinning down yet again. Here struggling to move, that belt is caught up there in the side of There won't be Carmen. another save. I think this might be it. Will the ref count them out, or will they be saved by the bell? They're going to be saved by the bell. Two, one, that's the end of the match. Both of these uh, builders went the full three minutes. We're going to send this over to the judges. <laughs> Round of applause for Pramheda and Carmen. Zach Knight and Michael Shore had an absolutely great day here in 12 pound full combat. Pramheda has done very well in this weight class here in the past. Carmen just had a bunch of gremlins for this last match of the day. It's weapon going up, it's weapon going down. And a little bit of impaired drive here. Pramheda did rip off that plow from the front of uh, Carmen. And uh, that last shot that she saw was Carmen stuck up on the rail. All right, uh, Derek, let's start with you. Pramheda versus um, Carmen. Your thoughts on that fight. Who do you think won it? I think Pramheda clearly won it because even though they lost a bit of drive towards the end, they absolutely destroyed Carmen. Okay, we've got one vote for Pramheda. Don Dorfler, your thoughts on this fight? Pramheda. All right, short and sweet, I love it. Andrew Russell, take us home. Pramheda. All right, that's a unanimous judge's decision for Zach Knight and Pramheda, Bravo. winner of the 12 pound finals here at March Norwalk Havoc. All right, do we have Zach? Where is Zach? Do we have Pramheda? Is it safe? Jordan? Can we put Pramheda here on the desk? I'm going to move this miniature minimizer. Oh, wow. Look at that thing. Oh, and we're also putting Carmen up here. I love it. Wow, okay. Round of applause for Zach Knight and Pramheda. Bravo. All right, uh, I've got a question here. You guys are on the same team, is that right? I can see these, uh, uh, these, these neon green shirts. Is that right, Zach? Yeah, we're uh, teammates. That's why he's up here with me, and we made sure that this fight happened. Hmm. Amazing. All right. Tell me a little bit more about your day. You know, you fielded multiple robots in multiple weight classes. Okay, one second here, we're gonna pause. We're gonna take Chris's headset. There we go. Okay. All right, Zach. Zach, uh, I was asking you about uh, your teammate. You told me that you have never met Michael before in the, uh, the past, <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm sorry, go, go back and, and tell us more about, about your team here today. Uh, so Michael here, my left way, is something I actually mentored while he was still in high school. Awesome. Uh, so it was pretty fun that he's the one who showed me this competition, and now it's about time we got to fight. Yeah, that's there you incredible. Go. Now, tell me about the performance of Pramheta over the last year. I feel like I've seen this robot a lot in the 12-pound uh, weight class. Is this your second golden dumpster? This is my second golden your dumpster. Second, okay, yeah. good. Um, now, Carmen is, is a brand new robot, is that right? Um, I'm trying to, to remember if I've seen it here before. Is it uh, 
I mm. see. Okay. Uh, yeah, our, Michael just said that uh, it competed in November, but it went 0 and 2. I mean, fantastic work taking it all the way to the end here. Really, really great. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a glow up. All right. Um, now, I, I, I see these like bots IQ shirts, you know, like I can see kind of the educational focus of the team. Zach, you know, talk about like the, the importance of STEM and education and really like the role of combat robotics and how it can help engineers. So in different portions of the country, there is a uh, competition run by NRL. Bots IQ is Southwestern PA region. Um, its main focus is the ki kids into manufacturing. Nice. There's, there's a massive field for jobs and it's turning kids to be able to understand how to machine, design, and be able to work in an everyday work field. Amazing. Yeah, that is great. Listen, can you take us through the, uh, the final bout? <laughs> uh, somehow I got caught up on something on my right, uh, my right front wedge, and that was a nightmare. But um, after uh, getting that all resolved, it was kind of just me beating up on a younger kid. There we go. All so right, congratulations once again to Zach Knight and Promheta, winner of 12 pound full combat. Before we go, we are going to check in one more time with Lindsay. I just want to say congratulations to Prom Hedda, congratulations to Carmen. We have a super chat here from Flirt McGurb. Great job, Team Defective. I love you Goonies so much. I wish I could have been there, but I'm so proud of you all. So you have fans uh, here in the chat still with us and just great job to, to still be competing at 1.30 in the morning at the level that you are. Just, you know, round of applause for, for you and everyone here, so. We're going to send it over now to Katie. Yeah, Lindsay, I, I want to second what you have to say here. It's been a joy to see everybody here this weekend, the community that continues to grow, the involvement on social media, and as I mentioned earlier, the joy that it really is to be part of this team. I know it's been so much fun as a learning curve for myself, as I am not an engineer, and I don't know a whole lot about robots, but I've been learning a lot, and I appreciate how everybody has welcomed me as well and have continued to taught uh, me along the way. Jameson, go. Uh, Daniel, these, Michael, these guys guys who have proven time and time again that their bot just is outstanding from uh, beginning to end. Congratulations to all of you out there as well and to you guys in the booth, to our production team behind the scenes, to the uh, group of people, Ed and everybody else who's making this thing rock and roll. Uh, big thanks because I wouldn't be uh, where it is without y'all. Amazing. Katie, thank you so much for all of the great work here today, bringing us the stories from the pits. Um, so on behalf of Norwalk Havoc and uh, my co-host here, Ricky Willems and Chris DeSico, thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of the production team, thank you and good night.